Gear up with our exclusive merchandise. Shop now and show your support. Visit our website or click the link below. Thank you. Salutes, everybody. If y'all can hear me loud and clear without no static or nothing like that, drop a uh, one for me real quick. Salutes to everybody. Um, we back with a classic one today. It's going to be very powerful. And I ain't going to even hold you. Go to brosanchez.com or goldenwingsmedia.com for all things such as these awesome products that you see on the screen. Check those out. Now that I got this bar stool, I might have to lower this shit just a bit. Let's come down. Let's see how this thing works. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. That's the low as it go. Okay. Well... Let me see how we can do it. Let me see. Oh, it looks good right there, so I ain't tripping. Yeah, I uh, did a couple of adjustments here. Let me crop my head back in. That look weird. Man, salutes to everybody. Clap it up. Thanks for the warns. We back. I want to say salutes to all of the mothers in the building, all the fathers, all of the parents, and special salutes to the ladies today, because it's all about you today, my sisters. Appreciate y'all for being here again once again. We got some dope products on the website that you might want to check out. We got snapbacks. Uh, water bottles and different things of that nature. Like I said, just go explore the product section of the website. We back in the building. And I'm uh, just so excited with the topic. Because this topic here is what makes Sanchez, Sanchez. These kind of topics. And this what set me apart from all the Atlantean talking Pharaoh worship, a uh, hard leg brotherhood, boule dialogue places. See, this is why Sanchez is being blackballed. You feel me? <laughs> Sanchez cocinando. Sanchez is that guy that they love to hate, man. But I ain't going to talk about the haters. I'm going to talk about these beautiful women who are living, breathing, thinking, Portals. You are a walking Stargate. I'm going to blow people away today. I'm going to blow y'all away today. Show sure enough. Show sure enough. Show sure enough. Now listen. A lot of y'all are like me, right? You grew up hearing people talking about, we come from the Anunnaki, we come from the Atlanteans, we come from this group, that group, we come from pharaohs in Egypt, we come from aliens. Okay? Drop a one if you're with me so far. We're going to start this thing all right, baby. Hold on a minute. Everybody been hearing in this country's community, we come from here, we come from that. It's been debates about it. We come from Noah. We come from the Elohim. We come from Yahweh, some people say. I'm going to say, uh, what's that, Yakub. I mean, you know, you've heard all these different theories of where we come from. Now, what I'm going to give you today ain't a theory, and this is why they hate me, because I deal with truth and fact. Now, can't nobody debate what I'm about to say. How about if I told you we come from uteruses? I'm going to deal with the simple stuff, not the pseudoscience. We ain't dealing with we come from Anunnaki. 
We ain't do, we're a slave race that was created by the Atlanteans. We ain't doing the Egyptian fanatic crap. We ain't doing the neo-paganism. We doing irrefutable facts. You come from a P-U-S-S-Y. You got a doggone navel to show where you was hooked up to an umbilical cord because you are an astronaut traveling the nautical waters astrally. Don't you know that the waters above and the waters below are the astral planes? Why are they called planes? Well, because the earth is flat. We'll talk about that in a minute. They ain't called the astral spheres. Talking about the netters here. One thing I want to bring up is that um, we come from, when we say we come from the Elohim, we come from the Anunnaki, we come from Africans. The truth is, every single soul it has a direct portal, a gateway entry into the earth that was opened up by their mom and daddy. So I want to explain something to you. Let's go to my collages now. If you look at this collage that I chose for my thumbnail, in the top left corner right here, that is called the Hebrew Vault of Heaven. And if you want to see that uh, on a bigger scale, I'll blow it up for you. I just cut that part out. I want now what I'm going to do today. It ain't never been done before. You about to be participating in history being made and a classic. You about to witness today. I will not even hold you, yo. I'm going to make the halves on your skin stand up all day with this information I'm bringing. Like and share the video on your way in. Moderators, let everybody know to do the same. Now, check this out. Here is the Hebrew cosmos. And one thing I want to point out about this cosmos is the top of it. Let's open it up, right? They call it the heaven of heavens or, or a.k.a. the sky vault. Is you will hear another familiar term to uh, used by the Hebrew. So it's called the sky vault, the gate of heaven or the heaven of heavens. Now, when you hear the term heaven of heavens, it's also synonymous with the term holy of holies. If you're familiar with both of these terms, drop a one in the chat room. We're going to come back to those in a minute. Now, check this out, guys. If you look at this heaven of heavens, this gateway of heaven, it shapes like a, a T, a capital T. And it's in, in, in some models, you can see it better than other ones. You know what? Let's just pull up a few of these Hebrew conceptions and deal with them real quick. Real quick. We want to get right into the knowledge, man. So check it out because we really, we really about to take blow your mind. So let's open that one up. Then we'll open up the... I want to show you what this sky vault is uh, since I brought it up because uh, that's all I'm going to do today is be very thorough and show the women the, the technology behind what's in between their legs on a spiritual level and physical mechanical level uh, when we get the Elon, CERN and all that. Like and share the video. So check this out, guys. There's an opening in the top of the sky. Now, some people call it God, but the word God is just the word guide, 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 guide. Now, let's take a look at this. You can see it's shaped like a capital T. And I'll go back to these chambers in heaven in a minute. But right here, you can see that when it's like a capital T right there. Right. You see that? And you see right here, like a capital T. I want to bring that up because that's the Tesla logo. That's the Tesla logo. Uh, and, and we're going to get back to what that T is all about. Why does that shape like a capital T? 
And it all going to tie into some etymology later, which goes back to the Roman symbol ta, T-A-U, which is right here. And when you ask me, Brother Sanchez, how did we get to the word ta? It's because ta is the root word of Taurus field, Taurus field, Taurus. And then ta is also a synonym, right, for the word vulva. We really going to go deep today, women. You need to understand, women, that the capital T is the uterus and the T is the tree. The T is also the number tree or three trifecta because it's three pointed. If you count it, look at the uh, capital T It's three points. If you outline it, guess what you get of a JJ. You don't believe me? Do it right now. Do it right now. We're going to start this off deep. We ain't going to wait to get deep. We're going to start. Here is the symbol of the uterus. This symbol means the vulva. And I'm going to go into that. They turned this capital T, guys, into the J. Do you see it? And they turned the damn uterus into Jesus. I told you we weren't going to wait to get deep because the word Jesus is Isis, which is Isis which is also personifying a uterus. Oh, I'm about to show you all that in a minute. T for truth. This is a capital T. They turned it to a J, y'all. They turned it to a J, but that's the symbol called Ta, right? And, they, they, and here is what they were, this, the capital T, right, is this right here. It's the uterus, the symbol of Ta. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, and I told you we're not going to wait to get deep. Go ahead and hit the like and share button. If you look at this right here, this is the uterus. And, if, and, and this is what the whole, but I, I, I don't want to start too deep, though, because we finna go into the bull called Taurus. Taurus, T-A-U, right? It's a lot we got to talk about. Now, so with that being said, let's go back to the sky vault. Here is the sky vault in ancient Hebrew cosmos. It's, uh, it's, it's the way out of the earth. And it sucks you up like a stairway and spirals you up until you swirl your way up out the, up out the earth, thinking of walking up a spiral staircase. And the reason I'm bringing that up, right? The reason I'm bringing that up, let me show you. If you got crumbs at the bottom of this cup right here, let me take my chat off a minute. If you got crumbs at the bottom of this cup right here, when the crumb go into that middle cyclone, it's going to get raptured up and it's going to pour out of the cup. Drop a one. Drop a one if you know the science of what I just said. Jesus said, my cup overfloweth. Jesus held his arms open just like Isis because they both personifying a female uterus. I haven't even begun yet, y'all. Drop a one if you know what's going to happen in this cup right here, though. Because remember, this process of the, the cyclone in the middle of this cup, that's something called meiosis. You know, there was another dude that split the pillars of water, right? His name was Moses. The word meiosis is Moses. Oh, women, I'm about to bring all this back to you. Don't you worry. Check this out, y'all. Why did Moses open his arms like that? Because he's personifying the uterus. And guess what? The uterus allow man and woman to enter this earth. See, the uterus, this is what, and y'all can go look this up. This going to sound crazy. The female womb is an agenda, even though it's on a creature that belongs to a gender. Take a minute and think about that. Take a minute and think about that. Think about the fact that if you say, well, the female womb is a feminine organ, it's literally a neutral organ and was personified by the sky goddess Newt, which is the root word of nurture, na neuter, nature. And when you take the word nature, right? 
you got seven natures. Those are your seven chakras. Up in, I'm going to go into those in a minute. But if you take the word natures and rearrange it, you get Saturn. And if you look at why you get Saturn, it's because of the ripple effect of life. That, that is the ring system. But I ain't going to go into that yet because I got specific collages for that. And I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go back here, though. If there's any crumbs or debris in the bottom of this cup, they're going to get sucked up into this vortex and they're going to find themselves outside of the water. See, our earth is like us being submerged in, the, in this water in this cup right here. You see this cup right here? This is our earth with the North Pole in the middle. The North Pole is in the middle of our circle of our dish, right? Here go our earth at the bottom right here. This is the North Pole. It's like a ethereal vortex that lead a stairway to heaven out out the water out from out the ocean from out, out of the fucking so if you like a let's say we're like little debris that's inside of the ocean around the north pole but what happens is when we die we 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 go to the middle pole and we get sucked up this how the whole ufo thing came to be it's a science behind how the UFO ship is able to suck you up. And that's the science of meiosis, which is osmosis. They call it the day meiosis, cell splitting. We're going to go into that in a minute. Now check this out in the bottom left corner. That's the Tesla oscillator, which the Egyptians call the unk. Why is that important? That is important because that is a perpetual energy device. Meaning it siphons energy out the e ether and just keeps on going and you can harness energy forever from that little device. Now the root word oscillator come from the word ox, which again is dealing with the bull or the uterus. If I show you how they personified the uterus into a bull, you will see why we even call this stuff oxygen that we breathe. You know, because what we're breathing calling oxygen is, is directly contributed to os oscillation happening at the North Pole. Like keeping a, a pitcher of water oxygenated on your desk. How would you do it? You would do it with an osmosis machine, this right here. And it'll stir up, it'll keep the water moving in motion to keep it electric, not stagnant, not collecting no debris. See what I'm saying? Your, your doggy filter bowl do the same thing if you got dogs and you got the little filtering bowl like this. So it's very simple of how our terrarium is being filtered, the atmosphere. Like you can't create more of infinity. You can just keep on renewing everything. Right. So the, that goes into the uterus. That's what the uterus is all about. When Jesus said, I come to make all things new. He was personifying the uterus that's in between the females legs. Let me pull up my collages at this time so we can really. Start. Damn, I made a mistake and hit all that. I ain't mean to do that. That came out of nowhere on y'all. huh? My bad. But check this out, right? Let's do this. Please like and share. So let's pull up the uterus real quick. Here it is right here. This is the female reproductive system, what we call the uterus. And the thing about this is this is your uh, spaceship, mothership. If you look at the top of any cosmology you will see the uterus up there and why is above all these and, and see if, even if you look at moses right here i'm gonna show y'all some and this gonna be people for who got their third eye open right when we talk about the unk if you got your third eye open you can see the unk right here man tell me you can't see that unk right there that little yellow ball is the circle. The blue water is the fucking horizontal line. And the brown path is the bottom line. Open up your eyes. 
This is what, listen, Moses is going back into the womb. This is why Jesus talks about being born again. And he told Nebuchadnezzar about the story about going back into the womb. When we lead his lifetime, our soul goes into a future, into a, 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 a higher universe where your mama and daddy met in that universe too. Your mama and daddy met in all these realities. So you were born in all these alternative universes. I'm going to go into it. So every time we leave one universe, one life experience, we go into a better one and a better one or a worser and a worser, depending on karma. But, but check this out. The, the portal that allows the transitioning of the soul is directly attached to the woman. Now, what the uterus is, in essence, is something that science is calling a wormhole. Now, a wormhole is something that's able to connect two points in time and space, allowing for time traveler. You haven't been told that you're not a human being. You're a soul that's traveling the fabric of space and time through the female womb. They downplaying how significant we are. They downplaying that. Now here is what they're calling a wormhole. And this is what the ancestors called a uterus. Everything in the simulation has to resemble the technology that exists in the astral plane. We are souls that can't be born. And because we are infinite energy that can't cease to exist and we don't have a beginning or an ending, how we travel through space and time is through wormholes. Spirits don't take buses and Ubers. Spirit take portals. Your soul, your, the word spirit is spiral. The word spirit is spiral. Now, why is the word spiral important? Well, look at how you lead the earth by making a spiral. Look at him. You see what's happening in the middle of that cup? Everyone's spirit is a spiral. And that when it's released from the body, it will, it will, that spiraling energy of your spirit, what they call the kundalini, it will drill through the veil, the reality, this matrix around you. When your spirit or when your spiral leave the body, the reason it spit, your spirit ain't spiraling for no reason. It's spiraling so it can drill through this particular layer of reality. Look at what you see here. You see this dude breaking up out the simulation by spiraling out. Spiritual, spirituality is all about raising the vibration, which is to say you're going to spiral at a faster frequency and you can handle it now. See, when you start turning like the Tasmanian devil that fast on a spiritual level, it creates a barrier around you like a tornado. No demon, no evil energy can touch you. This is how your spirit moves. Tasmanian devil turning around like, like a spinning top. And it can travel through the astral plane where there's a bunch of evil spirits and good ones, all kind of things there to keep to that can hurt you or help you. But what this spirit, your spirit literally creates, like if, if you spin anything real fast, it will literally create a force field now. Because if you try to touch it, you're going to get sliced the hell up. <laughs> Soon as you poom, them hands gone. And this is how the spirit moving. This is why Hammer say can't touch this. Maybe that's spiritual shit. But check this out, right? The thing about uh, the female uterus, right? She is able to serve as an incubator and 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 uh series of stargates that connect the points in time in the fabric of time and space allowing for us to be anywhere and everywhere because our mama and daddy preceded us and they every action done in one universe is done in all the other universes but it's alternated so that means your mama met your daddy in each alternative universe but it's a different 
script sort of playing out, but the same characters in the movie. Now, check this out. This is what science is called a wormhole. I want to show you a collage I made real quick. This right here, and I, well, let's break this down because it's a lot going on. And I may want to, I'm giving you too much too soon. Hold on. Let's talk about this first. This is the female reproduction track. Now, let me break this down to you. What we're looking at here is how sperm enters the ovaries. In other words, right, when a sperm, when a man ejaculates into a woman, and I get this from a uh, actual health website that is teaching about how the female reproductive tract guides the sperm into the ovaries. And it was a whole article written on it, and I'm going to pull it up for you if I, if I can find it. Hold on. In other, in other words, so let me see if I can find this article real quick. And we got a lot to go over, so I'm going to just show you a little bit. You get the point. So check this website out. It shows right here, all right, how the female reproductive tract guides sperm before fertilization. And I'm going to break this down to you right here. It said, healthy sperm preferentially travel up the micro grooves of a, of a sheep cervix as cervical fluid flows down the middle, flushing out in mobile cells and pathogens. This is what's happening in the female reproductive system. Let me show you. See, the sperm is entering this one track, but it's coming from all directions. When a, when a man goes into a woman and ejaculate, all of the sperm is going all, all around this track, all around the walls of this track. And what this track has grooves in it, and these grooves are like highways for sperm. In other words, the sperm ain't just on a slip and slide, so to speak. They are in canal systems. Now, if, now this is where all of the sperm meet a crossroad and all of these little micro grooves, no matter what side the sperm coming in on, its little micro groove will lead it into the, to the, to the eggs. Now, I know, and I'm going to go over, like, what happens, how the sperm get in the egg and all that in detail, but I want to show you now the technology of how the woman's reproductive tract mimics the earth that we live in. Because uh, if you take a look at the collage that I got here, right, uh, I may be doing too much too soon. Let's go to this one first. Take a look at this collage, right? Here is the Flat Earth AE map. On an AE map, which is, you know, our true shape of the Earth, forget what they're telling you, we've already proven this, nobody want to debate me either. But if you look at this, all of the magnetic ley lines, all of the magnetic ley lines are like the striations of the female reproductive tract. Striations, right? What is a striation it's what they're calling the micro grooves let's look it up striations means a series of ridges or linear marks you see what i'm saying and like fault lines or what we call ley lines and our earth is has several of them these ley lines aren't random they're following the path of magnetism and so is the female reproductive tract. Listen what I'm telling you now. In this collage right here, let's go back to this, right? I want the women to understand that they are a whole universe. And that when we die, right? And our souls head back to the North Pole, that is a sperm going down the reproductive tract. The earth is a big vagina. You're in an incubator. You're in a womb right now, and I'm about to break all that down in a minute. So when we die, our soul, whichever one of these ley lines that it's the closest to, 
it uses that as a highway to lead it back to its uh to lead it to its uh uh next rebirth and its same mama and up in the go in that and go in deep into that but check this out no matter where you at on the earth you're like a sperm cell right that that's what your soul is when it leaves this body and guess what it's gonna do it's gonna take the nearest ley line back home and, and it, it's gonna do the same thing it did to get to the earth the first time as a sperm you did this before man see these niggas cannot debate me y'all because ain't nothing i'm teaching pseudo ain't nothing i'm teaching pseudo if a nigga say that's pseudo, I'm going to say, bro, you want a sperm before, nigga, that found the egg? How did you find it? How, did, how, how are people finding the North Pole? They shooting an azimuth to the center of a circle. That's why that's called an azimuth equidistance map, AE map. It's based upon the magnetic ley lines. We know where the center is because it's like a spider web. All of the lines lead there and create a point called the zero point. And that right there is the gateway in, in, in and out of this bitch. And, if, and, and the ancestors knew all of this knowledge by studying the female reproductive system. Now, how did they hide this knowledge? By personifying the female reproductive system as a man. Who telling you, you're going to be born again through me. You feel me? Look, y'all. I'm going to First of all, let me slow down a minute and go back to this. This is a wormhole. Why is it called a wormhole if worms don't go in it? <laughs> the sperm is the worm. They trying to call it a wormhole. It's a sperm hole. This is what it is. The sperm is a astro traveler, astronaut is traveling in nautical waters of the mother, breaking the waters to come in and out of these worlds. They say her waters broke. That's what the sperm does. It's like Moses. So my thing is this, the, what happens is this. On an astro plane, we can't be born. We can only be born in the simulation. And the thing is, the technology that we created to travel in and out the simulation on the astral plane, it resembles that same technology on a physical plane. So check this out. On the astral plane, this is what we created to go in and out of different alternate realities. We created wormholes. That's on the astral plane. Now, when we get into the simulation, this same technology that we created on an astral plane now becomes the uterus on a physical plane, cloaking itself, layering itself, but it's still a doorway out of here. You see what I'm saying? Let me pull up the uterus so you can see what I mean here with this. The, the, we're not humans that's born from a womb. We're astral travelers that went through a wormhole. And when we went through the wormhole as astral travelers, we got spaghettified. That's the word for it. When you get spaghettified, guess what that means? You're becoming a sperm cell. This is how you got turned into a sperm cell. A sperm cell ain't nothing but spaghettified consciousness. Now, what happens when you suck a noodle into your mouth? It spin around and round like this. It does. You ever suck the noodle in and it spin? That spin, that spiraling motion is the spiral of life, the kundalini, the spirit inside of you. The spirit in your body is a spiraling motion that fell into your body the moment you got spaghettified, you got sucked in. And when you got sucked into the black hole, that became your first breath. 
I being born in a hospital now. All this playing out as above, so below. The sperm is nothing but spaghettified consciousness. Like, like and share the video. The astronaut is the astronautical traveler traveling the walk. They just showing you a ritual of rebirth. Is all fake and show. Him with his tethering line is you with your umbilical cord. You see what I'm saying? So the, the astronaut helmet, that, go look at a sperm cell. You'll see what they're telling you. So when your consciousness entered the black hole, it, it looked like a sperm cell. Look at this. Astronomers witness spaghettification of a star shredded by a black hole. You're a star. When you entered Saturn, Saturn chopped you up like the body of Osiris and turned you into a mini versions of yourself that exists on one of the rings of Saturn. Please like and share this video, man. This shit's going to be deep, bro. This is what happens when you got pulled into the Saturn simulation. Saturn sliced you up and he put one of your layers on each one of these rings you exist on an astral plane. You exist in each one of these rings. But you was on, you at first you was one being. But what happened when you got inside of the black hole, it shreds up the light. It takes one big ball of light and stirs that light up until it becomes a bunch of like this right here. Like this dude getting sucked in, he's a ball of light. But once you get sucked into the black cube, which is Saturn, it shreds you up into a bunch of little rings of light. You go in as a little ball of light. But once you make impact with the shredder, it slices you up into a bunch of little rings of light. Think about this, right? Think if I give you a big ass onion, right? And I say, hey, man, slice this onion up because we having hamburgers. What you going to do? You going to take that one big onion, that ball, and turn it into a bunch of rings. Into a bunch of rings. From one ball to many rings, that's L becoming the Elohim, plural form, when we got shredded up into the matrix. So now, when we unwind up out of this bitch, we got to have seven incarnations, and I'm going to talk about that later, to get out of here. So basically, let me go and break this down real quick, because I don't want it to slip my mind. They say that, the dad had ejaculated so many sperm and that only one made it and all the other ones died. That's a lie. And nature don't waste nothing. You feel what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you the truth what the ancestor said and you can pick which one you want. The ancestor said the dad had ejaculated seven sperm. And that the mama automatically got seven eggs ready. And that the seven, when they say only one sperm survived, that's a lie. None of them sperm survived. All of them sperm crashed into their own egg and became their own version of you and their own nectar. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. When you was born into this world, you was born into many other universes, man. Them, that's where you go when you dream. And that ver the other versions of you that exist in those other alternate realities, they was born into those realities. See, check this out, right? The sperm is very dense. The, think about this. The sperm is like an onion. You can keep peeling back layers till it gets smaller and smaller. What happens is your sperm is very dense. And guess what? It's seven layers to the female egg. You can look at this however you want to look at it. I'm showing you something right now, y'all. Think about this theory I'm about to give you. You got one sperm, one egg. But the sperm is dense and the egg is dense. 
when that sperm crash into the egg, its first layer crashes into the egg's first layer. So guess what happens? The sperm sheds that first layer into the first layer of the egg. So it moves on with six more layers. That sixth layer, the sperm, it crashes into the sixth layer of the female egg. And so the sperm shed that layer behind into that layer. Then it's got five more layers. And that fifth layer, it crashes into the fifth layer, the wall of the egg. And it gets stuck into that wall and all the way down to the sperm ain't got number one layer left. But guess what? At that point, ain't number one egg layer left. And they both, and that's the center self where you at right now. I'm telling you that the sperm has seven layers and the egg got seven layers. And when the sperm make contact with the egg, its first layer hits the egg first layer and it gets stripped away into that layer. And the sperm just rips off a layer with each wall it's penetrate to go into the middle one. That's what I'm saying in my mind right now, what I was trying to explain. So that right there creates our seven chakra layers. I'm gonna show them to you now. If you talk about how our consciousness got shredded up by Saturn, into seven layers, it was through the birth process. Check it out. It's a layer of your consciousness in each one of these universes and one of these bodies. Now, each one of these layers of yourself exists on its own astral plane from the center going out. Now, how did each one of these U's get stuck into the Saturn matrix, which is the pretty rings of Saturn, the rainbow cut. Everybody likes Saturn because it got the pretty rainbow uh, around it. So your consciousness, right? It, you got seven bodies, seven astral bodies, what we call the seven chakras. And each of these exists on their own plane of existence. You're in the middle one now, and I'm showing you how you get into all of them. Each of these rings is a... Uh, layer of your mama's egg. See, when your dad ejaculated, he ejaculated one dense big bang, one dense ball of light. It was dense because it's like me putting on seven layers of socks right oh, on my feet. Your feet gonna be stanky, by the way, if you do that too. <laughs> but, and that's gonna, so my thing is this though. When your daddy ejaculated, see, it's density. All these layers are arranged based on a law of density. So the sperm had to strip through seven layers of itself to penetrate seven layers of that egg. And each layer of the sperm got trapped on its own layer. But they tell you that each sperm died. Each sperm, but they telling you the truth and a lie, right? So it's because the sperm died, but the body resurrected. Like the sperm is like a kamikaze pilot. It's going to die, right? But when the sperm crashes its plane, it's the, it, if you ever see something crash and explode, it makes the pattern of a human body. I'm telling you that this is the pattern that the sperm made when it crashed. Look at yourself. The shape of the human body ain't a random shape. The shape of our human body is the fact that the sperm crashed into the egg. And when, 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 when things crash together, they explode. And the, your body is, is created like a mushroom cloud. You hear what I'm saying? Let me show you again. Uh, I got a slide for this. Check this out, right? See, if you look at the sperm entering the egg, that is you entering the mothership. Okay? When the sperm don't simply enters the egg, it collides with it. See, here's the thing. Ain't no doorway 
into that egg. Ain't no way for the sperm to say knock on the door or ring the doorbell. The sperm is literally an invader. The sperm is breaking and entering. Okay? And when, when the doctor say her waters has been broke, that's like saying her firmament has been breached. Polaris is the gateway that you made when you, when you broke and entered into this place. And if you look at, like I said, broken glass, watch this. The pattern of anything that's smashing or broken is not a random pattern, guys. Open your third eye. It is the pattern of magnetism. Anytime you shatter something, break something, smash something, it will go back to the original construct of what the simulation is because you can't have randomness in the simulation. That means anything you try to destroy, it's just going to turn into the basic th fundamental principles of what created the simulation. So look at the magnetic ley lines that's making our Earth. They look like a spider web. You know how those was created? By destroying order out of chaos that that creates a paradox to where if man ever try to destroy the earth he will only recreate it because it was made out of destruction it's order that was birthed from chaos so if man creates the biggest bomb he can make he won't even destroy the universe he'll just make another one and because man have been creating these big bombs for for, for eons Man have split our universe into many multiverses, giving us Mandela effects, deja vu, and a pan's labyrinth that we got to get out of. Every civilization birthed their own universe trying to be smart. Uh, explosion is explosion. We blowing ourselves out of the base reality trying to play God. But I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to show you how this how we got the knowledge of God by studying what's in between a woman's leg. Women, you just don't know that um, all of the most advanced knowledge man knows come from studying the VJJ. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> and I'm finna break it down to you even deeper. Watch this, right? If you study, see, like I said, when a, a sperm is a kamikaze pilot, and the sperm is trying to transform itself into a human being. How does the sperm do that? The sperm does it by crashing into the egg. Now the word crash became the word crash. Christ, this God you call in Christ. And if you look at how Christ opening up his arms, Christ is personifying crash, crash. It, it we used to be Christos, crash, let me crush, it's what Christ represents. Even if you pull up autism, it's showing you how all of the magnetic ley lines crash together at the middle. That's why one of the names of Jesus was Baal back in the day. And the God Baal was lifted up on, on a mountain, just like you see here. They turned the ball into Jesus and put it on Mount Calvary. And guess what they said about Christ? They said he was pierced in all of his sides. Look at the ball. Can't make this up. Oh, my God. Like and share the video. Because the word Aten is the word Neta. But watch this, though. Here's the thing right here. How did God become a human? The same way the sperm turned into a body. This is the crash knowledge or the Christ knowledge. God becoming flesh, which is the word flash, a flash of light. Why? Because if a pilot, remember when the kamikaze pilots was crashing their planes? Every time one of them planes crashed, the sky lit up like lightning. It was so horrific that. They was landing like flies, like drips, like raindrops in the ocean. Boop, 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 Kamikaze. Think of your sky. Lightning strikes just keep striking. Every strike, you know that is devastation. A kamikaze pilot just landing. 
every time that pilot crashed on the ground, this is the pattern that was made. A mushroom cloud. The human body is a mushroom cloud. The shape of your body is the elements taking the shape of the inner, the resonant energy that was left behind when the sperm crashed with the egg. The sperm wanted to turn itself into a human and a human shapes like an explosion pattern. So the sperm being conscious energy crashed into the egg to create this pattern that we call a body. And all of the elements within the simulation formed around this energetic pattern. And that's how your flesh was made with the elements of the earth and took the shape of a body. All of the elements on a periodic table taking the shape of a human body. Every human with this shape because every human did the same thing. They crashed. Every kamikaze pilot made a mushroom cloud. When they hit the ground, and each one was a spark of light in the sky. That's the light of conception that the doctors talk about when the sperm, when the consciousness lands. You are a damn astro traveler, man. Astronaut. Uh, uh, listen here. This about to get deep now because I haven't even got into my real presentation. I got notes and shit, but I'm freestyling like a fool because I'm so excited. But let's 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 talk about this. This right here is how you get the flat earth AE map. You see this? Because the conscious energy of God is entering our realm from the center point. And when it makes contact with the waters down here, all of the energy dissipates from the center point outward. And this is not a random shape. This is the shape of the AE map. Look at it now. Look at there. Libid is squares. Look at the squares now. You see how you got concentric circles coming from the center and ley lines splitting those circles, giving you like a spider web cube effect. This ain't a random pattern. This is the Big Bang. This is what you get when you smash or destroy anything. And nature did that so man can never destroy the universe. Because every time he break it, he just make it. Look at there. Man, see, nature knows how destructive, I guess, man is. And embedded this within the simulation. So it don't matter how destructive he gets, he will only recreate, you know recreate this thing it's very crazy man now that we understand that right now that we understand how a wormhole is made we create a wormhole by being a sperm cell crashing into the egg they calling it a wormhole but they should really call it a sperm hole show me a worm using a fucking portal y'all i'll wait <laughs> Show me a damn worm, right? Show me some fishing bait using a Stargate. <laughs> Why don't they want to call it what it is? It's a sperm hole. It's for humans, not no worms. They don't let them throw you off. Let's go, man. Let's move on. Next slides here. So, again... Here go the reproduction track of the female. The reproduction track, we just read it in the article, and y'all see this is me giving you sources now. We read in the article that these little groove lines that you see becomes like highways for the sperm to help find the zero point. This is why our souls can't get lost. It's taking a path of magnetism. Now, what I did here in the bottom right corner, I got metal shards poured out around a magnet. And you will see that the most of the shards will be concentrated in the middle. Why? Because it's more dead people than living people. All of the people that ever died, they journeyed back home toward the middle. That's called the Christ mass, which is why I got Jesus Christ 
in the bottom right corner, surrounded by all of those people coming up out of a portal. That's your homecoming. That's when we get back to the base reality, fam. So in the picture in the bottom right corner, you got, that's called a resurrection of Christ. He's surrounded by the masses. But they showing you magnetism personified. But if you look at the female womb right there, a man just can't keep his stick up out of it. He can't. You know why? It's magnetic. We're magnets. Man going to keep going up in that woman, just like these metal shards going to keep going toward the center point. You see what I'm saying? The penis going to keep going into, and this going to go into the Shiva Linga, what I'm going to get into in a minute. All right. So we're going to be cooking today. All on behalf of our queens. All right. So check this out. On the bottom left corner, of course, we got the sacred portal. We got the female womb. Now check this out. They have reverse engineered the female womb into the CERN portal. Check it out. Now, if you look at the CERN portal, it's, it's got the same magnetic ley lines that you see on the AE map. And all roads lead to the center portal. You see there? Ch take a minute and look at that. So... The thing about it, CERN is them reverse engineering the female reproduction track. They finding out how our biology and anatomy on a physical level is mimicking technology that we made as advanced spirits on a astral level. And they able to make the connections that I'm making and turn this thing into mechanic mechanisms because they've studied it so well. Now, check this out because this is where it get deep, right? Oh, and by the way, this is a dope diagram because it shows you, right? It zooms in on one of these little tracks, micro grooves, and it shows you the sperm going through the groove, right? It's really dope right here in purple. This little white line show you the path of the sperm. Uh, where, where, it show, where actually it shows you the ridges of the groove. You can see like the sperm are like in their own little highways like canals. Can y'all see that? These little, this little wiggly line, it cre it's, it's like you ever, let me show you what this is, right? Watch this. Watch this. It's a lot of these water parks. They got these right here. This is the right here what I'm talking about. Check it out. This is how the sperm find the egg. Each sperm is in their own lane. Check it out. Look at the micro groove. You see it right here in purple? They, they got a little diagram in purple right here zooming in on what's happening. Each one of these little striations little grooves is like a slip and slide lane for that sperm to find its way. And this is the same way that souls on the earth find their way back home. Each of these magnetic ley lines all around the earth leads us back. We slide right back into the middle point. You see? And, and so each sperm is like in its own little tube. But, but each tube going to lead to the same pool at the bottom. You know, all of them swimmers going to fall into the same little pool. We've been to a water park before. All right. What happens is even though we all separated in our same in different lanes, we all end up born on the same earth. This is to say every human come through a different mama, which is a different tube that lead to the same earth. Everybody came through their own lane or own mama. And let's say uh, three, four people come out the yellow tube, right? That's saying, hey, my mama had this many children. Your mama had that many children. Think of all these tubes leading from all the women on the earth Right, a tethering line from the woman 
and all these women all over the earth, that line connecting to them connects back to the North Pole. And y'all become the wormholes and portaling system that everybody used to travel the universe through. You see how special you are, women? Do you see how deep this is? So check this out, right? Everybody going to land in the same pool, just like we all born in the same earth. Now, whoever land first, they going to be the oldest. And whoever land last, they going to be the youngest on earth. You see what's going on here? And they're going to land in generations because you can't just send a bunch of people down them tubes. People will get hurt. You got to send it in groups. So when this particular crowd reached the bottom, then we sent in another generation and another generation and another generation. And each generation that lives on the earth, this is how they get here from the back and forth from the North Pole through a series of tubes that we call ley lines that connect the astral realm to the simulation physical realm turning the wormhole or the stargate into what we call a female uterus. Check. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. We can see here that um, what happens is the reproduction track does the same thing that uh, the, the magnetic ley lines of the earth does to souls. And that's why I said as above, so below. When you die, your soul takes the nearest highway back home. And when it's doing that, it's, it think that it's a spirit walking a ley line. But what's really happening is a sperm traveling a reproductive track. And when it get into the zero point, you will be inside of your mama again, being born again in another lifetime, different than this one, a better one, in a higher realm. And you will do this seven times till you get out of this, the rebirth cycle. And I'm finna go deep into this, right? Now, here is the female. Let me take some of this stuff off. I don't want to get confused today. I must stay organized. Hit like and share, by the way. Here is the female reproductive system, uterus, ovary, all that good stuff. It's the golden calf. Look at the color and look at what it looked like. They call it Hathor. Hathor, right? Now, they turned this into a patriarchal form, and that's how you get, you know, Moloch, the cow god, saying you can be born again through me, all this stuff. I'm going to go into that in a minute. One thing I want to go into now. In uh, Vedic, in Vedic, in, in Vedic tradition, you got something called the uh, Shiva Lingam. And I want to pull up the Shiva Linga. Here is the Shiva Lingam to the Vedic people. Take a look at that. And what this is, is a ancient matriarchal uh this became the holy grail i'm excuse me this became the uh ark of the covenant to the christians the christians call it the ark of the covenant but the vedics call it the shiva lingam and what basically this is right is them again worshiping the female uterus all right now if you look at the shiva lingam let's blow it up it ain't hard to see that that's the uterus. Look at it. That's why I like sacred geometry, man. Your eyes ain't gonna lie to you, but niggas will. <laughs> don't listen to none of these Atlantean talking niggas that don't know about magnetism. They ain't connected to the ancestors. They connected to pseudoscience. Cause I'm giving you what the ancestors left behind. And I ain't just talking, I'm showing. Check that out. This right here is the uterus. You see, and that's why they painted it that color. 
Now, the uterus is the thing that houses life. The woman's uterus literally houses human life. Why is this important? What, what the man is putting inside the female uterus is his genes. Now, the word genes is the word genies. We are genies inside of lamps. Check it out. Now, here go the genie lamp. They've been telling you that the genie lamp got a little blue dude in it that can grant your wishes. That's so crazy. You know that that's fairy tales, right? I'm giving you the real science behind the fairy tale. If you look at the genie lamp, you know it's called a lamp. Excuse me, you know it's called a genie lamp. Because the word genie is dealing with everyone's origins, genes. Your beginning, when you say beginning, you're saying be genes. Be gen, the gen are the sperm. And they fucked around and they turned the two ends at the end of gen. And they turned them two ends and made them do a, they rotated them two ends 90 degrees to the right and they turned the word gen into the word jizz i can show you i ain't making this up the sperm is the spirit the gen is the jizz attention all music artists let's collab i'm not making it up though it's facts They didn't do nothing but rotate them two ends 90 degrees and you got jizz instead of gin. The word begin is the word begin. To, the soul becomes this mythological creature that they call the gin. Some people spell it D-J-I-N. Today, that's your modern genie, but that's them personifying the sperm cell. That's why the genie got that wiggly tail. That's why the genie lives in a lamp, because the sperm lives in the uterus. People, they taking everything about our births and, and, and turning it into mythology, and you glorify the fairy tales instead of yourself. If you knew what you are and how you became to be, you would look at yourself in the mirror and look at yourself different, man. You literally used to be a sperm cell. Like when you think about you was a sperm cell and no one taught you how to find your way down them dang on ley lines to get to the earth. How did you know you were a little traveler, man? And you don't even remember. You, you found the egg. Dude, if I tell a nigga that's in my hood and he say, where am I? Who am I? And I be like, bro, you don't remember driving here? You drove here. You don't remember. You literally drove here. Like this memory is in you. You was a, a spirit from a previous lifetime. And from that earth, let me show you about, about this wormhole system. All of these earths, right? are stacked on top of each other with wormholes. And it's an earth beneath you and it's an earth above you. And this is how we get to each one like an elevator system. See, let's say like this is our earth right here. Let's ignore the rocket. Ignore that damn rocket because it'll throw you off. The rocket is just the sperm cell. Check me out, right? Our earth is right here. That's the, that's the AE map, dude. Look at it. Our earth is an expanse that's coming from a wormhole at the middle of it. Look. This is what our earth is. All these magnetic ley lines are rising up as they go toward the center. 
they're falling down as they go away from it. That's how you get this symbol right here. As they go toward the center, they raise up. United, we stand. Divided, when they separate from each other and spread out, they fall. And that's what the doggone female reproductive tract doing. All these roads divide up as it spread out and leave the other side of the wormhole. But all of these little micro grooves, they all is the same road lead to the same place. Look at this. It's a wormhole. And all of these roads lead back to the North Pole sucking you up out of here. Look at there. See, ignore everything else but this, this AE map. Our world is a flat circle. In the middle of it is a mountain called Mount Maru. And you know what that mountain is? It's literally our reality being spaghettified, breaking down, ripping itself up into a portal to lead out of the place. It's a mountain made of light or ethereal, some sort of plasma that's where reality is breaking down, creating a portal up out this bitch. So my thing is this. This is our flat earth, and when you go toward the middle, you're raising up in elevation. The highest point on the earth is the zero point. So my thing is this right here. Once you get to the zero point, you get beamed up. And guess what? You get spit out of a tunnel, a portal, into a universe that's above us. And this just keeps going and going and going of stacked up universes, stacked up on each other. And I didn't make this up. This is what the ancestors said. Tell me they didn't say it and I'll debate you. Anybody. Yeah, big boy shit. I can show and prove. All them niggas can do is talk about Atlantis and shit. Fairy tales, nigga. Here go the wormholes stacked on top of each other. Let me show you. You see that opening? That splint through the earth? Look at what the Mesopotamia is showing you right there. You see that opening right there? That's called a dark tower. You know what that tower is? It's a fucking stairway to the heavens. It's a series of wormholes stacked on top of each other. That's what it is. It's a series of wormholes stacked on top of each other. And when you keep stacking them, you create the spinal cord, the central nervous system. We live inside, uh, reality is in the mind. Even your body is on it. We think there's a world outside around us, but everything you see around you is in your mind right now. It's an image projected at the core of your brain. So in essence, there is no such thing as an outside world. Everything we looking at around us is, is a, in us. Ain't no such thing. But check this out, right? Them reverse engineering the female uh, uh, womb, and now they able to bend the fabric of space and time just by studying the female reproductive system, dude. They ain't just geniuses. Remember that the root word of genius is what? Genetics, genie. The real geniuses are the sperm cells. What am I telling you? You were smarter when you was a sperm than when you became a dumbass human. <laughs> as a sperm cell, a nigga couldn't teach you about no as above, so below. As a sperm cell, couldn't nobody teach you about crashing into the egg so you can take the form of an explosion, which is a human body. The sperm knew what it was doing. The human don't. Think about this. All of us humans were sperms. But we study sperms today, and we still don't understand them. When we were one, how when we were sperms, we had all that knowledge of the universe. Then when we became humans, we had to start studying sperms to get that knowledge back.
Remember, we were stripped of this knowledge as we fell through the veils. It's seven layers to your mama's egg. It was seven layers to the sperm. Every time a layer got stuck in, in its perspective layer, like I explained recently, you were stripped of some of this knowledge of the journey of being a sperm. So by the time you got to the centermost part of the egg, all your shit was stripped, and now you exist as seven layers of yourself with some of the knowledge stuck in each layer. So for your spirit to get smart, it literally got to go to school, the universe, the university, and go into each classroom to get back the consciousness that was lost into each layer to reclaim it and consolidate them back to one again to where you can't teach it now. It knows everything when it's uh, consolidated to L versus the Elohim, which are the ones that said, let us make man in our image. Check this out, right? Check this out. The female womb is the other side of a wormhole, okay? Uh, if you understand how wormholes work, you got to have a front door and a back door. Now, we are fallen souls that entered the earth from technology that we created in the sky called the sky vault, and I'm going to show it to you right now. As above, so below. Watch this, uh, people. Sorry about the wait here. Hold on a second. I'm going to have to open this folder back up. I closed it by mistake. Here we go. So it, this is the Hebrew cosmos. And the Tesla, uh, let me show you something real quick before I go forward. Please share the video, guys, because this is just so deep. Check this out, man. Here go the symbol for females right there. That's the symbol of Venus on the left. On the left, you got the symbol of Venus, which is the symbol of the female. Let me show you something. If you pull up this thing right now, you got the symbol of the female and you got the symbol of the male. Now, the female, her symbol is literally associated with the circle of the earth and the fact that X marks the spot. When you put that plus sign inside of the circle, then you get the famous Christian cross that they give you, which ain't, 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 it shouldn't be a, a patriarchal symbol. It's a feminine symbol. You know, the, the cross with the circle around it. Let me see if I can pull it up. It's a, this one here. This symbol right here, people, I'm going to go into this because this is deep now. This represents the woman's egg and the woman's reproductive tract. X marks the spot, guys. This symbol is literally this right here. It's all of the ley lines leading the sperm home, which is to the belly of the mama, where it finds its peace at, and it gets... And when, when they said that the body of Osiris get put back together again by his woman, this is what the mama doing. She making all things new again. When your energy breaks up and, and leaves this body, it's going to be put back together again in the womb of your mama all over again in the next life. Check this out, people. This image right here on the right, right, that is coming from the Vatican Look at that. There's a big old spear that they got at the Vatican. How many of y'all know about that? It's called the spear within the spear. You know why the Vatican got the spear within the spear? Because, listen, the spear within the spear is the chakra layers I keep telling you about. I keep telling you that your mama egg got layers. The egg got layers. And the sperm got to break through each layer. And when the sperm break through the last layer, it enters Midgard, the middle world. But it still exists in all of the outer worlds. Here is an egg cut open. 
and it looked just like the earth. What am I saying? I'm saying we are sperms, spiritual beings that are still trying to penetrate and break our way into the center. We haven't quite made it yet. We journey from the outside in. But the crazy thing is we journey from the outside in. What's leading us back into the center is our revelations that we finding out from the inside out. And that's very paradoxical. Now, if you check out this egg right here, if that's seven layers to a sperm, each layer going to get ripped off in each layer of the egg and it will become a chakra layer in its own respected netter. That's why they call netters because they like filtering systems. They're like nets. They capture each layer of the consciousness as it falls into the multiverse or the multi-sim. As it, it, I'll say the multi-sim. So you exist in each of the layers of reality. And so here is on the left, this is Jain cosmology. The Jainism people have the oldest, uh, some of the oldest cosmological and astrological systems on earth. We still use them today. And then you can see in their cosmology, they got the four, four corners of the earth coming to the center. Basically, they're on point with what Mercat Mercator is saying in his North Pole map. And they predate Mercator. And Mercator was a very traveled man. He's been in the North Pole several times. And this is what he said is there. The Jain people were able to go anywhere on the earth. And this is what they said was there. How do the Vatican know what's at the middle of the earth? Why the hell? Listen, the Vat, think about it. They teach you Christians that Jesus was on the cross. Why do they got this ugly Pac-Man ball on the cross? Oh my God. You don't see that? This is at the Vatican courtyard. Instead of them having Jesus on the cross, they got the, I told you Jesus is the God ball. Jesus is the God ball. They got everybody in Mecca around that cube. Look at this courtyard. It got four green squares, four patches of grass. That's what Mercator's showing you in his map, man. How is it that Mercator's map looked just like the Vatican courtyard? With the four continents in the middle leading us back home inside the mama's belly of the egg. That's how the genie get in the lamp. You see the color of that ball, right? You see that ball is gold and yellow. That's the Pac-Man shit eating up the souls, sucking them into the, the cube. But they're demonizing this. Let's go to the Vatican spirit. They're trying to demonize the female egg. And like I told you, right? The female egg has many layers in it. That's why it's a spear within a spear. The sperm is like a arrow penetrating this spirit, spearing it. So when you say spirit, you're saying spirit. That's how your spirit was created. This is how your spirit was formed. Check it out. Check it out. Spirit. Spirit, stick it, stab it, poke through it, spear it. Your spirit is created by the, the light that's inside of your body is only able to go inside of your body because your soul poked a hole in the top of your brain and it's allowing the light of heaven to pour into the body. That's consciousness in, inside of the body. 
That's how your consciousness is able to, to, to bleed into the body. The pineal gland is a stargate that's connecting the higher self to the lower self, which is the body, and it's doing it by spearing it, by just spearing it. The sperm speared the egg. It speared it. And when it did it, it created breath in the body or spirit through an act. The spirit is more than a thing. It's an activity that was done by the soul of crashing into the air, of spearing, of penetrating the ether or breaking the waters. Okay, so... How did the hole get broken into this thing? It was spit. The people are walking into it, man, and they crashing into it on all sides. It's showing you what the sperm doing to get to the egg. If you study a female reproductive tract, all of the four corners of the earth and magnetic ley lines surrounding the center of the earth, it looked just like her reproductive tract and the earth will reproduce you when you die through the same organ system. All you got to do is look for parallels, people. If we know that the earth is going to recycle us, and I look at the machine that they said the earth uses to make things new again, then I say, okay, that's how the earth reproduces souls. Let's study how the woman reproduces humans, and you will find it ain't no difference, man, because the soul just became a human through the, with the same technology. It is just existing on a higher form and lower form. In our higher form, it's a stargate. In a lower form, you call it a P-U-S-S-Y. But they both are connected to each other. When you hop into the stargate in our base reality, it spits you out in a vagina in the earth realm as a human. And the way that a wormhole works, nothing can exit the wormhole the way that it entered it. So when you entered the Stargate as a god, you exited the pussy as a human. Because this Stargate, this wormhole is also an incubator that transforms things like a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Please like and share the video. Let's get the numbers up. So if you look at the symbol that they use for the female, it's literally technology of perpetual energy. You know why? Negative and positive or masculine and feminine energy is eternally perpetuated through the female reproductive system. Even the female reproduces herself through this thing. That's why I told you earlier, the woman's womb isn't feminine. It's neutral. It's neutral. So, when we say that, see, our sex organs ain't really masculine or, or feminine. It's the exact same technology on either a female or a man. The penis is an explosion of the uterus, and the uterus is an implosion of the penis. It's basically the penis flipped inside out, tucked in, and instead of having two testicles, she got two ovaries, and instead of having a shaft going out, she has a canab split nose going in. She's basically the complementary po polarizing opposite that allow for this machine to work man and woman are the negative and positive to a perpetual battery that we call life so when you think about the negative and the positive on a battery we're trying to say that the energy itself is negative or positive but the thing about it is this right here man and woman are just energy period they become negative or positive once they enter duality. Now, what I'm showing with the woman slide on the left is that what makes her unique. Well, well I'm going to just say this because I don't want to simp too hard. What makes man and woman unique 
is that our sexuality is so sacred. Even though you exist as a man or a woman, your sexual organ is neither. Is neither. Our reproductive systems, what I mean by that, right, they're like batteries. And a battery ain't negative or positive. It's both. That's what I'm telling you about how the man can, can have a female or a male in his sperm. Like what I'm saying is that what comes out of the reproductive system of the woman or the man ain't necessarily going to be the woman or a man. At the, gen at the sex organ um, is neutral. Meaning when you say something is neutral, it can be either or. And it can do, be either or because it itself is neither. It can create both of them because it's neither one of them. You are a man and, uh, and, and you have a tool. You have a, uh, put it this way, we are living stargates and portals. The portal itself is neutral, is genderless, is what I'm saying. But once the portal exists on a being, it's given a gender. And now what happens is, remember what I said about wormholes, right? Whenever you create a wormhole, it got to be two sides of this thing. It got to be two sides. That's the law of duality. When you open up this wormhole, you create up and down, left or right, man and woman. This right here, right? This is the tree that we see Adam and Eve standing on the side of, masculine, feminine. This is the tree that creates polarity, duality. And it allows both of those du du energies to recycle through a neutral point that they both agree to make. But, see... The thing is, when a man penis go inside of a female vagina, this is what it looked like, y'all. Study this image. When a man's penis enters a female vagina, they both come together and look just like this. The Hindu worship the elephant called Ganesh, and that was them personifying the female womb. We got to get out of spookism. This is why they worship the elephant called Ganesh. Because when they studied the female's biology, they saw that she had the Holy Grail in between her legs. Look at this thing and tell me you don't see that Holy Grail right there. Tell me you don't see the Holy Grail. You can see the Holy Grail right there in the uterus. That go to grail, and then look, boom, that go to grail cup right there in the middle of the uterus, right there. You see it? The pink part in the middle. That's the holy grail. But they turned this whole thing into an elephant called Ganesh. They stopped, the, we stopped worshiping the uterus because people started personifying it to men and women, and now we forgot how deep the woman is. Because you talking about how deep Jesus is. How deep a damn elephant named Ganesh is. See these pseudo ass niggas. They'll get online and teach you how deep Anubis is. How deep Pata is. And all of these gods is creator gods that's just personifying the uterus. Facts. What created every man and woman is the uterus. And I made a collage to go deeper with this. Watch this. Check this out, right? In Egyptian folklore, they got a god named uh, Kanun, which is also Ptah, but he makes man on a potter's wheel. And the potter's wheel, where he making man and woman at, ain't nothing but the circle of the earth, or the Shiva Lingam, which is the uterus. The uterus is the potter's wheel that create both man and woman. Look at the image I'm showing you. The tree 
that's in between Adam and Eve, the serpent and all that, that is the female sexual reproductive system. That's why they give that serpent a red tongue because she got a red. What you think the pearly gates is? Why you think they call them the pearly gates? Because they call it a pearl tongue. It's, uh, the color of the womb is pearly. They turned the female uterus into the genie's lamp. R remember that the word genie is the genes. That's how did the genie get in a lamp? The daddy put his genes in the uterus. When they was telling the story about reproduction, they was fucking masking it. They weren't being straight up. Maybe they was teaching children about the birds and bees, so to speak. But when the child said, how did the baby get in the egg? How did the chicken get in the egg? How did the genie get in the lamp? Right? How did the genetics get in the uterus to, to, to form the human? This is all what the spirituality was about. Because when you say spirit, guess what that means? Spiral. That is the answer to the question. When somebody say, how did the sperm get into the lamp? How did the gene, how daddy? Through a spiraling motion, spiritual, spirituality. The spiraling of light in the middle of the earth is what drills a dark tower, dark hole through the earth. And that tower is the stairway to heaven or hell. You can go up and down it. It's a pathway that's literally made out of spiritual energy, spiraling energy, light spiraling. That's because at the North Pole, you got souls going up the stairway and down the stairway. And as they travel, they create a pathway. How many people come from the hood, right? In the hood, right, we would walk through the bushes to get to the store. I'm from the south, right? You can take a shortcut through the woods, nigga, and be right there at the store. Now, over the years, people would take that shortcut so much, that pathway through the woods, that we would carve out a natural pathway. Because it's so much traffic coming this route, the trees and everything won't even grow there no more. Like, you don't have to dig a pathway. You just got to keep walking on it. And we got a lot of them in Bama. Natural pathways that was created just by people walking that route for so long. And it just don't, it just create a natural pathway. You see what I'm saying? Because niggas was taking this shortcut so long. It's just a dirt little path. The trees won't grow right there. Now, if they stop using it, the trees and shit will grow back and reclaim it. But people still using it, so the pathway going to stay. Our activity constantly through a place, it literally carves out a pathway. Like me taking a knife and slicing through wood. A bunch of people walking back and forth through the same spot over and over will slice through it and carve a pathway. This is natural facts. This is what's happening at the North Pole. A natural pathway is being made in and out of the earth just by souls using this area so consistently. You feel me? And I'll show you another collage. Please support my work, guys. Uh, check this collage out. I'm going to pin the cash app. Oh, it's already pinned. Thank you for everybody who hit the like button, share button, supporting the show. Appreciate you. Um, this Vatican Museum is showing you the stairway to heaven. From heaven and the earth. Okay? And the spiraling motion acts like an invisible drill that carves a natural pathway through reality. And that spiraling motion is what I was showing you a minute ago with the doggone uh, vortex, osmosis. Why do you think that the spaceship is turning above? Look at the top of the cup of water. It's turning up there like a spaceship. They, they turned the woman, the, our mothership into UFO talk. 
All these niggas that's online talking about the Anunnaki, motherships, them boule Freemasons. Them agents, man. You can't make this shit up, bro. They want to take the fucking beauty, the sick, the, the, the glory away from the woman and give it to aliens and Anunnaki's and Atlanteans and all kind of fairy tale stories. When really, we should be talking about us and the womb. Because how you think you got here, you used to be a sperm cell. The real secrets of reality is tied up into how your soul became flesh. But they, all these niggas got y'all saying, we were created by the Anunnaki. We were created by the Atlanteans. We were created by aliens and shit. Man, I was created by the uterus in between my mama leg, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> now debate me on that. And if every human that I'm looking at now was created by the womb of a woman, what make you think it was different back in the day, you dummy? Well, back in the day, humans were manufactured by Yahweh. Back in the day, the Ford, the Ford car company used to manufacture humans. Back in the day, Yaku created humans, but that was a a a a a a a a a a a a a a fucking shortage on humans, cause he couldn't manufacture enough in time. Nigga, if you see how the woman's womb keep on spitting out these humans, you can never run out of humans. Because humans being created is based with the law of attraction and magnetic laws. Men can't get enough of women. I don't care how much niggas hate women, you still gonna have sex with them. That's the law of attraction. Unless you some weirdo that's saying, I hate women so much I'm dating men now. No, don't blame that on women. Let's just say you secretly love men so much you never wanted a woman. Quit lying, you secret nigga. Secret undercover niggas. Yeah, a lot of niggas saying that. Women so bad out here, I don't blame niggas for being gay. No, women ain't that bad, dog. If you gay, quit acting like you running over there because the woman scared your bitch ass over there. That's something you wanted to do, nigga. Blaming everything on a woman. Even you being gay. I'm saying red pill niggas do that, man. It's sad. Man, you, you don't hate the woman so much that you became gay. That's because you love the man so much, nigga. <laughs> so check this out, right? This is how man and woman come together to make a portal. This is what, how the North Pole is, 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 is stand in existence. See, the North Pole is made out of a natural traffic pathway. Spirits are going up and down this stairway to heaven every second. Right now as I speak. And because it's so much traffic in the middle of the earth up and down where children are coming, being born, souls are, people just died, so they leaving. You got souls coming and going every second. Right now as I'm talking, somebody being born and somebody dying. That creates a natural pathway at the middle of the earth that's paved with light. I'm going to say that again. That creates a natural pathway at the middle of the earth that is carved out of a lightsaber. Each soul is a streak of light, either entering the earth or leaving the earth. And just like the pathway that I said we take in the hood, if you use it enough, it'll carve a path. And this how the North Pole is there. Sets. The moment souls can't enter and leave the earth, this lightsaber will fade away. It'll fade away. Okay? Just like people stop taking that shortcut in the hood, the trees will grow back over it. It'll fade away. So, sets, the act of man and woman coming together, keeps the portal open. 
And that act creates this right here, which is an open portal, a wormhole. One side is the man penis, one side is the female uterus, and as long as they stay together, the portal will stay open. But when they start beefing and don't want to have sex and split up with each other, we become damn souls. The portal close up. The portal is made like a tornado. It's made out of polarizing forces coming together, six, nine energy, man and woman. And if them opposites don't want to attract no more and get along, then the stairway to heaven or the stairway to hell, which is both of them, it'll fade away. Because that pathway that's carved from the stove that we use in the hood, it ain't made out of just people walking to the stove. It's made out of people coming back from the stove too. People walking to the stove and they walking back from the stove People coming and going, passing each other on that pathway. Niggas don't take the main roads in the South. If you show me a stove in the South, I can show you the pathway that the niggas take. They don't take the pathway that the, the new people take in town. <laughs> Every hood got this shit. They know you ain't from there because you walking a long way to the corner stove. And it's some nigga that can't wait to go up to you and show you the cut. Hey, my man, you ain't for round here, is it? Man, yeah, man, take the cut. But be careful, because niggas get robbed in the cut, too, in the shortcut now. <laughs> you might want to take the long way at nighttime. Don't take the cut, nigga. <laughs> but I'm just saying, though, to teach you in a way where you can understand what's happening at the North Pole. Spiral is spirit. And this is what's happening. CERN is a lightsaber that's drilling through the fabric of time and space, creating a wormhole. And they are able to accelerate those particles, those two particles, one being yin, one being yang. They aren't two particles. They are two cyclones of energy, like a counterclockwise wind current smashing up against a clockwise wind current, making a sitch nine pullet. Now they go your tornado. So the root word, and, and we just beginning, y'all. This is the, the souls can only enter and leave the earth as long as the man and woman maintain the bond. This is the Ark of the Covenant. It had nothing to do with humans having a bond with gods. It had everything to do with men having a bond with women. Now, if you look at the original church, it's the family. Now, the family broke up, but everybody married to the church. Ain't that a bitch? The man has divorced the woman, but both of them are married to Jesus. Ain't that some shit? I keep telling you, the original Ark of the Covenant was man and woman, yin and yang, keeping that bond between each other. To death do us apart. Why? Because we stuck together with this wormhole system. One half is the woman, one half is the man. When they come together, we keep this portal open right here. Sex. Sex is taking place at the middle of the earth, y'all. At the middle of the earth, there's a penis penetrating the vagina as above so below in the earth realm the penis got to penetrate the vagina in order for life to happen this is what's happening at the middle of the earth dude as within so without so on the outside of this sex has to happen for life too now let me show you how they show you this right A black hole with the light tower. This is what our universe is. Right here. So check it out. This is from NASA. And they are basically a religion. They didn't take a picture of this in space. Only a fool will believe that. They're getting these images from the ancestors, guys. That's why I made this collage. Look at it. NASA is giving you their own 
interpretation of the Shiva Lingam. The secrets to life is tied up into the women, which is their way of saying the gal's axis, which is the gal axis. They're saying this is what the galaxy is, but they're not doing nothing but corrupting the knowledge of the spiral goddesses, which were the first oracles to teach us about the Milky Way and how souls come through the woman. Look at it right here. Go look them up. Go study them. These are spiral goddesses. They've been around before the Milky Way, son. People been teaching about this. See, when you see with the spiral on her womb, that's showing you the reproduction tract. I just showed you that, man. Let's pull it back up. Did all this shit spirals into the, the womb. The reproduction tract is what the Hindu was talking about here. All this shit is just the rebirth cycle all over again. You got Moses in between two pillars. But before you had Moses in between two pillars, guess what you had? The spiral goddesses creating duality. Look at Moses. Look at here. People, they, I'm giving you her story to his story right now, which is why I'm shocked that we ain't got big numbers. People say, Sanchez, we love it when you do the mother goddess stuff. We love it when you do it for the women, the, the, all of the stuff about the womb. But where y'all at? I get my biggest numbers when, um, when it's some trendy shit. But don't nobody care that you came from the womb? You don't, you don't care about the science of how you came to be? Anyway, for those who do, Support the broadcast for today. Here is the spiral goddess. These predates Moses. You see they corrupting this thing, right? You see that, right? Now, the reason she is, remember, she like a ballerina. She's spinning around. And as she spin around, she splits the ether. Just like osmosis in the middle of this cup. Check it out. The spiral goddess is standing up on her tippy toe like a ballerina. You know why? Look at the doggone spiral in the middle of the cup, dude. Look at the Holy Grail. The tornado reaches a, a little bitty point at the bottom of it. That's why the ballerina make a little point with her toes when she spin around. She got the mimic the center of magnetism to get the same results and balance herself like Ma'at. Can't none of these niggas mess with your boy. Check this out, man. The reason, see, she got to be, she got to bring both of her feet together like Jesus on the cross, dude. Why you think the genie feet look like crisis, bro? The everything for a reason, bro. Look at the genies. Look at the genie feet. Watch this. Look at the feet of the genie. The, the, his feet is spiraling into a point. That's because the gen, where we start at our origin point, is at the North Pole. Your consciousness is projecting itself from the lamp out here into the simulation. But we still in the womb of our mother, man. We still tethered to the mother, which is why the genie is stuck to the lamp. The tethering line that's connecting your soul to the North Pole, that's your umbilical cord on a higher plane waiting to be cut, dude. Your spiritual tethering line in this world is the, the umbilical cord to a newborn baby on a higher plane. And when you die and rip that line in this world, they're going to cut your umbilical cord on a higher plane. All of these actions below are tied to actions above. 
when we when we're placed in the ground the sperm is placed in the egg when the soul journeys back home and breaks the tether and like rip the cord because remember now the soul got to free itself from the earth that line is gonna pull the soul back to the North Pole, and when his soul get to the North Pole, they gonna cut it, boop, and you gonna float up through the sky vault, and be bo and the, the soul that was in this body is going to end up inside of a baby crying in the hospital, taking his first breath. You won't even remember being in your mama's stomach. You just gonna remember your first breath is that, if that, cause that first breath. Remember now, in this world, everything that happened here, it happened opposite up there. So your last breath is an exhale. And it turns into your first breath, which is an inhale up there. It's polarity. But if you look at the feet of the genie, it's the feet of the ballerina. The genie... And the ballerina and all and Christ is the same concept like I was showing you with Moses spinning around in the middle of the earth, creating a crease, a split. Right. So that the souls can travel in and out of the reality. That's what Moses represent. He created a pathway for the people to travel in and out the earth. He created a crease or a split, but the word crease is the word Christ. And these guys are personifying that shit in between a woman's legs. Oh, that split. What you think they worshiping in the Middle East? That box, baby. What we call a uh, woman's womb. Give me that box. Give me that box. It's the cube, dude. Check this out, right? The crease, the split, the Christ. It was all about the female uterus. They turned it into a God with his arms open. But before you had Jesus Christ, you had the spiral goddess, the ballerina. And the reason they got Jesus legs pointed like that is because the spiral goddesses spin around like a Taurus field to keep that split open. Jesus is like a spinning top. That's what the genie is. That's why when you rub the lamp, he unravels up out that bitch like a spiral of light and unfolds into a genie. He's the spirit, the spiral. So Christ, it's the same thing. Christ was a serpent God at first, and the serpent coiled up around this thing represent the spiral goddess. The staff of Moses with the serpent around it is representing the female uterus, man. They turned her knowledge into a bunch of guys doing tricks. But she don't got to do no tricks. She don't got to do nothing but open her legs. When you start personifying the female uterus into genies and gods and Anunnaki and all that shit, now they got to do magic to create human life. But if you don't personify the uterus and we just learn about it, that's science, bro. And we can literally learn how life came to be. We don't know how great we are because they don't teach us about childbirth as much as they teach us how God created man and woman. Ain't no outside forces creating humans but the p pussy. The womb is what makes us, man. And we studying everything else while the people in power is studying the womb. And they reverse engineering it to make CERN machines and all kind of technology that's able to mimic the womb and, 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 and manipulate time and space by creating portals, which is what the womb is. Which is why I'm showing you this. Tesla created his oscillator by doing what? Studying the womb. If you study the path of sperm through the uterus, you will see the path of light through the Tesla oscillator, which is why the Egyptians called the unk the symbol of life. It just so happened to be the symbol of the female. She is living technology. 
but ain't nobody interested. Niggas love to hit some draws, but they rather me teach about Elon Musk than the female pussy that they lay with every night. Where are all my numbers at? I'm telling you, women, you're the, you're the women, and this ain't, I, I want women to understand something, women. I've been doing this for years. When I do streams about Jesus, Allah, Buddha, I have almost 1,500 people watching. If I have a stream on Yahweh or Allah decoding some Hebrew shit, going into my biblical syncretism, I'm going to pack out the show. But if I literally have a show showing where it all was stolen from, how the female was the original spiritual system before you get all that, people don't care about that, women. This is part of the spiritual attack on women right here, that you're the most precious. You should be the focal point of all debates and, 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 and conversation. But ain't nobody checking on the womb. In fact, these are some of my lowest numbers videos. The only reason her story to his story did big numbers is because I tricked people like it was going to be me shitting on Egypt and the pharaohs. I knew to sell that series, I had to turn up on Egypt niggas and Pan-Africans while I praised the woman. But if I do a show simply giving a woman her props without giving them haters none of my energy, them don't do good. I peep this shit. That in order for me to really teach, get the people interested in learning about how divine a woman is, I got to do it with a little mess. And it, the truth should just be able to stand alone. It let me know people ain't really seeking the truth. They seeking an entertainment, some mess, and all that shit. How I got more numbers talking about her son, Campbell, than teaching you about the fucking womb that you come out of. Niggas want to show up and, and talk about a nigga that got thighed and some gay shit. But when I say, hey, I'm talking about the pussy next week, they don't want to come show, out, show up for that. <laughs> Y'all are spiritually gay, my niggas. <laughs> I know you're a straight man, but you, you do gay shit, a lot of y'all niggas. Like not being interested in this kind of bill. I love me some pussy, but when I do a lecture on it, you don't want to learn about it. <laughs> you rather me go in on Umar, nigga. Check this out, y'all. We about to turn this thing up and go deep. This is the Vatican, man. If you look at what's happening at the Vatican, they got all the people walking up to the egg because that's what the sperm do. <coughs> that's what the sperm do. <coughs> Check it out. <coughs> I'm going to put this up here for a minute. And I got to take a quick smoke break and get me something to drink. But donate to the show, man. Let me know you appreciate what I'm doing because they literally, I put a lot into this presentation, new collages and all that. And we can't get our 1K minimum. That's my goal every show, 1K. 1K. We need 100 more people. I'm going to take a break and I'm going to come back and I'm going to go in some more. But study this collage while I take a break. Let's get it.
the story right And now I see Watch this, right? All of these dudes out here that's teaching and they ain't putting a woman and they ain't researching and, and, and showing how divine that the woman is. They always glorifying pharaohs and glorifying gods and saying we come from aliens, we come from gods, we come from Yahweh, Yaku, we come from the female reproductive system. And everybody's saying we come from anything else, they are agent. They working with the powers that be. It's an attack on the female, man. And that's what the first church, the witch hunts was always about the females. Why? They weren't just killing females because they hated females. They was trying to study the female vagina. They was accusing females of witches, talking about they want to see how the witch is doing their magic. When they really want to see the magic of the uterus. And they had to target people to be the guinea pigs. Anybody, any woman could have been called a witch. They've been trying to study this for a long time. How, how to make a womb on a man which is what Adam is. Adam is a man with a fucking pussy who gave birth to the woman. Ain't that backwards? These guys been trying to put, they been trying to give men the power to give birth, which is why Christ and all these gods talking about we created humans. Anunnaki did it. Yakub did, bro. Ain't nothing create a human but a female reproductive system. She's an incubator. Humans are formed in a female's body. Anything you else talking is some pseudo shit, nigga. <laughs> you can't argue with what the hell I'm saying. I can argue with all that dumb shit you talking. Uh, Yahweh made them. Yaku made them. The Anunnaki came way to the earth and made some humans to mine gold for him. And man, shut your... Man, don't get me, boy. I better put this beer down. I see that now. Because I'm about to be super simp today, nigga. You better realize, too, nigga, a lot of the women donate to Brother Sanchez, nigga. Yes, I'm a paid agent, motherfucker. And I love it to death, boy. I got a bunch of women uh, saying, get them, Sanchez. Get these weird-ass niggas. Because all you niggas is doing Anunnaki. Y'all talking about, special, you talking about guys giving birth. All these gods and guys ain't doing that but personifying the female womb. Listen, guys, look here. They said Jesus was put to death on the cross. Look at what's on that cross, y'all. The female egg. The female egg, man. When they talk about Jesus was pierced in all of his sides, you, you, you want me to show you why they saying that about Christ? Watch this shit. It's going to blow you away. Look. What's happening to that egg? What's happening to that egg? Jesus on the cross. Jesus is pierced in all his sides. I keep telling you, Jesus is the God ball. And the God ball was literally a ball of light. That's what you're calling Pac-Man, eating up the souls as they travel to it. That's why Jesus is talking about he wants your soul. He's a demigod. Now check this out right here. If everybody knew that when you die, your soul do the same thing it's been doing. Finding the egg, going to the mama, sleep inside of its fetal bag till it's time to do it again and do it better. And we do it better and better every time. See, they got us fearing what happens when we die like life is a mystery when it's literally a continuum of energy that can't cease to exist. So our energy 
is on a journey toward the inner earth, to the inside of itself, to the core of the earth. But it is like a sperm that got to break through all of the layers of the egg. And that's why you got a spear within a spear. The reason you got a spear within a spear is because of this. Look, this is what the earth is. It's a spear, spears within spears. And when your energy, when the sperm penetrated the egg, the sperm had seven layers, like an onion skin. You can peel the layers through it. And as the sperm broke through each netta, it left a layer of itself in that netta. And that became what we call a chakra layer. So you exist in all of these worlds at once. And you were born more than one time, dog. When you dreaming, you never start your dream at your childbirth. You know why? You've been born already in that world. You already got a whole nother version of you walking around another world right now doing its thing. You just ain't conscious of it. You ain't piloting that version. But we had the gift to go in and out of each version at will and be sort of multi-dimensional time travelers, connecting all the dots of, of, uh, in the multiverse. And that will make sense of how we come to be. And we'll start knowing the secrets of how we can't, came to be. Kind of like in Back to the Future, trying to trace your family tree back by going back in time. But the thing is this right here. A spear within a spear, a world within a world, man. And uh, we are still sperm cells traveling toward the middle of the earth waiting to be born again. My question to you is, what were you before you were a sperm cell? The ancestors said before we were humans, we were many different forms, took many forms. Now we know just recently, we were all little swimming microorganisms called sperm cells traveling through the uh, female reproductive tract through the striation grooves in it. See, the thing is this. We started off as souls kicked out of Eden and now we got to find our way back to Eden. And this is what we look like trying to head back home. Sperms entering the egg. You think that you was a sperm that entered the egg and became a human. I'm telling you, you're still a sperm that's trying to enter the, inter the innermost part of the egg. This version of you is just because the sperm smashed through one barrier and transformed to a human. But the human is going to smash through another barrier and transform to something else. And that's going to smash into a more, a more innermost barrier. And every time you smash through a spear and go closer and closer toward the core, toward the true center, you got to break a barrier. That's what the Vatican's showing here. I'm teaching you the secrets of the occult like none other. This the Pac-Man and the Pokemon ball. Remember that when we say Pac-Man, the, the Japanese call it Pokemon, Pokemon. It's the same concept, though, with the soul, the monster, and the ball, or the genie in a lamp, which is why the ball is gold, just like the genie lamp. Why you think they painted it gold, man? This is another form of the god ball that they call Moloch. They talked about souls entering the golden calf. That's entering the simulation, the, wor the world, the quantum computer. This golden calf was also called ball, took many forms, and here's another form of it. Same concept. It's the Pac-Man, the one that eats the soul, another form of Saturn, the bull, Satan. He takes a serpent form and a calf form. 
just like Christ. I keep telling you Christ is the devil. Christ take on a serpent form and a calf form, and him and Satan is called the morning star. Oh, my God. The symbol of Satan and the star of Bethlehem is the same fucking symbol. Yeah, I'm going to show you that real quick. The Jesus star, Bethlehem star, look at it. That's the Jesus star right there. The Bethlehem star. Now watch this. Here go the star of Satan. They call it the star of Rimfan. Check it out, bro. You can't make this up. It's star, the ISIS star. It's star, Easter, Easter. Talking about smashing eggs. So if you look at the star of the devil or Ishtar, Easter star, the, you know, the star of Remphan, as you can see here, it's the all saying I. You see it right here? And that is the star of Christ. But this beast is Saturn. And the whole thing about Saturn, right, is that you see them sending the babies to the beast, right? I'm trying to teach y'all how to get past the spookism. They said, man, Saturn is a god that'll eat up the babies and they eat the babies. Man, I'm trying to teach y'all something, right? Check this out. They said that they used to give their babies to Saturn, right? They was talking about the rings of Saturn or uh, the, the, the grooves of the vaginal tract right here. The vaginal groove. These are the rings of Saturn. I can prove to you that the god Saturn is personifying the womb with his ring, rings. Watch this. Sacred geometry. Look at him. He making his hands like a uterus. But at the bottom of that uterus is some rings around his waist. You see it? That's the uh, vaginal canal. His hands is the fallopian tube, the ovaries, the upper part. His bottom body is made out of rings. That's the vagina. I told y'all men started personifying the uterus. So that's how this became a calf or a cow, a beast. When they say that we giving our children to the beast, that's another way of saying your daddy skeet his sperm in the uterus. See, you will see that the priests and the fathers, what they call, because they call these priests fathers, and the fathers are the ones that make the sacrifices. But this is us today. We telling the story of childbirth with mythology and we turning it into spookism. Right? Back in the old day, they would teach you how the fathers put the sperm inside the uterus. The church turned that into the fathers sacrificing their children to the beast. It's all an attack on the spiritual system, on the woman. Because before the, the church rose, everybody was just worshiping the womb that they came out of. That's the oldest spiritual system on earth. It's the worship of the mother goddess. But when they started letting men take that role of the goddess, now you got men giving a seed to a man, you know, like, oh, my God. You got all of these stories about a man trying to give his seed to God. Now, God is the woman. The, 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 the vagina between her legs is what God is. It's called guide. Remember what I taught you earlier? The striation grooves in the female reproduction tract is what guides the sperm home. It's like a ship with a lighthouse at sea. We're semen, semen, semen is semen. Man, I don't know why this thing ain't got 2,000 people watching. I'm hurt, nigga.
This some of my best work. Look at what I'm about to show you. The word began is the word beacon, a beacon of light. There are ships all around this lighthouse trying to find somewhere to dock at, just like the sperm, which are the semen. Ah, oh, man, woman, you're a lighthouse. I want the women to know that you are a lighthouse, which is why they got that bull set on fire. Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth and the light. They said Jesus was pierced in all of his sides. If you ever see a bunch of ships pulling in all directions around a lighthouse, you will see what they talking about. All of the sperm going to the egg, those are the many versions of yourself going back home to unite at the North Pole. Remember now, when we left the North Pole, we shattered into a bunch of different versions. When all of them different yous and them multiverses come back home, it's going to look like a bunch of ships surrounding a lighthouse coming to the same spot, like all the magnetic ley lines on an AE map. Just like the female reproduction track, all of these grooves got sperm using them as a highway to go into the center point. It's so sad, y'all, because when they turned this into men, how are you going to teach us that a man put his seed into another man? How are you going to teach me now that a man gave another man his son? Because we know that's gay. A man only supposed to give his seed, his son to a woman. But when they start teaching you about men, Give not a woman was God and the man sacrificing his children to the God because the beast is the uterus. The golden calf is this monster right here. Him handing the baby to it is the man skeeting the sperm into the uterus. Now, we didn't have no gay stuff before they turned this thing into a male God. When they turned this uterus into a male deity, now you got to find a way for men to give their baby to God. And they created sacrifice for that. That's why you never see a woman sacrificing the baby. God always make a man do it. This is really some gay stuff, man. Because in the original spiritual system, you didn't need this dumbass story of God being pleased through sacrificing your children. Everybody know that when a man lays some good D and he release and skeet in a woman, she feels satisfied. Now, I hate to be vulgar, but I'm showing you the original spiritual system. When the man dropped his load in the woman, it pleased God. She was the guy. She's guide or God because her vaginal tract guides the penis. The shape of her vaginal canal keeps the penis aimed in a way that when he ejaculate, the sperm can go right up to the ovary tracts and all that. So God is guide and her in the female reproduction track literally guides the sperm toward the egg. And it guides them there like a lighthouse is guiding the ship toward it. The, the egg is a beacon of light. People say, um, how does the sperm find the egg? The same way the ship find the lighthouse. So if you pull up a lighthouse, <clears throat> No matter what angle that the ship is coming in on, it's a light ray shooting that way so you can see that light. In other words, you can have ship coming in in all directions finding this one lighthouse because it's shining its light all around itself. <clears throat> so essentially, we can say that these light rays that's around a lighthouse 
are pulling the ships in like the metal shards is being pulled by the magnet. Remember what I showed you earlier? This is very simple science if you see what I'm saying. Let's pull up the metal shards again. All of the, that metal know where to find the magnet at because it's following magnetic ley lines. All of the ships, if you can be in an airplane, right, watching the ships come in from all directions to that lighthouse, it'll look like the Vatican Museum. It'll look just like this. This is why you born from a doctor. They practice maritime law. Your soul is a docked ship, and it's going to be charged the anchoring fee. Anchorage, Alaska. That's why you see Jesus on an anchor. And why did I bring up Alaska? They named a city that was built. It get its money from charging ships to pay anchoring tolls. Like what I'm telling y'all is the whole legal system here is based on the spiritual science of what I'm teaching you. When, when you enter this layer of reality, they treated you like a ship docking at a lighthouse. See, when a ship is at sea and the weather crazy and it need a place to anchor at for the night, it finds the nearest lighthouse. And, and guess what? That's how the lighthouses stay in business. The ships got to pay an anchoring toll and they will wait out the storm at the lighthouse to the shit get clear or whatever. And that's what the lighthouses were for. They were salvation. It was a savior. And they turned the lighthouse into Jesus. But the original lighthouse is the ovaries, the uterus in between a woman's leg. Because when the sperm is trying to find the way out, it's, it's looking at the light that's coming from her ovaries, man. Her ovaries are light bulbs. I'm serious, dude. These are, are light bulbs. And the sperm is coming up the vaginal tract. It can see the light from the ovaries shining through the uterus. So it's following the light above just like we say we see when we die. What I'm telling you is this. The vaginal tract is Dante Inferno. Look at here, man. I'm telling you, we haven't been born yet. We're still sperm cells, and we're a different kind of sperm cell that's called a human, but we're still traveling up the vaginal canal of our higher self mama. You haven't been born yet in heaven. This is what you look like. Watch this. Imagine this. Imagine that you're one of these right now. You think that you ain't a sperm no more, but you still a sperm. Look at yourself. Look at this. Look at the sperm, yo. Just look at the sperm a minute. Look at the sperm. <clears throat> now look at you. You're still a sperm cell trying to travel toward the egg. It's levels to birth, though. And the egg got layers to it. Every time you break through a layer, you regain some of your knowledge of that you are soul headed back home. And in this particular body, we're regaining a lot of it. And in your next incarnation, you're going to regain even more. By the time you arrive back home, you have been, you're going to be to regain all the knowledge that's going to make you God <clears throat> at the middle of the earth. Our awakening process is also our ascension back toward the center as sperm cells. You haven't really reached your mama egg yet. What happened was you, your daddy had seven, you, your daddy had one dense egg. <clears throat> It shed its seven layers through your mama's dent. Uh, uh, it shed a layer of itself through each layer of the egg, like I explained earlier. So what's happening is the Babel Tower is the female vagina. Look at Dante Inferno. 
and look at uh, the female vaginal tract. That's Dante Inferno. Look at this right here. The vagina is the belly of the beast. You're still in your mama's, but put it this way. Your daddy is in the base reality and he just bust a nut. His sperm ain't even made it to the egg yet in the highest heaven. So when your daddy busts that nut in the highest heaven, it's a layered nut because your daddy exists in all of these lower worlds too. So his son got to be born out of all the lower worlds to make it back up to the base reality where your real mom and daddy is at. This ain't your real mom and daddy here. Just like this ain't your real self here. So look, by the time your soul get back to be born for real, for real, in the base reality, your sperm will just be hitting the egg in that world. In this world, right, your sperm already hit the egg and lived out its lifetime. But you got to remember, right, there are seven versions of you. And there's a version of you right now that's still a sperm trying to make it to the egg. That's the highest version of you. Is yet to be born in heaven, in the highest kingdom. As that sperm look for the egg in the highest heaven, it turns into the human trying to find itself in the lowest heaven. Down here in the earth realm, they say our souls is lost. And all of this knowledge is us trying to find our way back home. And as we regain this knowledge, the, sp the real you, which is a sperm cell that ain't even hit the egg yet in the base reality. In other words, in some of these work, time is split up. In the lower kingdoms, shit already played out. In the higher kingdoms, shit is yet to play out. But how the two are connected is because the, your sperm cell in the highest heaven is trying to find the light. And it can't be born into heaven if it don't find the light, which is the egg. But since you were already born in your lower forms, that story of your sperm, you as a sperm, trying to find a light so you can be born in the highest heaven, as above, so below, that turns into you as a human trying to find knowledge, trying to find truth, which is light. It's the same story. And the closer you get to the light on earth, the closer your sperm cell in the highest heaven getting to the egg. And by the time you gain all the light, your sperm will hit that egg in heaven and you will be a baby just being born in the base reality with all the knowledge of all these past births. Think about what I said. You're going to be a newborn baby and you're going to come out the womb with the knowledge of seven grown man lifetimes as a baby. That's an advanced civilization, dude, where babies are born with the knowledge of men. I'm showing you how. Everything is tied up in time and space. You're a baby soul seeking the light, which is knowledge. You're trying to find a pathway to the light. That's what this whole community is based on, knowledge is power. Because that's how the sperm propels with knowledge and truth, not with gas. All right? The, sir, the, the, the sperm is using light energy. How does the ship find the lighthouse? It's pulled into the lighthouse through the light rays. You act, See, we don't look at this like magnetism, right? You don't see what's happening. If you can see what's happening... From a top-down view, you will see that these rays of light is pulling the ship in. That's magnetism. We don't see that everything is based on the laws of attraction because we are little bitty small beings on Earth. But when you zoom out 
It's all about magnetism. Beacon began. This is the Big Bang Theory. These lines of light are magnetic ley line. That's why Jesus said, I'm fishing for the souls of man. Your soul is a ship at sea. And what's calling the ships home or reeling them in is the fishermen that was personified by the obelisk, which is the lighthouse. Dude, they can't fuck with me. None of these niggas can fuck with me, boy. That's what that obelisk in Egypt is, nigga. It's a lighthouse. And guess what the obelisk mean? Resurrection. Because that's how your soul be born again, through the woman. Dude, dude, that's why they blackballing me, man. Telling you, dude. These niggas know I'm going against the phallus cult, and I die for this feminine shit. And they try to make a nigga like I'm gay. I smack motherfucking blood on your teeth, nigga. Play with me. I will tint your teeth red playing with me. Be spitting blood. And then whatever happened after that happened. Because you niggas try to act like because I show rainbow shit and chakra layer shit. And I'm fit on the feminine matriarch shit. Don't link that with the homo shit. Because the homo shit is y'all are the dick cults. Everything about a pharaoh and another man, nigga. Sausage party. Nigga, the female is my rocket ship back to the heavens. Let me show these niggas some... Uh, I'm a, hey, I'm a, hey, hey, you lames, don't watch this and hate on me with your woman next to you. Because if you look at her hard enough, you will see that her pussy wet listening to me, nigga. Why are you trying to hate Yeah, them haters be trying to look at me and hate with they girl. And they girl be like, mm-hmm, you right. What's his name again? Yeah, uh-huh, fuck him. Yeah, uh, ooh, wee, yeah, fuck him. How you find him again? What's his channel? <laughs> Sanchez Cocinado. It's his name. Simping for women is his game. <laughs> Let's get it, baby. The female reproductive system is my rocket ship to the heavens. Let me show you something, people. Don't you know that the Jesus fish is the female womb? Some of you niggas don't even know what you looking at. And talking about you love some pussy. But if you tell your woman to lay on her back and open her legs, this is what you're going to see right here, son. The Jesus fish. Now, why is the symbol of Jesus... A fish, because he's personifying the uterus. When you put the damn astronaut inside the rocket and blast them off, that's the daddy putting the sperm inside the pussy, and then the sperm, boom, they get blasted off and they become a human. They get shot up the vagina tract and reach the egg, which is the other planet. And when they get to Earth, which is the egg, that's the whole space travel. It's happening in us. Not fucking outside of us. They turned this into NASA. They turned it into NASA, y'all. The whole breast cancer shit, it ain't nothing but an uh, old feminine. Uh, it's remnants of our old spiritual system where we worship the, the womb and the uterus. Now they giving it to you with breast cancer, Jesus Christ, everything but the truth. And it's called, that right there is the direct definition, my women, of desecration. When you take all of the ancient spiritual symbols that was used to teach about the womb and you attach that shit to cancer, diseases, uh, men, especially attaching it to a man. It's the ultimate form of desecration to what this stuff really meant. You see what I'm saying? The female vagina is literally the first rocket. And I'm showing you the rocket, bro. 
I'm telling you, my third eye is open. Look at this collage. Let me shut my door real quick. Hold on. <laughs> Sanchez Cocinado. Watch this, right? You shut my door, baby. Thank you. Check it out, right? Don't you know that they they said that that our sperm cells they used to compare our sperm cells to salmon. Can anybody in the chat room tell me why they compare the human sperm cell to salmon? Some of you didn't know that, but I'm going to teach you why. In fact, let me break this down. The word salmon is the root word of salvation. It's, the, it's when we say sail like a salmon. And man, a man is just another word for man. Sail man. Salvation man. That's the sperm sail. That's the spirit. The reason that they compare sperm to salmon, it's because sperm, excuse me, salmon got to swim upstream to find a way to, to their motherland to reproduce themselves. And that's what humans got to do. We got to swim upstream or through the vaginal tract. And if you ever look at how a sperm does that, it has to jump. It got to make these giant leaps. And these leaps that it make is called lifetimes. That's what I'm telling you. Check out the vaginal track. That's Dante Inferno. That's the Babel Tower. I'm telling you, you're still a sperm cell that's trying to ascend up the vagina to make it to the egg. But you keep doing it in different simulation layers, man. This egg got different layers. It's got seven barriers around it. And just because you broke through one of them don't mean you made it to the core of the egg yet. Everyone is headed back home to the center of the earth, which is ascension up the Babel Tower, which is the vaginal tract. And you get beamed up this little, this little line right here. That's the light beam that's coming out the pyramid in the middle of the earth. This part of the female body. Then that goes up. And boom, you on the other side of the wormhole. I just showed you that. You get, you get, this is how we travel through portals. This is what portaling technology is. See, we're from an advanced civilization in heaven. We started creating portals to travel. That's what the Mayan did. And when they was connecting the ends of all of these portals, from the above to the below, the other side of the stargates in heaven is the uterus in between the woman's leg. This is why I'm telling you women, you fucking special. All this low self-esteem and all that, man, listen here. When you understand that what's in between your legs is directly connected to Polaris, this is crazy. This North Pole that we call Polaris is this tube of light. The light of Polaris, it descends down and creates the earth realm. It splits into many, many magnetic ley lines. And that, what I'm telling you, is autism. Look at this. This is saying, in the base reality, right, 
All of us are really souls that fell into one big wormhole. But when we fell down the tunnel, like Humpty Dumpty, the egg broke and shattered into many versions of the self. And everything became duality. It become one single tube and then it expands into a bunch of light rays. And that's to say that in the base reality, right? The only thing exists in the base reality is one big ass wormhole in the middle of our base reality. But once we go in the wormhole, it gets split up into a bunch of many wormholes called mamas. There's one big wormhole in the base reality. You can't be born. You can only enter and leave through the Stargate. But when you leave a singular reality and enter the plural reality, even that singular Stargate in our base reality gets split up into many Stargates called women on Earth. They're the other end of this Polaris thing. Every woman's womb, it, it can be traced back to, to Polaris, just like all of these lines. Every woman, it, it, listen, no matter what woman or soul got here through, we all come from the same place in heaven. We just got different mamas. Everything gets split up in the earth realm. But in the heavenly realm, we are all gods that are one big family. Only thing separating us here is space and time. But when we're outside of space and time, you ain't, ain't no such thing as cousins and brothers. It's just advanced beings. And they share one big reality, a hive, so to speak, of utopian hive. So my thing is, uh-uh, um, it's like siphoning, right? If there's a big ass river going through the city, everybody can build a little canal to their backyard like we do with the water system today. Our entire piping system, for all we know, could have been an ancient canal system that we just covered up and built the layer on top of and piped it out, nigga. Because at first... They took the main rivers and everybody drew, uh, carved like a little mini canal to their house so they didn't have to keep walking to the river. And the water from the river flowed right up to their porch, to their backyard. And if they didn't want the water, they just dammed it off. And they put a little block at the blocking thing there. Then when they want the water on, they open it up like when you turn your faucet on and off. This was the old water system. So it's the same way with souls. The river of life is one big pole of life. Everybody in heaven started in this one portal. But we all split up like, like I told you, like when we at the water park, everybody get their little tube and we climb the stairs to take the water slide down. Everybody start in the same place. It's a building up there at the top of the water slide where they asking you which tunnel you want to go down. And they take everybody at the top and put them in front of their own tunnel. That's what your soul did before it was born. They take everybody when it's your turn for your generation to be born onto the earth, which mama? That's why the Greeks said, the parents don't choose the children. The children choose the parents. They were saying that because, let me show you something right here. That circle represent the base reality. Let me show you something. When we left the base reality, we was divided and conquered. Because look what happened. In the base reality, there was one mother. And that what that portal is. In, in the base reality... Ain't none of us gods and goddesses up there got a mama or a daddy because energy can't be created or destroyed. In the base reality, we this is what mama looked like. It's a portal that we all created 
because each one of us is a knight of the round table. You feel me? The knights of the round table. All of us brought our energy together to open up a, a portal to the underworld. That's why you see all of them knights with swords. They slicing through the ether. Every one of us is knights of the round table. And the reason they all got a sword pointed toward the middle is because they're personifying the sperm cell, buddy. Look at here. Look at there, man. I got the story right. Check it out. All of them sperm cells are the swords that are pointed toward the middle of the table. Each one of us is a knight of the round table headed toward the center. You see what I'm saying? This got turned into autism right here. And see, the thing about it is in the base reality, right? This is mother. But once we all gods hop into this one stargate in the duality realm, we all get put into different mamas with different lineages, separated, different religions. This world down here separates our light into duality so it can divide and conquer. That's what I'm telling you. The moment we hop down, see, in this base reality, we were all just gods and we created a fucking portal to the underworld. United, though. I'm telling you that we did this as a hive mind, taking all our energy and putting it together. And they put this in Captain Planet, man. You think I'm making it up? Watch this. Look at Captain Planet. All of the planeteers is taking their energy and putting it together in the middle to form God, which is Captain Planet, the planet God. Meaning each one of us is helping to make the simulation. And if you think that what I'm saying is pseudoscience, guess what real science say? Science say if enough humans ain't on the earth, the earth won't exist because it takes, they saying that, 90% of our reality is based upon us observing it and interacting with it. Facts. That means this simulation won't even exist if, we, if enough of us don't even pay attention to it. That's why they said if a tree fall in the jungle, did it, did it really fall? That's that whole thing. This simulation needs observers to power it. The act of focusing on some is you pointing, directing your light toward it. So once we all directed our light toward a central point, we blew a hole through the damn ether, just like the planeteers. Look at them. All of us agreed in the base reality to enter the simulation as a group. Everybody that living in your generation is one of the knights at the table. And we all created the pathway to the underworld by all coming together as one. Hooking up to this damn tower and falling asleep like Neo in the Matrix. That's what this means. And we all directed our light toward the energy because it take a bunch of light to open this thing up. So all of these magnetic ley lines, once they all point inward, now you can open a portal. Each of these lines is being projected there from one of the knights. So, but the thing is this right here. To get back on, on subject here. Um, time is crazy because it's a universe out there where you still 12 years old. It's a universe out there where you already seven is something. And it's a universe out there where you just a sperm that your dad is shot out. And the youngest version of you is in the highest heaven. That's the last you that's going to be born. And after that, your cycles of life and death will be over. 
Your lowest versions were born first, which is why we say save the best for last. So as your soul die in these lowest versions and the spirit leave these bodies and it shoots back up through the sky vault, that's like a salmon hopping a stairway to heaven, climbing up, swimming upstream. Your, your, you haven't been born yet. The simulation fooling you like you've been born. But really, you are a sperm cell that's on one of these vaginal lines. That's what Dante was telling you, and I'll show you that again. We can go back to that real quick. Here is Dante Inferno. And this is the gateway into the earth realm. That is the vagina. That's how the sperm, in other words, every one of us is trying to enter the earth. And, but only thing we've done so far is enter simulations. This place that we call the earth, you haven't even been born into it yet. The earth is the word heart. Rearrange it. Rearrange it. I'm, I'm serious. Take the word earth, move the H at the end to the front. The earth is the centermost reality, the base reality. You haven't made it to the earth yet. We're still traveling the universe as, as sperm, as astronauts. This literally is what space travel looked like. Let me show you some real quick. This is how sperm reproduce themselves, right? Watch this. Watch this shit right here. We're going to come back to this. Watch this. Watch this. Salmon. So when a salmon is swimming upstream, guess what? The salmon got to climb waterfalls. The salmon got to climb a waterfall. Guess how the salmon climb the waterfall? Because the waterfall is just a steep stairway. That's the Babel Tower. You can see the salmon hopping from one ridge to the next. And it just hops up one step and then go to the next step. The salmon is climbing up the an upstream waterfall the same way your soul travel up the inferno. The same way the sperm got to make it through the vaginal ridges. That's a damming system, a filtering system. This is trying to see, because what happened was this, right? Your daddy ejaculated a bunch of different copies of you. Each of them sperms is another you. And depending on how far that sperm make it, it'll die at one of these ridge lines. All the sperms that die in the vaginal tract are the versions of your lifetimes in the fucking earth realm. Each of your sperm cells that hit the egg, they didn't die. They are dying. They transformed into a human. And the vaginal ring became an earth realm stacked on another one. Let me pull this up for y'all, man. This shit deep, the way I see it in my mind, is hard to teach, but I think I'm doing pretty good. Check this out. This is what our earth is, man. And, you, and the word earth, well, I should say this is what our universe is. But the earth is the centermost part of it, or the heart, which is the highest point. That's Mount Maru. The middle most part of this mountain is the highest point at the top. Your soul started at the bottom, like Drake said, nigga. We started at the bottom, nigga. We didn't get dropped off at the top of this mountain. We fallen angels. Our beginning started with a fall. You know why? Because if you want to make it to the top, you got to climb to the top. And now listen, when your daddy ejaculated you into this layered egg system, your worst versions or heaviest versions, they fell in the lowest worlds. This is based on density, B. This is density right here. Watch this. 
Your daddy shot out a bunch of different sperm cells. Each one of them was a different version of you. Now, the sperm cell that made it the highest was the least dense version of you. And the sperm cell that didn't make it far, he was the fat one, the heavy one. He couldn't make it far, like a fat man trying to outrun a little skinny man, right? Your daddy gave some dense versions of you and some lighter versions of you. Now, listen, your dense versions were born into the lower worlds because the law of density says heavy things will sink, light things will float. Your consciousness starts at the bottom and works its way up because the beginning in this situation represent your beginning and no one starts at the top of a mountain everybody climb the salmon is teaching you how the soul is born over and over and then it finally reaches the top of the damn mountain and ends its rebirth cycle so what happens is this your daddy exists in the base reality. He met your mama in heaven and shot up in her. And when the sperm that he shot in your mama started to work its way up your mama's vaginal tract, every time it made a leap through one of them ridges, you called it a lifetime. You're still a sperm that ain't even made it to the egg yet. Time, all of these universes are tied together. But the time is split. In the highest universe, your greatest version is saved for last, the best for last. That's going to be your last birth. Your first births are with your worst versions. That Those are the sperms that died in these first rings. Look at the, the vagina. When the daddy shot the sperm in the vagina... Not every sperm made it to the, the, what they call the holy of holies. That's the holy of holies, which is the box. The holy of holies is the cube, which is the egg. Not every sperm is going to make it to the highest point. That's Mount Maru. That, that means only your greatest version going to enter the mothership or get beamed up. Only your lightest version. All of your heaviest versions, this ship can't pick them up. It can only lift holographic, like it can't lift physical things. This thing can only lift liquid light. But it can turn it into some physical because when that light gets inside the ship, it becomes a holographic projection. The ship is an incubator. So when the sperm enters the fetal bag, it transforms from a sperm to a human. So the, the, the uterus is siphoning up the consciousness, which is a streak of light that got sucked in a black hole. And once it exits the other side of the black hole, based upon everything crossing the event horizon got to transform, it calls itself a human now, not a sperm. But if you look at what it is in essence, it's still a sperm. And I showed you that earlier. You still resemble a sperm cell. So this thing about a sperm cell trying to find its way to the egg, it never stopped. It's still going. And the sperm haven't made it to the egg yet. It made it to through. It bumped into layers of the egg that it's calling simulations. But it haven't made it to the center, which is the earth, which is the heart. It's layers to this egg, and that's what the Vatican showing you there. Our soul is still on its way back home, man. And the journey back home consists of us breaching many layers. And all of the questions you ask in this lifetime is the sperm yet again peeling back another layer, having another rebirth and awakening and a, what we call a consciousness shift. When the sperm realize I'm not a sperm, I'm a fucking human. Then it can transform. That's the difference between. Why some caterpillars never become butterflies because it's awakening. It's a mental choice. That caterpillar that never became a butterfly, 
didn't even know it was a butterfly. It just thought it was a caterpillar. The caterpillars that became butterflies are the ones that said, oh, we're gods. We're not humans. We belong in the sky. We need to transform ourselves. It's a lot of humans on this earth. They're caterpillars. They'll never get their wings. Don't Every caterpillar don't become a butterfly. Only the caterpillars that know deep inside that their butterflies transform and make the transformation. Some caterpillars just think they're caterpillars. That's what the church did to humans. They told us we're just flesh and bone. But some humans know I'm not my body. I'm the soul inside of here. And that's when, the, when those humans, right? Don't you know the caterpillar will, will go and attach itself to a plant and it'll just start incubating. The skin of the caterpillar will become the cocoon that the butterfly uses to break out of itself. Like a maggot using the carcass to become a fly. What happens is the seed called a butterfly is at the core of the maggot. So the caterpillars say, look here, I'm going to just go end my own life as a human. I ain't promoting suicide. Death going to come, nigga. What I'm saying is the caterpillar going attaches itself to a tree. It spins a chrysalis. And when it hangs itself on the tree, its caterpillar body start decomposing and becoming a shell for its butterfly body that's inside of that. Your body is the same thing for your soul, which got wings. But when your, soul, when your body lay down and break open and decompose and free the soul, it'll be like the caterpillar old body letting the butterfly break out of it. You know. But like I said, every caterpillar don't transform to a butterfly because this is a mental decision. Like, think about this, right? You got all them caterpillars over there bullshitting, crawling around the ground. Things is eating them up because they can't fly. So shit just eating them up on the ground. But they content with being caterpillars. They never ask the question, hey, where are all those caterpillars going? You got a, a, a whole, like a crab in a bucket mentality. No one asked the question, just like all of the people that's waking up on earth. No one say, what making all them think like that? They just make fun of you and call you a tinfoil hatter. You better believe that for every butterfly you see, is two caterpillars that ain't going to become a butterfly. It's a transformation process. Not everyone do, do, does it. Man, not every seed become a tree, man. Some seeds don't mind going under the ground. Some caterpillars don't mind incubating themselves and going within into an incubation process. That's what we're doing. Those that scatter the dark cannot access their own light. The seed that's scared to be buried can't transform to a tree. You will never get this kind of message on Brother Rich channel. On all these fucking pseudo ass comic book Anunnaki Lantern. Nigga, we are the advanced technology. Yo mama, the egg, the sperm, and y'all coming with all these cyborgs and myths and aliens and nigga. Let me just stop. Let me stop. I'm stunting on them with the knowledge. Let me not do them that way. Check it out, man. Your soul is taking leaps of consciousness to get back home. Just like these salmon. Now watch this though. As that happened, guess what happens too? Every time it jump on a layer, it stay there and rest for a minute and gets its energy up and then it make another leap. And it don't just keep making leaps back to back. Every leap, it spends a minute right there and sit there and get its breath 
and, and prepare for the next jump. It don't rush this thing. And if you study how salmon swim upstream to reproduce themselves up a waterfall, that is the same way that they talk about our souls ascending up the inferno, which is your real mama. See, your real mama is in a base reality and she's yet to give birth to you. You still a sperm traveling up her vaginal track. And that's and this is what I'm telling you right now. This is the Babel Tower. Every time that sperm make a leap up one of these ridges, it's reborn into a higher reality. See, here's what's going to happen, man. When you die, your soul going to leap up and, and, and ascend up to the highest shelf above this one. But it's going to end up in another version of your mama that's in that reality and she waiting to give birth to you. In other words, in these bottom worlds, time is faster than the upper worlds. Shit already happened in the bottom and things are yet to happen in the top rail. You see? So, in the bottom world, they say, he a soul that died. And in the top world, they say he a baby that's born at the exact same time. Because what's happening is this. There's a universe above us that's younger than this one. And it's more innocent than this one. And your mama already there mean your daddy again. And by the time you die in this world, your daddy going to just been a skeeter in your mama. It's going to be happening on time every time. Your death and your birth are tied together, dude. The past and the future are interwoven. In the, in the, in the universe that's above us, your mama and daddy is playing out the same story that they played out here. It's young, too. They just meeting and shit. By the time you die, it'll be right on time. That'll be right when your daddy's sperm crash into the egg in the higher realm. These acts are tied together. So, in this world, you're saying, I'm a soul that's climbing the stairway to heaven. But in heaven... You're a sperm that's still going up a vaginal tract. In heaven, you are already in heaven as a sperm cell that's just now going up your mama's vaginal tract. But as that act happened, which is like a few minutes in heaven, it's taking lifetimes down here as a sperm. Every time that sperm jump up one of these ridges, you call it a death and rebirth. When that sperm in heaven finally make it to the egg, the Hindus say your death and rebirth cycle is going to stop. You ain't going to die no more. You know why? Because these leaps that we're calling death, life and death cycles are just leaps that the sperm is taking up the vaginal tract, just like salmon swimming back to their motherland. So your father's lowest version gave birth to you in the lowest earth. And his highest version is waiting to give birth to your highest version in the highest version. It's a DNA curse. You, you are only greater than your DNA. We rewrote our DNA in heaven. That's what I'm saying, like, this whole thing about gene editing is like God in the mirror changing clothes and keep changing till he get the right outfit. You call it different versions of the self. But the thing is this, right? When God lead a dressing room, which is a cube, he coming out looking gooder than a motherfucker. Don't nobody spend that much time in that little box and don't come out fly, nigga.
This is a transformative process. A caterpillar didn't spend that much time in that cocoon to not step out that bitch. What? Fly, literally. Looking better, feeling better, in a better location on you niggas' heads, in a greater version of itself with pretty wings and shit. That cocoon is a dressing room. It's no different than Superman going in the phone booth and coming out with the cape on, baby. So the woman is the phone booth. Her body is the incubation booth where the transformation take place. But I'm all over the place. I want to go back here, right? Things are happening faster in the lower realms and they're yet to happen in the higher realms. And it's almost like these higher realms are a culmination of the things we didn't do and did do in the lower realms. A higher realm is manifested above a lower realm based upon us saying, I wish I didn't make that mistake. I wish I can start all over and do it again. My life will be better. It'll be different. Those wishes got granted. Every mistake we made in this world that we would have corrected, that, that universe is born above this one. Your mom and daddy said the same thing. If I knew then what I know now. You know why we get to, to try it again and we get a do-over? Because there was a sin committed against us. The reason we lost the knowledge is because of the trickster, the simulation. We was tricked. So the reason we get these do-overs is because we was tricked. The thing is this. Each of these do-overs is like a rehearsal. It's like you're saying, no, nah, that don't look right. Go put that on. Now that's you. See, when you get the right outfit, a person going to say, now that's you right there. Because that's the real you. It fits your energy, your vibe. It ain't that what you was wearing didn't look good. It didn't look good on you. That outfit would have looked good on somebody else. You trying to find yourself in the mirror, and the word mirror is the word maru. This place where the soul get to reflect itself for the sake of editing who it want to be. Like you and your reflection in the mirror. When you understand what this thing is, you're going to get it by the grasp and be everything you want to be and nothing that you don't want to be. You're going to die with less and less regrets. So as our soul busts through these waters, every time it leaves a, a, a one of these worlds and ascend up to the next world, it breaks through the waters. And when that happened, the doctors say her water broke and you're born again. Now when you die, your soul leaves your body and it start to float up to this higher, to the next level. See, I just told you, right? When your daddy shot out that sperm cell, that sperm was dense. It had seven layers on it. Your mama vaginal tract got seven grooves in it. And when people mine gold, they got the same groove system where the, the rock go through these little ridges and the big rocks get caught up in the big ridges and the little rocks get caught up in the little ridges. That's what the ripple effect is. Look at these ripples. See, the thing is this, man. When your dad has shot that sperm out, it was basically like in the middle of that sperm was a little bitty ball of light. Everything surrounding that light is like packaging, a layering process. You ever bought something from a company and you take it out the box and it's in another box. And you open that box, it's in another box. You open that box, it's in a plastic bag. You open that bag, it's in a brown bag. You open that brown bag, it's in a foam wrapping. You open the foam wrapping and finally, nigga, 
I get to the damn gift that's at the middle of all this layered rapping. And you ask yourself, why did they rap it so many times? Because it's precious and they didn't want it damaged. When you packaging something that's precious, that's going to be traveling for long distances, you wrap it in many layers. Your soul is at the core of all these chakra layers. And every time it's born into a new reality, one of them layers is ripped off. You are a gift. And the one that's ripping off the layers, they call it the ripper. That's the one cutting you out the fetal bag. That's the mama. Have you ever saw a puppy give birth? The mama bite them out they packaging. Bite the genie out the lamp. Bite them out the bag. So the thing is this right here. You are, the, your daddy's sperm cell was wrapped in seven layers. And in order for your mama in the highest heaven to, because think about it, your, your real mama is in the highest heaven. And she can't receive you in the packaging. You got to strip down like through all the layers so she can get the contents out of the packaging and, 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 and fertilize her egg in heaven to give birth to you in heaven. This is what it looked like to rip through the layers of the sperm for you to be born again seven times. You still a sperm ripping through the layers. By the time you get to the where you want to be, you have been a rip through your last layer. And the contents of the package will be delivered into the sender will be receiving it. I'm telling you that when your daddy shot that sperm out, your first, when that sperm bumped into the egg, that first crash was your first lifetime. That first layer of your daddy's sperm got stuck inside of that first layer of your mama's egg. See, the sperm crashing into the egg is your mama mean your daddy in all of these universes. Every time your mama bump into your daddy, the sperm bumps into the egg and this time continuum is created. That's your yin and yang. That is the two vortexes that's creating your gateway to the earth like a tornado, the six and the nine. So check this out, right? Your daddy, just like you, was born in all these lower worlds too, and he exists in all these worlds. So for you to make it to your highest version, you got to be born through your mama and daddy highest versions. Because you are a result of their DNA, and your mama and daddy had to perfect theyself over spiritual births and reincarnations as, as souls just like you. So your mama and daddy may not even be in these bodies that's on this earth. It, your mama and daddy may be a, art of, a simulation that's ran to get you to your highest version. Your mama and daddy real soul may already be up in the highest world waiting to give birth to you. That's what I'm telling you. You cannot rise above your DNA. You got to be born again. And the DNA got to be edited. Listen what I'm telling you. We started gene editing, genie editing, creating avatars, which is the genie. And trying to find the best avatar that's CRISPR, that's advanced CRISPR. We doing it today. People got an artificial version of themselves online. And eventually they're going to be able to upload their mind into their better version. But that's a fake way to do it. We're already uploading our mind into our greater version. It's called a path of ascension. Ascension is uploading. It's you passing the consciousness to greater, greater versions. And they trying to cheat that. See, here's the thing. Everybody got to take this path to be great. Your mama and daddy consciousness had to take it. See, everybody, here's the thing. 
Your daddy's daddy shot out a bunch of higher versions of him and a bunch of lower versions of your daddy when he ejaculated. And your daddy did the same. Everybody exists as many versions of themselves. And each version of yourself exists in its own netter. Your granddaddy exists in each one of these rings. Your auntie do, your children do. Everybody that's with you in this world, they ain't with you in, they're with you in all of these worlds. It's a reflective system. Look at the way it's made. Think about this, people. We never separated from our dead loved ones. Listen what I'm teaching you. One universe is reflecting you into another one. Right? If all of us standing in the mirror in this one, and that mirror projecting this image to that mirror and that mirror and that mirror, you gonna be, everybody gonna be in all of these. Everything is being reflected from the base reality down. Everybody with you there is with you here, reflected as like a in the mirror, like reflecting in the mirror, man. It's like saying, "Hey, man, all of my cousins standing in the mirror with me, but they ain't on the mirror surface as a reflection with me." That's what we worry about with life and death. When we say, "Am I gonna be separated from my dead loved ones?" That's like saying. Hey, man, give me all my cousins. Let's stand in the mirror. And you say, hold up. When, I, when, when we stand in the mirror, is my reflection going to be there too? Duh. So this is why the ancestors taught we ain't separated. When you understand life is a reflection, Everybody standing in the mirror going to be reflected on the damn thing. But you think, right, that when your grandma leave the mirror reflection, she left the room. The base reality is this room. The simulation is that mirror in the room. And we all standing in front of it like, ah, look at me, nigga, look at me. We're interacting with our reflection on the mirror and we're looking at our own reflection like, watch out, nigga, move your arm, watch out. But when somebody say, OK, I'm going to get out the mirror and quit playing with y'all, you call that death because you don't see them in a the reflection no more. But they still in the room walking around you. They among us right now. The dead with us right now. Our world is reflected in the mirror. We agreed to play this trick like I'll move out the way and we looking into the mirror, third person experience. That's the mind in the body or the man in the mirror. So the mind is having experience through the body like a man having a reality through the mirror's reflection. People will get stuck having a life in the mirror. Until we say, wait a minute, that's not our reality. We started playing this game and, and playing in the mirror and looking at our reflection, but that ain't us. How do we break out of this hypnotization? Smash that mirror, man. Break that mirror. And then they'll have to focus on the room, which is the world around them. Not the, listen, not the reflective simulation, but the world that's on the other side around this one. Beyond the veil. That's the room, the base reality. But check this out, right? Watch this, right, y'all? According to Dante, Dante, you ain't been born yet. You're yet to be born. Well, you, you, you've been born, right? This is birth, but it's you dreaming of being born. Your real birth ain't happened yet, man. You are a sperm cell, right? Just like them salmon. Just let me show you. Just like the salmon that I showed you. Remember this now. Before you were a human, right? You made the great leap of life to become a, a human when you were a sperm. You used to be a sperm. You made the decision to cross over and to become a human. Now guess what that meant? 
in your past lifetime, you've been asking this question, what am I, who am I? And it's been leading you up this mountain. Every time you die, you forget that it, all the shit you learning now, you already learned it before. That's why me talking to you like this, it resonate with you. It's not a learning experience. It's a memory experience. You remembering this. It's an awakening. I ain't teaching you nothing. I'm reminding you of everything. You were the damn sperm cell. How can I teach you anything about what the hell you was? That's like I'm a butterfly, you're a butterfly, and I'm going to teach you about a caterpillar. No, nigga, you was a caterpillar. I'm reminding you that. That, hey, bro, you was a caterpillar now. Because th that whole thing is this. The sperm ain't nothing but the ghost that ascended from a previous lifetime through the Stargate portal. The other end of that portal is the uterus. This is how we keep coming from soul to human, soul to human. The projected soul is what they call it, the sperm cell. It shot off through the rocket, which is the penis. If you look at the male penis, it's shaped like a rocket. And the sperm, like a human cannonball, boom, like a bullet in a gun, is blasted off from the father. And, and that's why in all the religion, you got the father sacrificing the baby to God because God is the womb of the woman. And the father sacrificed the baby to God every time he impregnates the, the, the vagina. He puts his seed, he gives his baby to the golden calf which is the genie lamp or the uterus. But like I was saying, uh, that, yeah, that's how the genie get in the lamp. The genie is the genes of the father. But like I said, when they turned this lamp into a man, they had to turn it into child sacrifice. If you think about it, the sperm is going to die when you give it to the bull. But it's going to transform in its death into a human. In order for them to hide all this knowledge I'm teaching y'all, they had to give you spookism and Satanism and stuff like this. This child sacrifice stuff don't even make no damn sense. Who would do that? Who would kill they goddamn baby for a golden calf to, to get some kind of energy blessing or, or life blessing? This is pseudo stuff, man. The, our ancestors weren't this damn dumb. They're hiding the true knowledge, y'all, behind a bunch of symbolism and bull crap. Literally bull crap. Look at the image, nigga. <laughs> Listen what I'm telling you. Sacrificing your, the father, sacrificing his seed to Satan, just like the fathers of the Bible was sacrificing their babies on top of the mountain. I think it was Isaac. It's always on top of a mountain. This is the Sumerian religion and the Canaanites and the Babylonian religion. And their religion was based upon hiding the spiritual system of the pre-dynastic times. And my job is to expose it. They hid it behind a bunch of demon, not a bunch of stuff like what you see on the screen. But the truth behind this spookism is your daddy sacrificed his seed to that woman when he shot in her. If, if a gardener got seeds on his table, he will hold them for the right time to plant them. And, and that's the thing about when, when, you, when a farmer gives his seeds to the earth, it's, it's him giving his property. He making a sacrifice. He giving some of himself, some of his life energy. And he giving it to the bull. What does he get in return? A child. If he get a child, see, they got us thinking they were taking newborn babies and burning them alive. How can you burn something alive? You can burn it to death, nigga. You never burn something and it comes alive unless you're talking about burning like a CD disc. Yeah, because that's what the Babel Tower is. It's like a CD tower, like how you burn CDs. 
in a CD tower, right? The master copy is at the top. And every CD below that is a burnt copy. This is how, how the universe is made. Your master copy is at the top. Right now, you're living out your burnt copies. You're, you're basically, this avatar is a distributed copy. Copy. Don't no label distribute their master copy. They leave it at the base reality. It never leaves the vault. They will copy that master into copies and they will let them go out there. But you don't, you don't distribute your master, nigga. You make copies from that. That's what the universe did to you, to protect you. The universe said that our master copies is so great that basically when they said God can never go to the earth. In order for God to dwell on earth, he got to dwell in man. He got to be born or burnt. The master copy got to be distributed as a copy CD disc. If the people in power start copying our consciousness, that's copyright infringement. We own our master copies. You can't distribute and copy my consciousness without my permission, but that's literally what they doing today. But this has already been done before. You're not your master copy right now. You're what they call a clone or a burned version or a born version. Like burning something alive ain't what you're thinking. There's no such thing as burning something alive, dude. The only way you can burn something and bring it to life is through holography. It's through metaverse simulation. This is what it meant to be burnt alive. Look at it. Because if you look at how our consciousness is projecting itself into the flesh, it's like we standing in flames of fire. Look at this dude. Those rays of light are the flames of fire that they said people are burning in hell. It ain't no regular fire. It's the ethereal light of creation that's projecting a hollow spirit of simulation, putting a veil over us. It's copied us seven times. Like I said, this is the Babel Tower. I'm not going to go too deep into that. But, uh... What I'll say is this, the copies that's closer to the master is like the versions of yourself that, it, it goes back to what I'm saying about the salmon. That was a good example. Every time the salmon reach a little ridge, it rests on it. And every time your soul takes a step up the stairway to heaven, it's born in a body it rests. This walk up the stairway to heaven, it takes so much energy that every time God take one step, he got to lay down. And what that look like is that your soul being born in each of these rings over and over to God, make it all the way up the mountain. So every time the salmon get on a step, that's like you... Uh, it, becoming a baby for a minute in a fetal bag it's surrounded by water you see it's red like the baby is in the fetal bag that's why they compared us to salmon the jesus fish is a form of the salmon family go look it up i do meticulous research that's why i need y'all support because without y'all channels like this won't exist I'm supported by viewers like you. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of this beloved community. We would like to take the time to say thank you for your continued support. We humbly appreciate all donations in the form of Cash App, PayPal, Super Chat, Patreon, and or via channel memberships. All of your contributions are greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for all that you do to show your support. Now watch this, right? You're a sperm cell in the highest heaven, still making your ascension up the vaginal tract. And what that looked like down here is a human climbing the stairway to heaven. What I'm telling you is this, right? When you finish with all these lifetimes 
and your soul finally make it to this upper heaven, what they call the Holy of Holies, guess what? It's still going to be born one final time. But at that point, it's going to be born out of our original mother. What is that? Let me show you. Is this. Your final birth, you're going to come up out of the Milky Way galaxy. See, in, in these underworlds, they're cloaking this portal and turning it into a uterus. That's the other side of this portal is your mama's vagina. That's why I look like a vajayjay. But as, we be bo as we're born through seven universes or galaxies, you'll finally be born out of the real mother in the base reality, which is this portal we created. You will see your mama, daddy, and everybody up there, but they won't be your mama and daddy. That you will call them your spiritual gods. We're following the path of our own, for, our forefathers are paving a way. The ancestors went on to become greater versions of themselves. And they worse versions stayed behind with us in these lower worlds. That's why these worlds down here will never get it together. Because in these underworlds, is everybody lower versions making the same mistakes. It'll never change. We must rise above our lower versions. You can't change your lower version. Even when you shift your consciousness out of this lower realm into a greater version up here, your lower version going to keep being born over and over down here doing dumb mistakes. This represent a mental paradigm that you used to be at. Like if I say right now, right, close your eyes, right? Imagine how you used to think when you was a teenager. If you start dreaming right now and you dream that you 18 again, in that dream, right, you will lose all this knowledge you got as a 40-year-old person. If you 30, if you 40, if you go to sleep tonight and you dreaming that you 18 again, you're going to be acting immature doing dumb shit in the dream because we're time travelers. There's an 18 year old version of you in another universe still doing the dumb shit you used to do when you was 18. Sometime you go back to visit those dumb versions of yourself. And when you wake up, guess what you say? Boy, I'm so glad I don't think like that no more. You revisit those paradigms. They but serve as checkpoints. Like when a snake shed his skin, it can look back and say, I remember when I shed it right here and I shed it right there. And it's showing him, hey man, your process to beauty was a series of sheddings, not just one. So what's happening is we're learning how to live life better each incarnation. We're basically rehearsing this thing seven times. And when we get to the final one, they're going to say, cut. Good job. That was the take we needed. You're getting seven rehearsals. And that seven one, everybody aced the they ver you now really know how to be you. See, a act, being an actor ain't being an actor. Being an actor is being a channeler. If somebody say, act like Brother Sanchez, if you act like me, it won't even look legitimate. Real actors know how to become Brother Sanchez. They know how to look at me and tap into my energy and swagger and dial that up in their own body and literally kind of hack my vibration. Now, some of y'all are some deep niggas and deep humans out there who know exactly what I'm talking about. And some of y'all are like, I don't know what the hell he talking about. <laughs> Listen, I used to can impersonate certain people good. Not because I was a good actor, because I was a good impersonator. Meaning, I'm the person. That's what the word impersonator mean. 
I'm the person that I'm trying to mimic. Not that I'm acting like them. I'm becoming them in the flesh. I'm, I'm channeling up Martin Luther King energy. And when people watch the movie, they going to be like, boy, that nigga killed that shit. Like Denzel with the Malcolm X role. That ain't acting. That's channeling. The best actors in Hollywood don't even act. They are cultists who channel energy. Facts. You can give them any person and they'll summon the vibration and essence of that person and embody the person. Acting is different. That's you trying to act like a motherfucker. The best actors don't act. They embody the soul of that person. Jamie Foxx did it for the Ray movie. Your soul is such a good actor, it fooled itself like it was the Avatar. Just like in Hollywood, this happened too. A lot of those channelers get stuck in the role. Drop a one if you know what I'm talking about. I think they said Will Smith got stuck in one of his roles for like three years, couldn't snap out of it. No, this is a real thing that happened in Hollywood. It's, this is real demon possession. A lot of people in Hollywood are witches. They're summoning the souls of these people. And sometimes when they get possessed by that person's energy, that person say, wait a minute, nigga, I'm not done using you yet. They get stuck and roll. That's why you don't play with spirits. That's why you don't play with spirit because that spirit from the other side can keep you stuck in it, in it that, like that forever. Like these actors got to snap out of that shit. It's like hypnotization. It's literally like they're summoning the soul of a dead person and they were working out a contract with them on the other side saying, do you want us to make a movie with you? Yeah, only if I can embody the role. That's what I'm just saying. Hollywood deeper than y'all think. They connected with the astral realm. So they, they literally got the rights over souls, over vibrations, energy. They can summon energy. And Well, Brother Sanchez, you mean to tell me they can summon the soul of, 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 of Ray Fox? Yeah. Because they all are connected together. The dead witches are connected with the living witches. And so it ain't acting to them. It's them letting one of their dead forefathers possess them. That's what religion is based on. Let my will be done and you the will of the father and shit. Because these dead masons and dead occultists, they live on through the younger cultures. They are witch covens, man. At any given moment, any one of these high-ranking Masons can turn into Adolf Hitler, Elizabeth, Abraham Lincoln. They can summon that shit and just, and now I'm Adolf, nigga, using his body. That's real shit, boy. I'm not making that up. The realm of the living and the dead has been connected ever since Babylon. And the technology that they did it with is in between a woman's legs. Because the, the, the realm of the dead, the dead is able to enter the earth through the wormhole. And the living is able to leave the earth through the wormhole. And either one, the woman body is the other end of it. The soul don't got a mama. It just got a wormhole that's existing in the middle of heaven. That's why you see everybody around the Kaaba cube. In our base reality, we are a bunch of light beings. And in the middle of our base reality is a black hole that leads to the earth. When we hop in that black hole in heaven... We end up in a fetal bag on earth. It's the other end of the wormhole. It's the female body. 
Transformation got to take place when energy travels through a wormhole. So as the soul travels down a wormhole, it's turning into a sperm cell. The soul sees a white light in the sky. When, it die, when you die, you're going to see a white light. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to be pulled toward the white light. I just showed you. It's like ships going back home using a lighthouse. Let me show you that again. This is what the Statue of Liberty is all about, man. Why you think the Statue of Liberty is on its own island like a lighthouse? The Statue of Liberty is literally them personifying this lighthouse. I got the story right, niggas. Why? Because when we ascend to the top of this thing, our souls get liberated from the simulation. All right? Begin means to become a genie, to become a sperm cell. Begin, J-I-N-N, B-G-I-S, gen. Check this out, yo. When you die, you see a white light above your head. That is the fucking ray of light that's leading you back to the lighthouse. When your soul travel down the pathway of light, you're like a ship going back home to the middle of the earth. You leaving the sea. See, when we die, let me show you something. You're like a ship, right? That's sailing back to the middle of the mountain. And we head toward the middle because we, we find it with light. The light that you see when you die, that's what's lead, That's coming from the beacon at the North Pole lead showing you the way out. Everybody here saying don't go into the light because they don't know what the fuck they talking about. That's the way out. So check this out, right? Uh, when you go into the light, right? You end up at the middle of the earth at your, that light that's leading you back home. That's your, uh, new body projecting its consciousness to the old one. You get what I'm saying? That light ray that's connected to your body, your spirit. In the earth realm is a new body at the North Pole calling you home. See, when your soul lead his body, your new body is, 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 is shining so bright, it's leading your soul back to it with a light beacon, a ray of light. When your soul follow that ray of light back to where it stop at, it's going to find itself in a better version of itself being born again. That light that's leading you out of here is the light of your higher self summoning you up out the lower body. It's calling you home. And when you die in that realm, you're going to see the light again and, until you make it all the way up this mountain to where the source of that light was originally beaming from. You see what I'm saying? And then you, it's like it's reeling you in like a fisherman back to the base reality. And what's making you go that way is you asking the right questions. What am I? Who am I? Where am I? When am I? Why am I? All of these questions, right? W, 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 W. That's the simulation, www dot. Why, when, who, what, where? You feel me? All those W's, if you think about it, right? They don't exist outside the web. When we're in the simulation, we got the www game going. The when, where, why, what, what, why, how, all that. 
But in the base reality, ain't no WW. Ain't, I ain't asking you no questions. Ain't no quest. I'm at the destination now. I know all the answers at this spot. You don't make it to this spot if you didn't make the climb and ask and get all and gather all the consciousness of the lower self. By the time you make it to the top, you'll know everything to know. Your learning will be done. We're learning in the simulation. So, and it ain't that we're learning. We're remembering that we're gods. We, ha we, we start off as gods, but we didn't know we was gods, and a god can't tell you you a god. You got to take the path of godhood. It's like this, right? And shout out to the fathers that got money that do this, right? Boosie do this too. Boosie will tell you, and, and like a lot of rappers will tell you, like, my, my children be in the hood. Now, niggas be like, why all these rappers trying to act tough? That's irresponsible. Why you got your children in the violent neighborhood that you come from? You know what niggas was talking about, Gilly, son. Fuck what y'all niggas talking. If I'm from the hood and I can go back to the hood, my son can go to the hood, and if a nigga touch him, he know his whole family gone. Especially with the kind of money they got. See, here go the thing. A nigga that make it out the hood and get rich, and his son is just born into some rich shit, they're like rich little brats. Guess what hood niggas do? They say, guess what, son? I'm finna take your ass to the block. You ain't gonna be no regular rich ass bougie little son. I'ma show you the hood your daddy grew up in. Come on. Daddy may make you fight. Daddy may say, look, some of my friends from the hood, they got sons too. We're gonna put y'all on some gloves and we want you little niggas to spar. <laughs> A lot of niggas who get money and make it out the hood, they not taking their kids back to the hood to stunt. They taking them back so they can be grateful, so they can know, nigga, what you are. You're rich. But see, a rich child just think they're normal. You can buy them a Rolex and they'll scratch it up like they friend watch. And you got to tell them, look, son, your friend's watch cost $10. Your watch cost 10000 You can't move the same, son. <laughs> Check this out. And I don't mean to use this kind of example, but it's what I'm telling you is true. The rich son got to realize he's not the same. What separated him was that he was born into royalty. But if for him to realize he's royal, a child don't know about a class system. And the, the crazy thing about this reality, the class system exists on a spiritual level too. The spirits with the most knowledge of the universe, they're the richest. And the dumbest souls are the poorest. Now they think, see the dumbest souls got the most money in the simulation. And the richest souls are broke as hell here. Some monk that's meditating in Tibet. Some monk in the Himalayan mountain. Some poor righteous teacher. But on a spirit realm, we rich than a motherfucker. Because the real wealth is in the knowledge is who's going to be the most powerful. In this realm, they pay you to be dumb. Because they know if you get the right knowledge, you can break out of their matrix. And on a spiritual realm, these people are peasants, y'all. But remember, everything backwards in the simulation. In the simulation, they richer than a motherfucker. They, raw, they the dynasties. They the royal dynasties that's ruling the world. But on a spiritual side, on the flip side, they the brokest motherfuckers. Boy, they are the peasants. Everything flipping is, is a polarized depending on where you at. 
If you want to be rich in this world, you're going to be poor in the spirit realm. Because what you got to do to become a billionaire in this world is going to directly put a lot of blood on your hands. Ain't no way around it, nigga. If you show me any billionaire in the world, that man got some murders on his goddamn hand. Because he got factories somewhere. He got plants somewhere. He polluting something. If he got factories, if he making billions manufacturing anything, he's killing something to do that. Whether it be fishes, squirrels, he killing some with a soul and environment to manufacture his billions. Whether he chopping a forest down, kill, he's something got to die for his billions to be made. And a lot of it got to die too. Ain't no way around it. You can't show me a powerful man in this world whose corporation ain't killing something. Or poisoning something. Or holding something back some kind of way. Whether it be spiritual, mental, physical health as a result of them creating. Because with every cause is an effect. The richest people in this world got the most blood on their hands. Yeah, just ask these prison owners who created a whole system to breed prisoners. It's corrupt. And if you think a person is honestly getting rich in a capitalist system, you're a fucking fool, nigga. This damn capitalist system wasn't even based upon honesty in the first place. It was always based upon taking some shit that didn't belong to you. It was always based upon something else got to suffer for me to be the shit. Now y'all trying to be in this system and act like you can be as, make it as high as you want and, and not hurt a soul. That's a lie, nigga. That's a lie, nigga. One thing tied to the other one, and you can't have one without the other. You can't even print a dollar without killing a tree. But check this out. I ain't finna go there. I'm gonna go back to Dante Inferno. Check it out, right? You ain't even been born yet in the Holy of Holies, the highest heaven, the heaven of heavens. We're right now, we've been born through uh, simulations. You haven't entered the earth yet. The word earth is your mama. You're not in your base reality, your base mother. This version of you was born in a fake version of your mama and from a fake version of your daddy. Your mama and daddy had to become greater versions of themselves on a spiritual level. And that's how they had to ascend higher to you, to higher realms. Guess what, right? Your mama and daddy are your guardian angels on higher realms leading you up the, the stairway. That energy that's making you feel like you need to be better, that's your parents on a spiritual level. Our parents and grandmothers and ancestors consciously already moved on. The reason they call the earth Babylon is because it's full of babies. Ain't no old. All of these are uh, what we listen. This is just my theory. Our mamas, daddies, grandmas, all these forefathers that's responsible for us being here. They consciousness already moved ahead of us. And what we're interacting with is their past version. See, our forefathers already was consciously moved up the ladder into the higher realities. But we're children and everybody got to start from the bottom. We all going to make it to heaven to the base reality. When we get there, we'll all be there at the same time, but we all get there at different times. It's like... Your grandma may have died before you, but it don't matter because we all got to die, nigga. And when you die, you will meet with granny. Don't worry.
She didn't go nowhere. Where she went, you will be, trust me. Like I said, ain't no separation among the dead and living. We all passing through simulations at different times. But we all going to make it to the same place. And when we get there, time won't exist. That's what I'm telling you. It don't matter if my grandma beat me to the place where time don't exist. We're all racing to a place to where when we get there, nobody win. Because if somebody say, what time was it when you got here? The same time you got here. How we get there at different times and the same time? Because God is omniscient. That's what I'm teaching you. You are already in heaven, but you ain't got there yet because your consciousness is rising up the spinal cord. As your consciousness walks up your own spinal cord to leave your body, your sperm cell is also climbing up the vaginal tract of your mama. The body is the simulation, and you got seven bodies, seven simulations, seven netters. So check it out. When you born out of your last body, that'll be when your soul reached the top of your central nervous system and exit out the hole in the top of the brain. That's the vault of heaven. That's when you're going to enter the base reality through that vault and you leave the body and you enter the, your real self. That's in our heaven where we're kings and gods at in Olympia. You see what I'm saying? So, the word hierarchy sounds like what? The highest arc. High arc. High arcy. The spiritual realm has a hierarchy system too. You got broke spirits and rich spirits. And the richest spirits have the most power. Because they got the most knowledge. The broken spirits, well, they ain't that powerful, which is why they live in the underworld. They don't have the power it takes to ascend to the holy of holies. This is survival of the fittest, man. This means your consciousness, consciousness, will live inside of the version of you that's fit for the state that is in. If your state of consciousness ain't on some God shit, it's going to find a version of you that matches where you are consciously. When you say, I want to raise my awareness, you talking about leaving your body, man, out to death. That means when you die the next, when everybody got to die. But when you die, you're saying consciously, I want to learn more and more. This is the soul saying, give me more work so I can earn my pay. I want to make more money. On a spiritual level, the only thing we take with us is knowledge. If a person come to this earth and say, fuck knowledge, give me the money. Then to get the money is to be in ignorance in this world. Is to be in ignorance. The dumbest people, the richest. They perpetuate the simulation knowledge, the secular knowledge. They ain't geniuses. Elon ain't a genius. He's a dumb devil trapping souls. You see these folks as geniuses if you ain't woke. The real geniuses are the ones that saying, look, my only limitations lie in the simulation. Let me make it out of the simulation versus try to build technology to overcome my limitations in a simulation. The simulation is what takes away our God powers. And they say, well, we can give you back your God powers with technology. Now you become a cyborg when you really get back your God powers by exiting the simulation. But anyway, check this out. The soul your soul, the greatest version of you, is yet to be born. And like I said, when the worst version of you 
is finally worked out and, and makes his way out the simulation and ascend to its highest form. When your soul leave the simulation, guess what? Your sperm is going to leave the vaginal tract. The simulation ain't nothing but the vagina. The base reality is up here. It's called a uterus. I'm telling you right now, we haven't made it to the uterus yet. We're in the earth realm. You're a sperm still ascending up the vaginal track, and you calling it the stairway to heaven. Heaven is between the woman's legs, though, the holy grail right here. That holy grail that you see at the top of that uterus, guess what that is? That's the exit back into the uh, base reality. It's a wormhole. Look. That is the wormhole that puts you back in the heavenly realm. You see that? You're, you haven't made it there yet. You still traveling up the vaginal track. And that's what this earth is. It's us passing through. We're, we're simply passing through. Like sperm passing through the vagina. We're spirits passing through a wormhole. But what that looked like in a simulation is sperm going through a vaginal tract. And I'm telling you, in the, in the base reality, your real self haven't even hit the egg yet. You waiting to be born. Because your birth in heaven got everything to do with your awakening on earth. So every time we awaken, we reach a new reality mentally. Like if you rewind time to when you was a 15-year-old and I trapped you in your 15-year-old mind for one day and brought you back to this mind, you'll be like, damn, I'm glad that ain't my mental paradigm no more. The world around you is mental perception. It gets better and better the more wisdom we get. And what I'm saying is you learn how to live life better the older you get. And you look back and say, man, if I knew this younger. And what's happening is the universe is letting you do that. The universe is saying, look, I know everybody going to do that. Everybody going to make mistakes and say, I wish I knew this when I was young. So the universe is saying, I'm going to grant your wish. I'm going to give you seven do-overs. And everything you learn in each incarnation, you're going to know it when you're young because that's what you wish for. That's what we wish for as a collective. We said as a collective, man, I wish I knew everything I know now when I'm older. Boy, I wish I knew this when I was a child. The universe granted our wish, y'all. This is why we got to be reborn. Everything you learned in this life, you're going to be born all over again with all this knowledge. Why, Brother Sanchez? You asked for it. Everybody has said that at some point in their life, man, I wish I knew this earlier. The universe know we're going to do that. So it built the system to grant those wishes to the genies, the genetics, the genies. Okay, it granted our wishes and it said, okay, if that's what you need to batter yourself, fine, we'll create you a stepping system to where we will allow you to go back, do it over with all the knowledge you just gained to see if you can do it better. This gives up the purpose. This gives us the power to rewrite our own reality, y'all. They call that gene editing. Once you edit the DNA, you edit the experience. There's a better version of our mama and daddy on each of these higher planes. Because our mama and daddy is a better version of themselves, guess what they did? They raised a better version of you. This greater version that you trying to ascend to, when you get there and look around, you're going to see everybody is their greater version in this place, which is why you're your greater version. This means that we're a product of our environment. If we got positive around us, 
will have positive in us. That's what heaven is. It's bliss as within, so without. In heaven, you don't say, man, I got it all together. But look at my brother. He just can't get right. In heaven, everybody got it together. And ain't nobody got to tell nobody nothing or teach nobody nothing. Because everybody learned how to master this life and live it the best way through all of these steps we took of incarnation. By the time we get to heaven, we're going to be the master this thing. Ain't nothing else you can tell us on how to live this thing in bliss. How to perceive it. So my thing is this right here. That's what rebirth is. Basically, your greater version was born from your mama and daddy's greater version meeting in heaven. The reason this version of you is fucked up because your mama and daddy's version, their DNA wasn't mastered in this realm. The fathers say that the sins of the, the parents will visit the children. This is what it's talking about. The crack baby that's born with a crack addiction. Now, there's a universe out there where that mama was never a crackhead. She was a goddess. But the baby got to rise up through that, though. When a new baby is conceived in, the, in, the, in, in our base reality, when a soul in the base reality say, I want to visit the earth realm, guess what it's saying? I want to go explore my lower versions. Your, your mama and daddy exist in the higher realms. They send all of their children into the lower realms. <coughs> Why? The same reason a rich daddy put his son in the hood. So you can appreciate. Because in, in, in heaven, right? Everybody are gods, but the baby gods don't know what they are. And, and I'm going to write a car. I'm working on like a cartoon. It's called Happy Land. And that's my word for heaven. It's for children. To teach them about the soul and stuff. In Happy Land, everybody happy but the children. Because the children don't know what happiness is. So even though they smile like the adults and they laugh all day like the adults, the children don't understand why they do it. The adults laugh and smile and they can appreciate it because the adults in Happy Land, they've been to the earth realm before. They've been to sad land before. And in sad land, people experience hurt and pain. So souls that become adults in Happy Land only become adults because they went to sad land. But the children in Happy Land, even though they happy, they don't know what happiness is. They laugh, they cry, they, they laugh and smile all day in Happy Land. But the children don't know what happiness is, only the adults. Because those adults have experienced lifetimes full of pain on earth. So when they make it to Happy Land, when the adults smile, they cry too. And the children don't know why. The children look at the adults in Happy Land and they say, we want to learn how to be happy like you. Because mom and daddy, y'all are just happier than us children. And the mom and daddy say, the reason we are adults in Happy Land are happier than children it's because we've been to sad land before, and y'all ain't. And the children in happy land say, well, we want to learn how to feel happiness like you. And the adults say, are you sure you want that? Jump down this dark portal, and when you come back up, you will know why us adults feel happiness different than the children in happy land. So they send the children to sad land called the earth. And when the children, because you can't tell them what sadness is. They never, they got to go experience pain, hurt, suffering. So that when they make it back to happy land, they say, now I'm an adult. Because now when I smile, 
I appreciate this smile. Now when I laugh up here in heaven, I know what you adults mean now. And then here come a young soul in happy land saying, why are the adults just too damn happy? The adults is just too carried away. Like, come on, calm down, mama, daddy. And the mama, daddy is saying, listen, children, y'all never been to sad land. And the children is like, I wish we can be happy like how mom and daddy is because they happy, happy. But the children born in the angels born in heaven don't appreciate heaven. The humans that lived on earth and had to make it to heaven the hard way, they kissing them damn streets, boy, they like an African arriving in America. <laughs> See, the angels in heaven are like American citizens. And the fucking humans, when they make it to heaven, they like the damn immigrants crossing the border. They appreciate it way more than you. And even though Heaven is a hell to us. It's their heaven because they had they been somewhere worse. So a child born into heaven ain't going to appreciate it like a child that was born in a third world country. All it know is heaven. So it's normal. But the female is the portal and a gateway that lead back and forth from these realms. And this what I'm saying about the uterus. We're still in our mother's uterus as a sperm cell climbing up the vaginal tract. As I speak right now, you're a sperm climbing the vaginal tract in the Holy of Holies. And when you make it to the egg in the heaven of heavens, your soul will be made it to the sky vault in the earth realm at the same time. At the same time. And this is how you get sucked up in the mothership because the mothership is basically your highest version of your mama in the highest reality giving birth with you with the highest version of your daddy. Man, you became a damn great being with a mom and daddy like that. It's a DNA curse, y'all. The curse is in our genetics. Our mama and daddies can't raise us to our greatest versions in this realm. Because they greatest versions don't exist here. This is a process of rebirths coming through our mama and daddies as they wake up too and rewrite their DNA that we're coming through. You see what I'm saying? That's the whole curse of sin with the parents and the child. It's a genetic curse. So the genie is a slave. He's a genetic slave. Because when our consciousness was copied into several versions, they copied some good ones and some bad ones. The worst version of your mama met the worst version of your daddy. And they made you. And you will never be your greatest version in this world. Your mama and daddy ascended up the stairway to become greater versions of themselves. We say stuff like, who raised you? Why do we call it raising someone? Because this is the path of ascension. Our mamas and daddies are our guardian angels that's holding the gateway to heaven open. Check this out. Here go the Hebrew cosmos. You see how they got the gateway to heaven opened up? Those golden clouds that you see, that's the Ark of the Covenant open up. That's between the man and the woman. You, you got to keep that Ark open for the souls to come in and out of the Ark, which is Noah's Ark, the earth realm. Our world shaped like a Noah's Ark. The covenant is to keep the gateway open so nobody get trapped. How do you keep it open? The marriage, dude. The word marriage comes from the word merger. Merger is a merger. It's a bond. Man and woman. That's why they want to break up the household. This is a spiritual attack. They closing the portal. Look at him. Your mama. Your mama is opening up 
one gate. And see, this, this is what I'm saying. If ain't nobody standing at these gates holding them open, the gateways are closed. That's to say that your mama is holding open one door and your daddy holding open the other door. That's how you entered the gates. You got to have two sponsors. Those were your parents. That's your sun and moon. That's your vortex, because the sun and moon is making a vortex. It's the sun and moon together that's creating a portal in the middle of the earth, just like your mama and daddy together opened up a portal for you to be here. Your mama holding one door gate open, like your mama standing at one of these doors and your dad is standing on one side and they both holding the door open. They're raising you up the stairway to heaven. There are seven gates, though, that we got to cross through to make it to the heaven of heavens or the highest heaven. And these seven gates represent seven genetic makeup, seven genetic codes that we got to rise above. Right now, you're, re you're editing your own DNA every day by the, your behavior. Your DNA don't tell you what to do. That's what science telling you. You program your DNA what you want it to be every day by your consistent behavior. It's just that your DNA came with a base template and that was the, your, the gifts and curses of your mama and daddy. 50% of your DNA come from mama. 50% come from daddy. That can be broken down into 25, 25, 25, 25. You get 25% of your daddy's good ways. You get 25% of his bad ways. You get 25% of your mama's good ways. You get 25% of her bad ways. That gives you your 100% DNA makeup. Gifts and curse. You don't just inherit the curses and addictions. You inherit their gifts. So if your mama was on crack, but she was Whitney Houston and she know how to sing, yes, you didn't just get your mama's crack habit. You inherited her voice too. You get the gift and the curse from these parents. You don't, if you LeBron James' son, he didn't just get his daddy's good ho hooping abilities. His daddy may be a compulsive liar. He going to get that too. <laughs> you don't just get the good. You get the good and the bad from both parents. And you, the reason we got to get some of the bad is because the DNA is perfected through the next generation. The mama probably died smoking crack, but the crack baby is going to get off of crack and then correct the DNA for the next generation behind her. You see what I'm saying? So our forefathers went on to perfect the DNA and other higher layers of reality. And they perfected it so much that they created a heaven. They created a realm where with the, with the, in this advanced realm, we're using a form of CRISPR gene editing technology. And everyone is editing their own DNA right now to become their greater version. And you're doing it through a school, something they call the path of ascension, the stairway to heaven, incarnations and birth cycles. You learning how to be a good being with positive vibes through these life cycles is you reprogramming your DNA. And you're going to realize when you're born into higher realms that, see, we be thinking that Man, if I go to heaven, my mama ain't going to go. My daddy ain't going to go. Dude, your mama and daddy already ahead of you. That's what I'm telling you. See, when your mama and daddy is, is shifted their consciousness to a higher reality above this plane of existence, their lower version stayed here to raise your lower version. Does that make sense? Consciously, 
your grandma and ancestors already moved ahead of you to the base reality. The only thing back here is a simulation of them. A shell world. If you like the version of your parents in this world, just wait till you get to the next version. Because I didn't have the worst parents here. But they weren't the best either. Everybody here got room for growth. And that's literally what your parents did. They became better versions of themselves in a higher reality. And because of that, they created a better you. Your parents kept moving up, making a better version of themselves all the way up until they made the best versions of themselves in heaven and they raised the best version of you up there. But you got to rise up through all of your parents' lower versions. And that's how you get here. It's a stairway, a pathway. We got to do what they did. Your parents in this world, like your mama and daddy as souls have already moved on. But like I said, when we uh, die in this world, our life in this world keep replaying over and over like a movie on loop. These netters don't stop because we leave. There's a version of you right now in another universe driving a car down the highway. If you fall asleep during this stream and start dreaming and you just in a car driving down the highway and you say, damn, I'm driving down the highway and an 18 wheeler is coming your way and you can't motherfucking stop. And in that dream, boom, you hit the 18 wheeler. And guess what? You wake up in front of your computer here in this presentation and you like, damn, I was dreaming. No, nigga, you was dying. You just died. You literally just died in another universe. But, and the ancestors said, death is awakening. The moment you fall off a cliff and hit the ground, you always wake up. I'm telling y'all, when you woke up in the body as a human, you was dying as a sperm cell. Death is awakening. When the, when the sperm died or fell asleep, the human became woke. Death is awakening. It's a paradox. So the thing about it is our fathers and mothers have consciously moved on. This world is called Babylon because technically ain't nothing here but baby souls. This is my weird theory. What we're interacting with is like resonant energy that's left behind from our grandmother, from our parents, from our loved ones. And it's creating a simulation, which is a likeness of your mama, of your daddy, even of yourself. But all of this going to fade away because it's just resonant energy that's being projected from the base reality. That's to say that your real parents are already ahead of you. And what you're interacting here is a simulation. That's to say that the greatest version of yourself was born out the greatest versions of your mama daddy. And when you rise up to that reality, your soul will be meeting up with your mama, daddy, grump. That's what heaven is. Everybody rising up to their greatest version. So it ain't like when you get to heaven, your mama and daddy ain't going to be there. Because they weren't woke, but I was woke. No, silly. People are playing a role in this simulation. Even your grandma who died in the church. Guess what, man? Everybody got to wake up on their own. And so the thing about it is in this world, you say, man, my grandma was in the church. She wasn't woke. My, my, my family wasn't woke. In this world, everything is backwards. 
if your grandma and whole family was woke, you'll be trying to do something different, nigga. You'll be trying to be sleep then. <laughs> it's a polarity law. I really believe if my whole family wasn't born in the, if I didn't come from the church background, I wouldn't be woke. Everything about my upbringing ended up to me having all his knowledge. So I can say my grandma wasn't woke, my auntie wasn't woke, my mama wasn't woke. Even if they were asleep, they made you woke. I believe that it, everything ain't what it seemed, dude. I think when we get to heaven, all of our loved ones going to be there and they going to be woke. And the reason they did that to us is because it'll just be normal if they didn't. It's a polarity law. Children like to be different. You know what I'm saying? If you born into a woke family, then the topic of being woke won't be exciting. All of the woke people in the world, that's, they, they, like when you talk about the elites, they're trying to dumb themselves down so they can enjoy this shit better. Because the more they know, the less it's, it, it feels real. That's why they said ignorance is bliss. To enjoy the simulation the best is to not know nothing about this ether shit, the spiritual knowledge, and all this shit that I'm talking about. The world hates this because it makes the world uncomfortable. You can't really enjoy this world if you waking up every day talking deep. Sometimes ignorance is really bliss. Like if we swimming in the ocean and my children playing, having fun, and you come up talking about, you know that ocean ain't real, it's just a simulation, man. So why you having fun? <laughs> and some fake water that ain't even there, Neo. That's what I'm saying. We shift back and forth between reality and the simulation all the time. And we don't even know it. Sometimes you phase out of this knowledge just to have fun and you don't even be conscious of it. The brain do it for you because it'll drive you crazy if you don't. You see what I'm saying? So the thing about this thing is that hell is... I'm surrounded by all my loved ones, but it feel like I'm lonely because I'm the only one thinking like I think. You in a world full of humans, but you feel lonely because you deep as hell. You got this knowledge. And that's because the people with this knowledge may be the only souls on this damn earth. That's a theory. The people that's grasping this knowledge right here may be the only conscious souls on this earth. And we think and we so special. But really, nigga, we the ones that's left behind. What if our mamas, daddies, and everybody around you that's, that you saying that ain't woke, that's going to be stuck here in the simulation? What if they woke version already passed through here? And they already had their awakening and made their avatar break the loop cycle. And they came and was born here and said, wait a minute, I'm having deja vu. I need to wake up out of here. And they moved on. And when they moved on, because they soul left their body, now they body just running the script. It's running Christianity, Islam, the genetic curse, the upbringing, the tradition. The programming, the scripture. You look around at everybody around you and you say, damn, man, even at my family reunions, I feel lonely. Because I can't talk deep like this around my family. I got to wait till I get the Bro Sanchez TV because they going to look at me stupid because that might not be your family. It may be the resonant energy left behind 
do we make the the woke people right now that's waking up may be the only conscious souls in this simulation and we may be left behind while we think and we so smart and everybody else so dumb you think your grandma ain't woke but you woke and i'm telling you your grandma been to this earth so many times her woke version already came and left it missed you so here you come with your woke version coming and your gr what you looking at is the resonant energy of what your grandma used to be when she was in indoctrination. That's looping out. When your soul leave this body and move on, guess what's going to happen? You going to keep this avatar going to keep being recycled down here, even though you ain't in it. And it's going to keep doing dumb shit over and over. Like how we say the people that ain't woke going to be recycled. I'm telling you, we may be looking at it wrong. The people that wake up is still going to be recycled because they avatar going to repeat this. Shit. It's like the movies, right? Let's say the Truman Show plan. Just because you ain't watching a movie at the movies that day don't mean it ain't planned. That means you just left the theater. You leaving the movie theater don't stop them from keep playing that movie, man. Here's the thing. Before you showed up inside of this body, what you, they was, in this simulation, they took our DNA and they made they own version of you and their little world. It's called copyright infringement. Your consciousness fell into one of their copies of you. And that's and now you basically hack your own copy. You hack your own copy. The the the, the demigods that rule this simulation, they populated this place by copying with avatar shells. Just like they got copies of you running around in dream worlds right now that you go peek into. Them your copies. Now watch this. The thing is, whether you're conscious of, of what's happening in your copy's life or not, it's still going to keep playing out. You're on a hamster wheel, and the wheel going to keep spinning even when you hop off of it. This world is a movie that keep playing and starting over. But you never watched it before. Your first time watching this movie, you say, hey, this is my life that I'm looking at, that I'm watching every day unfold. But even when you through watching this movie, it's going to keep playing on repeat. Just because you watched it for the first time don't mean it ain't never been played before. There's several different life scripts that was written out for you. Your consciousness was copied by seven big ancient corporations that got that we they literally sold our souls to. I believe that some kind of way our consciousness ended up into the hands of the people that run the matrix or the simulation. I don't think it's for all bad, though. I think it's some kind of learning process, like Truman Show shit. But our parents in a future advanced reality consented to their DNA entering some sort of simulation so that when it come out, it'll be some sort of advanced being. That's what we're in. We're in a school, and that when we're finally born out of the seven grades of this school, the seven gradient layers, then we'll finally be born in the base reality with our real mom and daddies. And we'll be in our real body. And I'm guessing they'll explain to us if we didn't take you through that, you would not have the knowledge you got as a God. And this is the knowledge that Adam and Eve had to get from the serpent. The knowledge of how to activate your heavenly power. 
Because if an if a angel is born into heaven, it don't really experience heaven. It experiences normality. It's normal. It don't know nothing else but heaven. So how can you think that it's heaven? It's just normal. So the, the angel in heaven having activated its heavenly experience. How does it do it? It becomes a fallen angel. It got to go see what the other side is like so it can appreciate heaven. Angels in heaven don't experience heaven. They experience normality. The only way you can experience heaven is to make it through hell. And everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to die. And there's no other way you can experience heaven without making it through the hellish situation of death. Because heaven is life. You don't even know what life is, dude. You wouldn't even appreciate it if it was given to you. Because you don't know what death is. So the Most High said, listen. Everybody that I'm going to give the gift of heaven to, the gift of life to, I'm going to make sure that they appreciate it. Because by the time they get it, they going to be that went through hell, baby. I'll be right back, y'all. Smoke break. going nowhere you with your boy man we finna roll up real quick i'm gonna play some music and we gonna restart the show from the jump baby do a whole nother intro dance roll up another blunt and we finna keep this shit rolling i got some more shit to teach yeah give me a minute Oh, y'all be seeing me. Yeah, I got the mini fridge full of them good ones. Keep them good and cold. Keep them mountains blue on the cores, baby. I, I got some more stuff to teach y'all, but I said to myself, I'm going to teach it while I'm rolling up. I'm a, I'm a multitask. I'm a multitask. Look at that. That go the uterus and that go the gene and lamp. The Shiva lingam is the gene and lamp, the uterus. All right. Check this out. If you look at the Hebrew cosmos, you are in a holographic simulation that's made out of light. The light will beam out the top of this simulation through the sky vault right here. This is where the light of your soul exit the earth. When the light of your soul exit the earth, it's going to penetrate the egg above. This is Hebrew cosmology. It's saying that when we lead the earth, we're just going to re-enter the womb of the woman like Jesus was teaching Nebuchadnezzar. This is Jonah leaving the well. The well is the world. The belly is the bell. It's shaped like a bell. When we talk to the women, we say, you can ring my bell. The women say, you can ring my bell. You know what the ringing of the bell is? Watch this. 
the thing that rings the bell is a sperm cell, dude. You didn't pay attention. I can't make it up. The little thing that's ringing the fucking bell is a ball with a tail on it. Oh! The fucking egg is a bell, but the bell ringer is the sperm. How does the bell ringer get inside of the bell? The same way the sperm get inside of the egg. Tell me I ain't a bad motherfucker. Everybody know that the bell is the, is, is, is the shape of the earth, the dome. And that the North Pole in the middle is where the bell is wrong at because that's where sex is happening in the middle of the woman's legs, in the middle of the man's legs, the North Pole. And when he ring the bell, new life come to the earth because the ringing of the bell ain't nothing but sound vibration energy. That's the new soul, a ripple effect of life. Chakra layers, which is a ripple effect, a new soul that exists within the multiverse coming from the center outward. Every time we press that bell down and you hear ring, ring, that's a new life. Ring, ring, ring. The bell is constantly being rung at the North Pole. In the middle of our earth, this bell in the middle is just being pushed every second. I'm going to show you what it looked like. Watch this. This is what it looked like when you keep pushing it. Look at this uh, little hourglass in the middle of the bubble. If you keep pushing the bell at the top, it'll keep contracting, expanding it, and ringing the bell like that. It's like you keep pushing that button and it keep on sending a vibratory wave from the center where you pushed it at all the way out throughout all the highway, all the hallways, classrooms. That vibration travels far. When that bell ring, you can hear that shit. If your house by a school, you can hear when they change classes. Your house can be miles away from a school and if you got good ears you can probably hear that bell ring no not if you you got to be like a dog to hear it then <laughs> but i'm saying though something as small as a bell can create a vibratory radius around it that big like i can give you a little bitty bell right and that little bell Right? It'll create a noise so big you can hear it through the whole city. Them big old churches that you see in the middle of these towns, like an island and shit, you can hear it throughout the whole damn city from that one little bell in the church. That sound will vibrate from the church all the way to the edges of the city, bro. That's how far the, the energy will travel. Because the energy is being transformed from an action to a sound when you press that button or when you ring the bell. The action becomes a sound. And when you transform the action to a sound, the action is distributed further. You can hear it now. You feel what I'm saying? People that ain't even near the church can say somebody just did that action. Because that action leaves the place where we took the action at in a form of sound. And the people away from the action can say, we know that the action taking place because I can hear it. And that's the story of life coming from the North Pole. That's the story of life coming from the North Pole. See what's happening at the North Pole? Let me show you something. Look, in the middle of the earth, there's a button. That button is called Mount Maru, let's say. But the reason it's shaped like that is because it's like a bell. It's like this. This is what's at the middle of the earth. One of these. Well, our earth is a big ass bell. And in the middle is the bell ringer. The bell ringer. And when you make it to the earth, in the middle of the earth, guess what you do when you reach the zero point? You ring the bell. Guess what? Class ends when we ring the bell. 
your soul is going to ring that bell when it make it to the North Pole. And the ringing of the bell is called having sex. Now, what does that mean? At the North Pole, the bell is being rung, meaning your mama and daddy is having sex right now in the base reality, like I explained earlier. And in the lower reality, you already been born. But the act just took place in heaven. But it's damn near finished happening in hell. That's the flip side of time with polarity. The seat is hard to explain because it's a paradox separated by the middle of a wormhole. And, and everything is flipped when you cross that middle point. And what I mean by that is... In heaven, things are just happening. But in hell, they've been played out several times already. We call it a damn repeat cycle, like a song on repeat. So whatever happening in heaven, the opposite happening in hell. So in heaven, it's only one action that's just now taking place. But in hell... That one action that's just taking place becomes many actions that already happened. So you a baby in heaven that ain't even been born yet. But in hell, you a grown man that had plenty of births. In heaven, you're a baby that ain't even been born yet. And in hell, you a grown-ass person that's been born plenty of times already. And it's like the whatever happening above, the total opposite happening below. In heaven, you're one version of yourself. In hell, you many versions. In heaven, that one version of yourself ain't even been born yet. And in hell... You got many versions that already had several life cycles. But when the two meet each other, that's when the grown man in hell going to meet with the baby in heaven. And that's when the baby in heaven going to be born as like a this advanced baby. That's what's happening in our base reality. We're giving birth to babies that ain't babies. They're gods. They coming out the womb already a god. Ain't no babies in heaven, man. The babies is only in Babylon or hell. When the babies rise up from Babylon, they are born into heaven as a full-grown man. In other words, listen, ain't no such thing as a childhood, teenage years, and all that in heaven. The soul is born a fully functional, developed God. The process of childhood, teenage years, that take place in time, in the simulation, in chronos. In heaven, ain't no time. So every God is the same age. They're infinite, years old. But in the simulation, your grandma can be 80. You can be 15. But in heaven, y'all the same age. What separates us by time and space and years and age is time itself. Chronos, the simulation. Outside of this, ain't no grandma and daughter. It's just gods and goddesses in, in their kingdom of heaven. Ain't no separation among ages because ain't no time. Every god in heaven rose from out of time. So when you become a god in heaven, ain't no other god going to say, what date was it when he became a god? Because ain't no calendars in heaven. Ain't nobody keeping time in heaven. Ain't no other God asking the other God, when did you get your God certificate? Yes, all of us may have ascended to the God seat at different times, but when you get there, it's at the same time. Now, that's a paradox that probably don't make sense, but paradoxes don't got to make sense. They true, nigga. It's true. It's true that 
if me and you run in a race and the end goal of that race is to reach a point where time don't exist, if you beat me and make it to the finish line before me, then nobody win because the finish line is outside of time. So if we race into a finish line that's leading us outside of time, it don't matter when I cross the line. It don't, ain't no winner, nigga. Because when everybody cross that finish line, time won't exist no more. So when we get on the other side of that finish line and they say, who won? Who made it out first? Who got the greatest time? They, people going to be like, what the fuck is time? What do you mean by winning or losing? Duality don't exist. Ain't no winners and losers. Everybody that crossed that finish line is a winner, a god that defeated Kronos. That's what I'm telling you. We running a race on the earth. So you look ahead of you and you see people up in front of you. And you say they win in the race. But the concept of winning and losing only exists while we running. When we cross that finish line, the concept of winning and losing won't even be an idea in our mind. So I won't be able to tell you who won because when we cross the line, time don't even exist on the other side of this finish line. It's a race that everybody wins no matter what place you come in. Watch this, though, guys. In the Hebrew cosmos, they got something at the top called the chambers in, in the heavens. And you got three gateways right there. And I want to show you that those three gateways are called the goddess portal. This is even how they set the courtroom up. Check this out, y'all. The chambers in heavens is the goddess portal. I got y'all, my sisters. If ain't no other man in black YouTube going to do this for the women, I do it by myself. All of these niggas getting behind Donald Trump. All of these niggas getting behind Biden. Every man is worshiping some Pharaoh. Every man giving you some knowledge about some Anunnaki. I'm telling you, when we start putting a woman back where she belong, we'll create heaven, dude. Because heaven is through her portal. The earth is built like the woman reproductive system. And if the woman ain't, if the women all around the world ain't in a good spiritual state, then the earth won't be. Because they housing all of the babies and shit. The, the, the state that they in when the baby in their belly determines what kind of experience that baby having in his dream. Do you get what I'm saying? Everything you going through in your life that's bad is because you a baby inside of your pregnant mama in a higher realm and somebody doing some toxic shit around her. You get what I'm saying? The baby is sleeping in a fetal bag and he dreaming. And when the mama get into an argument, that becomes a war plan out in the baby's dream. As within, so without. As above, so below. When a baby is in a woman's belly, it's in a place of rest. It's running a simulation. Like right now, we're a baby in our mama's belly in the higher realm. And while that baby is sleeping, it's dreaming of a lifetime. This the lifetime. All of the turbulence in your lifetime it's because your mama going through some on the higher realm, your earth. That's why I keep telling the women they are attacking the women to attack the earth, dude. The only way you can create hell on earth is to create hell inside the physiology, the, the anatomy, the biology of the woman body. Because the baby got to grow in that. If we, if we create hell in the woman's body and the baby got to grow in her womb, he going to uh, be born a fucking devil on demon time. Everybody know that demons are born from hell. If they make the chemistry of the woman's body chaotic 
and make her have to act like a man because it's too many bitch ass niggas around and they turn the goddesses. Think about it. This make me remember now. I was reading about the goddesses and they said basically that we, we left the dynastic age. When we left the dynastic age, all of the goddesses became war goddesses. That's like the women taking the man's role, trying to be the father. This shit happened in the past already with single mothers. So, but check how deep this is, right? Who you think was being persecuted during the witch hunts? Single mothers, dude. You can run up on a man's woman and do what you want with her if she had a man. That was against the law. Witches didn't have a man. The word that they calling witches back then was just single mothers. It's like the pimp game. The hoe without a pimp, she can be tortured, raped, beat on every day, robbed every day, smacked up. That was your witch hunt. Back in Europe, man, if women had to wear a fucking lock on a pussy, even if they was married. Because even if she said, I belong to a man, they still probably break the law and rape her. And then that man will have to face punishment from the husband because she was his property. But if a woman didn't have a man, she was fair game to anybody, nigga. A woman without a man in medieval Europe is like a bitch on a blade, on a Figaro blade without a pimp, nigga. <laughs> a woman back in the early church days and didn't have a man, man, look here. You like one of them holes on the blade that ain't got a pimp. Things gonna happen to you. Bad things. That's why they pay the pimp. But see, that's what I'm saying <coughs> about how, how they set up our system like pimping and horn. That's what I'm saying. They even made religion the same way. If you ain't paying some God to protect you, they saying, well, I'm going to let the devils do what they want with you. You better be paying a pimp. If you ain't paying somebody to protect you, we gonna let the wolves eat you. That's the concept. And they create that dynamic in your mind and that's the pimping and the hoeing based on fear. People say, why would a woman give a man her woman, her money? It's fear-based. Why would a Christian give a pastor the tide money? It's pimping. You need a, some fear to scale them. You say, look, if you don't tithe, you going to hell, man, and you know you're going to, basically, if you don't report to me and tie it to me, you lose your protection. If the hoe ain't paying the pimp, things can happen. The pimp might even say, look, this bitch been pinching money. I know she cheating me. She ain't giving me everything. This is what we going to do. I'm going to have my other pimp's little cousins rob one of my bitches. Now, these pimps know I'm telling some real cold game. <laughs> if a pimp see a chick that he think this bitch think that she don't need a pimp, nigga, the pimp will ha have her robbed. The pimp will have her beat up, nigga. And, and she won't even know it's the pimp, nigga. And, and you know... Because she out here thinking she don't need one. But that's just me uh, theorizing and thinking about the pimp. And maybe that shit don't happen. But it sounds like some shit that'll happen, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I love this conversation. But I've been on here for five hours. I can keep going. Thursday is our Friday, but time is money, nigga. We ain't going to play now. <laughs> it, we ain't going to act like I get ad cents on my big channel. Yeah, we going to have to check the cash out, man. Because if everybody give one dollar.
We've been on for five hours. Let me just say, people, send in the Cash App donations, even if it's one dollar. It's too many people watching for me to have what I see here. And I don't disclose my income because you got a lot of niggas that they like to joke about shit. I tell you what, too. I never said I was the richest nigga, but I guarantee you I love what I do more than niggas with more money than me. And guess what, nigga? I'm rich in spirit, and I don't got a fake for these little pennies, nigga. I can do what I want. That's why I never look at the next man and get discouraged. I never look because I appreciate the few people that send whatever they send to me. Y'all keep me doing what I love to do for a living. And I don't got to be censored or lie to y'all or nothing like that, nigga. So, yeah, like, you can point out a lot of people that way more lucrative than me on this shit. But they sold, they sold. They got to come on here and talk about Anunnaki, reptilian. I can come on here and put the woman back where she belongs. And I don't give a fuck if a nigga say I'm simping or none of that. I don't work for I don't work for the brotherhood. The brotherhood promotes Sharia law. That's why none of them niggas fuck with me. I got a genuine group of niggas over here that literally think women look goofy kneeling down on one knee to a man. You a fool. And the chicks that's out there kneeling down to a man for some marriage, you making the real women look bad. You got low self-esteem to where you kneeling down to a man when you got the fucking portal to life in between your legs. And from in between your legs, man and woman come. You talking about the biggest form of desecration. From the woman's womb, man and woman come out of it. But she, that womb gonna nail down to some pussy ass man. Only a gay man would want a woman to kneel to him. I'm sorry. If you got your woman kneeling to you and you ain't getting no head, you gay nigga. Time out some propose to me. You're in a bitch position. Like niggas think that they been so fly that now y'all acting like hoes now. Cause nigga, it's so manly to me to see a nigga get on one knee, nigga, and like a man and will you marry me? How we just going to take away traditions going to go with the, uh, the world backwards, nigga. The man want to be proposed to and the man want to give birth to the baby now. The man just want to swap roles with the woman. And they don't see how they socially engineering the man, in particular, the black man. I haven't saw one white woman get on a knee to a white man because low self-esteem is at an all time high in black women. Who you think getting the most BBLs? If enough of these bills get in me, I'm going to tell you niggas the truth. <laughs> and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know if I tell it without it, I'm going to tell it with it, nigga. If you're going to tell it, then you got to tell it all. I don't want to sit down. I want to stand up and roll up. Now, I had a show lined up but out the show. And uh, um, I'm trying to get a full view of a nigga in the camera because, shit, I want my whole fitness show, nigga. I'm rocking some shoot. Some shit on my feet right now that you niggas don't know about, baby. Look at them. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, I'm a little materialistic, ain't I? That's fucked up. 
No, nah, but check this out, though, man. I'm going to tell y'all something, bro. I've been doing this shit for 10 years now. And I've reached a point now where I'm starting to accept all of the gifts that's come as a result of my hard work and not feel bad taking them. I always been a dude that had a problem receiving gifts. But guess what? I don't got that problem no more. So send in the cash app donation if you like what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah. You know. Now, I was going to have a after show, like an after party. Drop a one if you would like to call in and talk to me today about the top. You know I got the best topics. If you want to talk about this shit today with your boy, drop a one. And I might still have my after party on Golden Wings and we'll have a call in show. Y'all want a call-in show today, tonight? Y'all want a panel? I already got it set up. It's going to redirect you right to it. But just because I set it up don't mean that God can't give it and he can't take it away. So now, <laughs> like I said, hit that motherfucking cash app because your boy came in here today and put the woman where they supposed to be. Now, I'm not through teaching, though. I'm going to have to do a part two with this because I always underestimate how much I got to go over. Check it out, right? Here go the chambers and heavens on the Hebrew cosmos. You see that? That's the goddess portal. Look, they call that the pitch. You know how they get a devil or trident? Drop a one if you know what I'm talking about. They get... They get a devil this trident. I got to take a lot of this stuff down, man. Hold on. I got so many pictures open that it don't make no sense. If I'm going to keep teaching today, I need to take some of these down. Like, damn. I looked up. I got hella tabs open. Yeah, we can always open that stuff again if we need it. Like, I'm a hoarder when it comes to them tabs. Damn, boy, that's a lot of tabs. Hold up, y'all. I got to shut a lot of this shit, man. Because I don't know where to click at for my next slide. There we go. All right, there we go. So like I said, right, if you go look, if when you say Taurus, right, which is what the U Taurus is, did I just go over your head? Let me get my whiteboard. Let me get the whiteboard for you. U Taurus. You are Taurus. Mm hmm? The uterus is a Taurus field. It's a Taurus field in a physical form. The uterus. Now let's get even deeper with this, right? If you look at the Shiva Lingam, it will give you a hidden meaning. What is the hidden meaning of the Shiva Lingam? You ready for it? Watch this.
Here is what the Shiva Lingam is. That's the Shiva Lingam. That's your Shiva Lingam. What they do, they do this. And the reason they do that is because it's no different than when you see the Hebrew cosmos and you don't see the underworld. It's the top dome, but not the bottom dome. Look at this symbol, Shiva Lingam. I'm about to teach you something. Watch this. Now, the Shiva Lingam is this symbol. Right here. That's how you get the genie lamp. Check it out, right? Now watch this. Check it out now. This circle right here. This circle is Gab. The earth god, Gab. Another form of Gab is Horus dealing with the horizon. Let's do it. That's Gab. Here go Nut. Nut is the firmament dome. Gab is the ground. They both intersect each other to make what? The hollow spear. Go pull up an image of Nut and Gab. The bond between man and woman is literally expanding the universe. Man and woman's bond is a direct result of the hollow spear keeping its foundation. The very construct of our universe is founded by the covenant between man and woman. Nud and Gab. This is how the hollow spear or the universe, these are the laws of the universe. Nud and Gab. The horizontal aspect and the vertical aspect. That's Nud and Gab. The Shiva Lingam, as they call it. So Gab is the horizontal circle. Nut is the firmament dome, the vertical circle. And when they intersect, this becomes the foundation of our hollow spirit tent. This becomes the foundation of the hollow spear. And this symbol right here is what I showed you earlier with the, with the uh, circle cross. Remember? Remember this right here? What, what, wait a minute. You see this all the time in Christianity. This right here, hold up. That right there. The circle cross, we showed it earlier. You see it in the church a lot. That's Nud and Gab, man. That's the two polarities that is allowing this space to be created. Inside of an expanding spear, man and woman, yin and yang. These niggas ain't on my level. They got more views than me. They got bigger numbers than me. But them niggas ain't got more knowledge than me. It's a shame that people think it's more knowledge where the most numbers at. Them niggas ain't on my level, bro. I'm called by the ancestors. They called by that brotherhood, the pseudoscience. You called by a dollar, nigga.
I got to, hey, bro, I'm telling, if niggas want war with me, I'm going to win that because y'all got more to lose than me. That's how come I know I'm in a good position. If I was bigger than y'all, the ancestors would tell me to ignore y'all. But if I ignore y'all, won't nobody be battling you niggas with this energy like me. That's why a lot of folks say he hating on big channels. No, I'm not. I'm bigger than them niggas. If you going by how many people hit the subscribe button, they bigger than me. But if you going by knowledge, it don't get no bigger than me. Watch this though. Everything happened for a reason. Everything happened for a reason. Because I know if I was bigger than them niggas, I'll ignore them. I don't focus on uh, shit that's beneath me. When I look up and I say, damn, there's some people above me, but they ain't better than me. Guess what I'm going to do? Show I'm better. It's survival. This capitalism, nigga, I'm in a simulation. I'm competing with every man. <laughs> I swear, nigga, and I'm cocky with it. And I'm going to be an annoying competitor, bro. I'm going to be a fucking annoying competitor. Because I got the truth, nigga. Don't nobody, uh, don't nothing annoy these liars like a nigga with the truth. And he keep yelling it in their ear. And he in my chat room. And he trying to debate me. Yeah, nigga. Uh -uh, you on my mind, nigga. You're on my mind, son. <laughs> and when I beat you down till you get beneath me, I'll leave you alone. But you ain't worthy to be in front of me teaching the shit you're teaching. So I'm going to put my fire on your, on your ass. And niggas can say I'm hating. Niggas can say what they want. But boy, I wake up every day with butterflies in my stomach because I'm on a monopoly board. I'm in a simulation. And I get to choose who I like, who I don't like, who I'm going to go against, who I'm not going to go against, what team I'm on, and what team I'm going to crush. And I'm going against the penis patrolman. I'm going against the fucking brotherhood of the phallus. Yo, Anunnaki, cyber motherfucking, uh, spiritual, any nigga glorifying anything other than the womb he come out of is a bitch nigga working with the brotherhood. This why them niggas hate your boy. We come from the Anunnaki. Nigga, the Anunnaki, don't let me get into how that ain't nothing but the womb. Because the, the God that created the Anunnaki, his name Anu. And if you go and look up Anu, guess what? He ain't nothing but a sperm cell breaking up out the fetal bag, dummy. All of these niggas talking about some Anunnaki, talking about some Anu, but they don't want to deal with flat earth. If tell them niggas to show you a picture of Anu, they ain't going to show it to you because they're going to have to show you the flat earth. How come I talk about Anunnaki and they talk about the Anunnaki, but they don't show you the Anunnaki, I show the Anunnaki. When they say they showing you the Anunnaki, they showing you computer generated monsters, nigga. That's no different than NASA. I'm showing ancient artifacts of a God named Anu, which is the Christian version of Enoch. Enoch is Anuk which is also Noah. Don't get me on this shit, bro. Noah inside of his ark is the God I knew in his ark. Don't get me going, nigga. This God is represent your soul leaving the simulation. He's the original form of Santa, which is why he's on that chariot with them reindeers. He's another form of Jesus, which is why he got that cup on top of his head, nigga. You see that cup on his head? That's Serapis.
talking about we come from the Anunnaki. They giving you Christianity again. Nigga, I come from my mama. Because this nigga named I knew, he ain't doing nothing but personifying the uterus. I told y'all to stay away from the brotherhood. Stay away from the niggas that's glorifying Egypt all the time. Emerald tablets. Sumerian shit. Anunnaki, Nibiru, the Bill and Carsons, the Black Magic Brother Rich type shit, the Seven Bomars. When are you niggas gonna talk about some pussy? Damn. <laughs> Every time it's a sausage party. Pharaoh this, Pharaoh that. Egypt this, Anunnaki that, Yakub this, Farrakhan that. Yahweh this, man, fuck all these sausages, nigga. I came out of a womb. Can I know, learn about the thing I came out of versus all these sky daddies and pharaohs and shit? See, I see who you niggas are. I know that y'all niggas is the brotherhood. And that's why I'm being blackballed with views and everything, boy. It's deeper than just black boule, nigga. The corporations on they side. YouTube on they side. Why you think my channel ain't monetized, but they got channels that's monetized of niggas talking about pulling up on each other? Bro, I can go to a twerk channel right now. I can go to a channel right now where Crips and Bloods got their channels and they don't do nothing but argue and, and diss each other's dead and talk about pulling up. And they getting super chats and they monetized. <laughs> Look, I want y'all to think about this What's so bad about Bro Sanchez TV That I can't be monetized You know my content You watch the videos on this channel You telling me my content worse than what Whack 100 them doing My content worse than all of the gangbangers That's getting super chats Bro, I shouldn't have to come up here and beg for cash apps. I shouldn't have to be looking at my phone saying how much donations I got because I've been on here this long. I should be able to run commercials on my shit and just sit back and let the corporations pay me big dollars. Man, the ad sense is way more money than y'all can give me on the donations. I'm sorry. Times is hard, nigga. You can't pay me like the corporations, okay? <laughs> So I got a choice to make. Do I change my content to be loyal to the corporations that can pay me more? Or do I keep begging for cash ups saying what the fuck I want to say? Then you already know the choice I made, nigga. And that's what got me blackballed. You're not going to say what you want to say. You're going to serve the algorithm or they gonna demonetize you, man. And I swear to God, I don't want to even talk about donations on my, go back and rewind my channel to the early days. You never heard me ask for donations because I was getting a check from AdSense. I didn't care if you donate or not. I can be on here long as I want. Now I got to make a conscious decision to make sure that I'm getting compensated for my time. I don't want to have to do, nigga, that's a conscious decision I can be using for some other thought. That's what I'm saying. It sucks, bro. It really pisses me off because I don't really be want to take y'all money and shit. Every show, donation, donate, hit the cash. I don't like that, bro. When they demonetize me, I knew then, nigga, if I want to keep doing this shit, I'm going to have to beg now. Now, the question is, are you too proud to beg? Now, I ain't too proud to beg, but damn it, I don't want to. <laughs> I kind of dug myself in a hole with my mouth. But I'm the type nigga that would do it all over again. That's why you can't find them but one bro Sanchez TV. And this channel will never be monetized with the shit I'm talking. Even though it ain't violent. It ain't harassment. Bro, I'm, my channel is literally following the guidelines, nigga. 
When I ask YouTube why my big channel ain't month, because they know they're going to have to pay me about 15 racks a month. They know if this channel was monetized, I'd be making anywhere from 10 G's to 15 G's every month. You think I, nigga, I wouldn't even post the cash app making that kind of money. You will have to look for my fucking cash app. Nigga, that's what I'm saying. A lot of these big channels be like, you don't see me begging for donations. I'm like, nigga, the corporation's paying you 20 G's a month. I wouldn't ask for cash apps either from broke ass people, nigga. I don't ask my people for money knowing that times is hard. Ain't no YouTuber out there trying to be at the mercy of donations. That's when you really doing bad. Because don't nobody want to be supported directly by the people because the people ain't got it like that. The corporations got it now. And that's why you don't see a lot of channels. You don't see no channels like mine. Uh, even your biggest truth channels that I learn from, that I'm subscribed to, they still ain't uncut like me, nigga. It's still a little watered down for them to keep their monetization. Nigga, I'm all the way into the rabbit hole. And I'm not on this bitch gangbanging and doing the... I'm not doing that against the guidelines. YouTube say that your content is just not uh, compatible. Or what they tell me, they say that we've decided that your channel is just not uh, suitable. Or some words they use, it don't qualify for our monetization prop. They don't really tell you why. They just say we reviewed your channel and basically, yeah, we ain't fucking with you, nigga. And they'll never tell you why, though. Because a lot of your content goes against our user-friendly agreement with advertisements. How is a nigga saying the earth is flat go against that? You can't run a Mountain Dew ad after I tell a nigga how a level work on a flat plane? You tell me you can't run a Timberland boot ad after I tell a nigga that he come from the uterus and not Jesus. You can run that same ad on my video that you ran on Billy Carson's Anunnaki ass video full of pseudo shit. You don't want to pay no nigga for telling the truth, bro. You only paying money for the niggas telling the lies, bro. And you're not going to let me be the new standard. They're not going to make me the nigga that proves, see, you can hack the game. The corporations that's lying to you will literally pay you $10,000 a month for you telling the truth. That don't make no sense, nigga. The corporations going to always get itself a back door. If they said we paying content creators, they're saying the content that meets our guidelines, nigga, that's the back door. Now, YouTube ain't no longer YouTube. It's corporate tube. You ain't you no more. A lot of these niggas ain't they self. They content watered down, nigga. And everybody on some made up. Feeding the algorithm type shit. No one say what, how they feel. Everybody politically correct. Nobody want to smoke on camera, drink on camera, cuss on camera. It's like touch football, nigga. <laughs> in, in, in the golden days of YouTube, it was tackle football. This shit is flag football now. Don't nobody want to get flagged. So they shutting the fuck up. It used to be tackling. Now everybody is flag football. Everybody getting flagged. I knew when Tommy got kicked off and Cynthia got kicked off, that's the end of YouTube. Regardless of how much you don't like nobody, why the fuck we playing flag football? This is a full contact sport. 
you got grown ass men begging a white man to get a black woman off the internet because she's saying things that's hurting the black man feeling you little sucker bitch your favorite rapper saying shit that's hurting your feelings, bitch. He's saying I don't speak broke niggas language. If you're broke, nigga, get away from me. <laughs> he telling you I fuck your grandma, I fuck your mama, but you bought his album, and you got a woman kicked off YouTube that was saying bitch niggas need to be exterminated, and I can't even agree with her because you bitch niggas might kick me off. <laughs> All of the bitch niggas, that's for the brotherhood. Everything anti-woman. Blame the woman like Adam in the Bible. When you in charge, nigga. That's the energy that I get up and battle every day. And can't nobody see the real from the fake in this backwards ass world. I wish my voice was more deeper. That'll help me out, shit. <laughs> Got deep voice niggas that I'll smack with my little woman voice, nigga. <laughs> I swear to God, some of these deep voice niggas, man, I had them niggas walking to the stove for me. I swear to God, a lot of these niggas y'all think is them niggas ain't willing to take that shit to the limits that I go take it to when it's time for some warfare. Niggas are chicken out, boy, because I'll, like, I'm telling you, <laughs> let me just shut up, boy. Here is a picture of the female reproductive system. Don't it look like Jesus on the cross? This is what the bitch-ass brotherhood phallus gang hate, y'all. Look at Jesus on the cross now. If I show the average person this, they won't even say to themselves, damn, that's Jesus on the cross. They'll be looking at the female reproductive system like, this is the ovary, this is the bladder. And I'm like, bro, fuck all them big words. Let's talk about Jesus, because this is how they simplified the shit. They said Jesus was in between the two thieves. You know why? <clears throat> The fucking ovaries siphon the sperm when it goes up the vaginal canal. It literally, the sperm reaches a crossroad where it's like two tunnels splitting it up, pulling it in each side. But if you think about a torus field, that's how a torus field works. You know what I'm saying? with two vortexes on each side recycling the energy. Let me show it to you. Look. This is how it works, just like this. Look at it. When the sperm goes up the vaginal canal and it reached the holy of holies, which is the sky vault where it makes an arch at, that takes place at the ovaries. You see, let me show you how this works. The sperm is traveling up and out like you just saw in my example. Look at this. The sperm is traveling up this shaft. And when it reaches this grail cup, that sperm gets separated and split up into many different versions that goes into many different eggs. Now listen where the woman's so deep at. The version of you that exists in this world, it literally, when they look at the woman's body, when it's happening, they can only see one egg with one sperm. But if they can open up the astral plane goggles, they'll see that it's seven eggs with seven sperms. So, how, how, what am I saying? I'm saying that Everything we see in this layer of reality is based upon a particular sperm cell that fell into this particular egg that we call in the earth. Everything we don't see is what the other sperm cells see who landed in the other eggs. And the other worlds that exist around this world, 
the, you know, those worlds we can't see. We do see them when we dream. We go and control our other avatars that was born in other universes. But if you look at the way that the female uterus shape, the sperm goes up the pole and then it splits up and goes out like this. Look. You see that? When the sperm gets separated at the top, guess what happens? It, what happens is the female womb is like a shredder. The sperm goes up the vaginal canal. And that grail cup is like a shredding machine that cut the sperm up into many avatars. This is how you get all your other versions. The female uterus is literally chopped. It's, this whole thing about the body being chopped up, that was set. But another form of set is Saturn or Satan. But I keep telling you, Satan is the womb. The fucking real reaper, the word reaper is the word repair. The reaper will slice you up like the body of Osiris, but it'll put all the pieces back together again. It'll repair it. Reaper is repair. That's why it got a blade. Look at this, man. Just study this for a minute. Look at it a minute. Look at what's happening. It's slicing the energy up, but it's repairing it when it's done. It ain't just slicing it up and throwing it out there. All of them slices is going to return back home the same way they left. All of your different versions of yourself, even though the universe sliced them up and scattered them out to their own realms, they all going to meet back up and, and merge together into your God self, like Captain Planet, like Voltron. All these versions of yourself that was split up going to come together to form one grand version like Voltron. And this is how it happens. Look, they get split up. They, when the energy leaves the top, that was us getting kicked out of Mount Maru. Boom, consciousness expanded. You split into many versions and you entered the underworld, which is the earth realm below. Now we trying to get sucked back up again. Every time we pass through this middle point, we regain consciousness of we, what we are as energy and motion. And we're able to walk this path better and better, so to speak. But check this out. This is the path of sperm. The sperm travels the vaginal canal. And when it reaches this crossroads... It do, it, it do just what I just showed you. It splits. That one sperm that was one mind, that was the God L, when the uterus splits it, it merges the higher self with the lower self. Put it this way. Your higher self already exists in the egg of your mama. But your lower self is being ejected from the father. When the lower self meet the higher self, you are born into this world with the demon on one shoulder, angel on the other shoulder. Our father leads us back into our previous lifetimes in the simulation. The mother leads us to our base reality where we're trying to be born out of her belly. See, the act of being discharged come from the daddy. That's called ejection or ejaculation. The knowledge of being away from the base reality come from your father. That's who teaching you how to be a man. He teaching you how to stand up on your own. That's why he said, boy, get from around your mama so much. That's Kronos. That's your daddy energy. That took you away from the base reality so you can become a god. That was daddy in the base reality saying, listen, son, you got to get from up under your mama. Like you, you children need to get, leave your mama alone for a minute. Learn how to do something. Quit every time. Mama. See, daddy don't like that. Daddy say, hey, man, you could do that yourself. Now, you ain't no baby like. 
You got to quit calling on your mama so much. He'll tell the daughter that too. But the mama don't mind because she like being needed. She like the child, mama. And that's why the earth don't want you to leave. That's why people get recycled. Mama earth, mama nature don't want you to leave. She want to nurture you. But the thing about a mama, the mama wants you to be a baby forever. Because she want to stay a mama. One of the roles of the father is that, well, he wants your ass to become a parent quick than a mother of it. <laughs> you know that when it comes to parenting, the woman gets the most joy out of the experience. The father is rushing you into adulthood. And that's Kronos versus mama. Okay. Mama saying you can always come back home. Dad is saying he ain't going to learn if you keep babying him. But when mama say you can always come back home, you ain't going to grow like that. You're going to keep coming back to this earth getting recycled. And I get it. Like this earth got the same energy of a nurturing mother, but that can be a curse too. Most of the people being recycled here got mama's boy energy. Even the women. Nothing's going to save you. These are the people that call out for mama even when they old and get put over by the police. These are the people that call out for God even though they're a whole adult with a whole mind. They looking for a parent, man. They still want a guardian. It's some people that's going to be babies forever because they can't see themselves without a guardian. Even when they no longer under their mom and daddy, they got to have a God. They are stuck in a baby mind. They need an authority over them. That's the difference between us and the Babylon people. They in a baby mind. We're trying to become gods, meaning guiding ourselves. They still need an authority figure. That's what I'm saying. That's because why you know you know why? They didn't learn that they're from daddy. And if you don't learn from daddy, you get recycled back into Kronos so you can learn from father, from the daddy. You need to be learning from father time. If you want to manipulate time, mother nature is a nurturer. Soldiers don't need to be nurtured. Mother Nature needs you to protect her, but you too busy trying to suck her titty. Your mama needs you to grow up and help her out, but you too busy being a baby at 40 and 50 years old. Your mama can't even leave the motherly role of trying to nurture your grown ass because you won't grow up. And that's why the earth can't mature. The earth can't grow up and mature until her babies grow up. And you can have a grown ass baby living in the house in their 40s and 50s. Now, mama can't continue her life because your growth stunted, nigga. She got to be 60 and shit still raising your grown ass in the house. It's stunting everybody progression and growth. And that's what's happening on a spiritual level. The earth is trying to mature and raise its vibration, but it can't do it if it need if you babies still need a mama. Like the earth trying to fucking hit the club and live the rest of its life too. It say I raised my children. Why the fuck they still in my house in their thirties and mama can't go out? The earth is in that same position that the women is in. Mama's boys, red pill, pussy, sissified niggas that still saying women don't show men love. Men need, you know what? You need to kneel to me. I need a woman to just hold me and caress me and rub my back. Nigga, you need a mama. You looking for mama. Ain't nothing wrong with a woman that do all that. But you niggas is really boys that really didn't have the motherly experience. Daddy wasn't there. 
mama acted like daddy. So the only now you still seeking motherly energy in your damn girlfriend. Because even though you raised by a single mama, she was acting like daddy raising you niggas. You didn't get motherly energy. Listen, a lot of these damn niggas want motherly energy from their girlfriend and wives. These the same niggas that say the mama want boyfriend energy from her son. But if her son's still in the house at 40, he damn near a boyfriend at this point, nigga. Get the fuck out and start a family. <laughs> yo, like, like your mama see you as a whole grown nigga walking around the house out the certain age. She don't see mama baby no more. And, and, and my thing is this right here, dude. A woman may say, you can stay with me till you get on your feet. I never rush my son out the house. That's why we need a father in the house. Because the father come with time. That's chronos. And father time going to say, son, when you 21, you getting the fuck up out of here. I'm putting a time limit on it. Nuh-uh. <laughs> See, mama got this indefinite rule. You can just stay with me till you figure it out. Daddy say, no, see, that's the infinity code in the woman. Daddy come with the time fact. You, you always racing against the clock with daddy. That's chronos. Daddy in the house is going to give you a test and a challenge. He going to say, son, you need to have your shit together by 21. At 21, if you ain't completed the task, I'm going to punish you by saying you can't stay with me, nigga. Mama ain't going to give you that challenge. Mama ain't going to give you no child and challenges are needed in life. That's why fathers are needed in households. Mamas don't challenge them boys. You know, I ain't lying. Not like daddy can. Daddy will tell them little niggas stand up right here and hold these water jugs. The first one to drop them. Right. He don't get no allowance. Mama, mama just say. I'm giving y'all allowance this week. Daddy gonna make it a challenge. Daddy said, hold up, you didn't, do, you didn't give me 50 push-ups. So you ain't getting your full allowance till I get my full push-ups. I saw niggas with militant daddies like that who ended up going to the major leagues and to the NFL. That's why I kind of... I don't go that hard on Joe Jackson. That's a military father that brought the best out of them children, man. They don't want that image in the house, which is why they'll tell you Joe Jackson is a fucking threat and all that. I wish my dad would beat me into millions. <laughs> the drill sergeant ain't going to beat you into millions, nigga. They'll beat you into a few thousand in the military. Like, that's what I'm saying, though. You are, you're like forged metal. And when you shaping metal, you got the beat on it. To shape it into something that's, you know, the, the, the jewelry you wear, it forging metals. Everybody want to look good, but they don't want to go through the fire and be forged and hammered on and beat on. They don't want to be drilled and instructed. They don't want to be challenged and, you know, that's what I love about the military, man. Soldiers aren't born, they're made. That mean even if you're a bitch ass nigga, with the right amount of drilling and practice, you can become a god or a soul. Ja. That's all God, it's all spiritual soldiers, nigga. Ain't no hierarchy. They're just fighters for the side of good. But look at what I said. This the female uterus. Don't y'all see the anchor in, you see the anchor at the bottom? How many of your third eye open? Study this organ. 
This is an anchor. You see where my mouse at? Look at the anchor at the bottom. Drop a one if you see the anchor at the bottom of the uterus. They got an anchor right there. Drop a one if you see it. You can see why Jesus is standing on the anchor. The anchor is in the female womb. Y'all don't see that anchor right there? That's the anchoring device. See? That's why Jesus is on top of the anchor and he got a hole in a circle above his head, which is the halo, because that's the doggone holy grail above him. The entryway into the mothership, which is the womb. You see that? You see that? Why is Jesus on top of an anchor? Because he represents the resurrected sperm. Jesus represents when a sperm rise up the path of ascension and it makes it up to the Holy Grail part. This is what Jesus represents when you make it the Mount Calvary. At this point, you ready to be born again. And that's what happened with Christ on Mount Calvary. He was born again into the Holy Ghost. The old Christ died and a new Christ ascended out of that body. That happens through rebirth through the woman. Instead of them showing you the woman that rebirthed the soul, they turned her into the cross that Jesus died on. Now, if that resonates with you and you see what I'm saying, put in a damn uh, chat room right now, pussy power. Type that out. <laughs> yeah, type out pussy power in the chat room. Spell it out in all caps, pussy power. They put, they let Jesus die and become reborn on the cross because they didn't want to show you how important the woman was. They turned the woman to a damn cross, but it's the uterus that allowed Christ to be put to death and resurrect on Mount Calvary, which is the womb of the woman and the uterus is the cross. Death and rebirth happens on the cross at the uterus. See what I'm saying? They turned this pussy into... Men started to create something called promiscuity in gay, ancient, Greco-Egyptian times. It was okay for men to show their penises, but a woman couldn't even show her breasts. They, they forbid the woman to show any part of her body. But a man can show his body. You know why they did that? Because the woman's body is the Holy Grail. If we see too much of the woman's body, we'll wake up, nigga. When you study the females, the way her body, the way her hips even prepare to hold a baby, everything about the woman's body will start to make you tap into this ancient pre-dynastic symbolism that made us time travelers and gods. Because her womb is a portal and a wormhole. Everything about the woman, they had to cover it up when they hid the truth. Think about that. If the truth is buried into the divine feminine nature of the woman, the people that hid the truth also told the woman to cover herself up or she'll be stoned. They waited until the world got so dumbed down that now women can walk around half naked. Now men drool at them and don't realize the fascination that, we, that you have toward the woman body is really the soul's fascination with the universe and the layout of the cosmos. The thing about it is this right here too. Before modern religion, we saw a lot of topless women and naked women in the spiritual system. In the, in the pre-dynastic spiritual system, you had a lot of goddesses with their titties out. With they vajayjay showing. 
to teach you this stuff I'm saying. So what the church did, they said, that's not nice. Cover that up. We don't need to show women like that because they don't want you to learn the truth. But then when you look at Greece, they got naked men everywhere. They got sculptures and statues of niggas with their balls hanging out everywhere. But the idea of a naked woman will get you stoned, nigga. That's how sacred the female anatomy is. Women, that's how sacred your body is. That when the church wanted to take over the world, they had to tell women to cover themselves up. You know why? Because the church would have been having to fight against one of the strongest powers in the universe. Pussy power. Spike Lee showed you that in that movie where the woman said, these niggas killing each other. We going to stop giving them pussy until they stop killing each other and niggas stop killing. The church literally had to control who the female mate with to really establish power. The only other power on the earth that could rival the church was that thing in between the female legs. All of the Pharisees and Sadducees, all of the wise men that wanted to take over the world, know they had to control the pussy. Because if they want to control men, you won't be able to control them better than the pussy. So the men in power said, look, if we want to control men, we literally got to control women. <laughs> that ain't even funny. That's the truth. I don't know why I hit the laugh button for real. Mistake. But check it out. The people in power don't control the man directly. They control him through the woman. That's why niggas do a lot of gangster shit. Not because the people in power made him do some gangster shit. He doing that to impress that woman. The women in our community, unfortunately, they like roughnecks. They like gangster niggas. But when the woman say we don't like that no more, you won't even see gangster niggas being created no more. Whatever the woman like, the collective of men will transform into that nigga. This is facts. It's facts that what the woman want out of men dictates what the men become and not the other way around. Think about this right here. Women will alter their body to attract the man, but the man will alter his literally behavior to attract the woman. Like a woman may get a butt lift or a lip job. She going to do some physical shit, but guess what a man going to do? He going to say, I got to be tougher. I got to be braver. That's spiritual, nigga. If you a coward, and you saying women don't like cowards. And you saying to yourself, I got to become a killer, nigga. I got to get tough. That ain't no physical shit. That's spiritual. A man is transforming himself spiritual to get a woman that just transform herself physically. A little skinny nigga Lusting after that big booty woman is saying, I can get her if I'm that nigga, though. Because she ain't selecting a man based upon his size, but based upon his power. He can be a little nigga, but if he got a lot of money, she know he got big goons on his payroll. She'll pass down that strong goon. And she'll get with the skinny little boss that he working for. He on my security detail, bitch. What are you talking about? <laughs> in a natural situation, in a natural situation, well, in any situation, the person that can manipulate the spiritual aspect or mental aspect 
and it's God. It's not because I'm a simp, nigga. These niggas are sitting around not getting women because they don't want to transform themselves to the type of guy that women like. And they saying, I'm going to be an incel and just be a single nigga dating dolls and some of them turning gay. That's what separate real niggas from fake niggas. I'm just saying, though, because in nature, men battle for the woman. But when humans, right, that turns into which one of you men in the neighborhood is the most feared? That's how animals mate. That female wolf is going to mate with the male wolf. That's the scariest, not the most handsome, cutest nigga. Hell no. <laughs> She's going to mate with the monster so that her children can be protected. Everybody's scared of the monster. Why do you think they call it beauty and the beast? That comes from nature, dog. The pretty girls get the ugly, powerful dudes, like Biggie Smalls. <laughs> they get the, the, the ugly, weird, rich niggas, like Puff Daddy. <laughs> yeah, the pretty, innocent girls always choose the monster. Because women think like they want protection over their children. They say he cute, he nice, and damn, I really love him. But we live in a world where there's capitalism and I'm not dating on my, with my heart. I'm dating with my wet, wet survival of the fittest. Which is why the woman that got with that monster, because he was more secure, she don't stay with him. If she find a more ugly, a more powerful monster, he can take her. They're dating for security. And just like in nature, the wolf that dated with the alpha male, if a bigger alpha male come along, he can take that woman. It's not even a question. Alpha males don't even like to be around other alpha males with their woman because they know about this law. The kind of woman that they're choosing are breeding with the law of the jungle, the secular law, survival of the fittest. Those women never end up in happy relationships. And because most women are dating like that, we got a big divorce rate. You ever wonder why it's a bunch of regular motherfuckers that stayed together from death do them apart? And rich people break up left and right? People that's date, who date, because they're trying to have financial security, they will always find themselves unhappy because they're going to always look around and see another woman that's in a more secure position than her. This is why niggas in these music industries and Hollywood industries, they pass around the same holes with each other. Hold on. It's like that one that have. Yo, salutes to everybody, man. I got so much knowledge. I'm taking my time with it. I might have to do a part two. This dedicated to the women, man. Niggas, you know, I know y'all ain't showing up that much for this one. But this is so 
knowledgeable to both sexes, though, because if the niggas was actually interested in this, they would respect the woman more. It's more red pill guys out here than it is niggas like me, and they think I'm wrong. They think I'm simping. But remember what a simp is. It's a person that's simple. All of these red pill niggas trying to make this shit complicated when it's really simple. Both sides got to compromise, nigga. But they saying the man shouldn't have to compromise. It ain't that simple. The woman compromise and the man don't. The man is 90%. The woman is 10%. Yeah, when you put it like that, things aren't so simple as 50-50 now, is it? It's complex now. And now you need a complex doctrine to explain why we should cater more to the man. But a nigga like me come on and say, fuck all that. It's 50-50, man. Be equal. And niggas say, that's simping. Yeah, that's keeping it simple, stupid. Now, the black man want America to treat him equal, but he want to have a system of inequality in his fucking household. Bomb drop. <laughs> Every man walking the earth want the, his government to treat him equal, but he want to govern his woman under a system of inequality. You red pill niggas need your ass whipped, you hypocrites. I got the story right, nigga.
Yeah, man. Crazy. Hey, yo, I'm I'm up though, man. My bad. I had to take a little break. I'm up the day though, man. I'm up the day. And what time is it? 8.44. Look, y'all know I got an after show schedule for Golden Wings Media. Y'all want to go over there and open up the call lines? Because what I, I came to go in today for the women and not only come with the, big, with the teachings and the spiritual technology, I didn't even really hit my notes like that. I'm going to have to do another uh, stream to break down a lot of more of this stuff. I swear I left out a lot of stuff. I just kind of went with the flow when I got all these notes. I'm going to do a part two. I'm going to revisit this under a different title, different thumbnail, see if we can get more people in here. But, um, and I'm going to redo this whole thing now that I got this off my chest and come with all my notes and I had a bunch of stuff and I didn't really come with it all. Like, this was really a two-part thing, and I thought it was a one-part. Might even be three parts. But uh, it's just so much more. I ain't going to the seven heavens, the holy of holies, it's a mana. Look, it's so much to this lecture that I didn't go into. The etymology right here of vagina, um, like, it's so much. The Pope of view. All of that is what I got for this. But you know what? I got to wait to the next, to the part two. Because I do like to reserve a portion of my show to interact with the people. That's just my kind of, like, the style that I've been doing. <clears throat> Hold on. Hey, let me say something to you guys. Would you guys like to go to my Golden Wings Media and have a call-in show? Because I can redirect everybody there, and we can continue this tonight. And uh, we can have callers come in. And uh, what I'll do this weekend, I'll finish up the knowledge, the spiritual technology. That way we can, it can be balanced. That way it can be balanced because you want to have your blend of sacred geometry and knowledge plus your coaching the men in these spaces about how they partaking into Sharia law and the gender war and the desecration of the divine feminine, which is very important, man. And it just ain't talked about enough. Every time you do, people talk like you some woman feminist. Nigga, I'm really here to protect the portal in and out of the earth. Y'all looking at it dumb. If I ask a nigga, how did you get to the earth? And you point to your mama and you the same man that say, man, why y'all taking up for women so much? Let's take the woman out of it and let's say the womb you came out of. See, it's a gender war. But a nigga ain't mad at the vagina because how you going to be mad at the doorway that allowed you to enter the earth? And then what's crazy is like these niggas look at the woman, right? She the doorway and they get mad at her because of the niggas that she date and the baby she having as a single mother. And I'm like, that's like getting mad at the door because of who you niggas let in the house. <laughs> Think about that. Think about that. These niggas will say, the woman should have known that what type of nigga she was getting with. She known that I was a player nigga. And that she was a hit and run. And you blaming the door because a crook got in the house. When you're admitting to being a crook. But I see these niggas do it all the time. 
Yeah, I got seven baby mamas. But they know I didn't want no baby. They know that, nigga, why you banking your life on what you think a woman know? I thought the man was the nigga in charge with all the knowledge. Yeah, nigga, this is deeper than just the spiritual technology of the womb. This bars into the gender wars. Her story to his story. See, this subject is deep, man. And the fact that, yeah, I'm going to have to keep talking about this and grow this topic, bro. It, real talk, man. Because uh, a lot of these niggas, they talk about, they talk about, right? This the shit fresh and fit do too. They'll sit back and they'll be like, a woman should know the type nigga she getting with. How she fall for that. And on the same show, they will teach men how to trick women out the pussy. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying, nigga. How did the woman fall for that? Because you wrote a whole book telling men how to trick women and get the draws on the first night. You forgot about that, Mr. Player, huh? Y'all gift these men all this game and when they running on the women, y'all blame the women for being tricked when y'all the one creating the tricksters, man. You saying how that woman fell for that man. She probably read one of your books, nigga. You forgot you double talking, you stupid nigga. That nigga probably read one of your books and learned how to be a nigga he's not just for the, to get the pussy. Because y'all ain't teaching niggas how to build families. You're teaching them how to get laid. And you're doing conniving, cunning shit, calling it game. And when you trick the women, you say, look, it ain't my fault she got tricked. She should have known better. Y'all ain't shit. Y'all ain't shit. On one platform, you teaching men how to seduce women. And on that same platform, you blaming young, sing you blaming young single mothers for being seduced. I want all the smoke. I want all the smoke. Guess what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to end this show. And it's going to redirect everybody to my other channel. And we finna open up the call lines and bring the smoke. Because I done my teaching. And I got another presentation this weekend coming up for the women. Where I'm going to continue this stuff and teach you how divine you are. Bring your daughters. I'll try not to be so graphic. And use the P word and all that. Because this going to restore the self-esteem of women in the world when they understand what they are. And so check this out, right? To the dudes that want to debate me because you're saying I'm simping or all that because this deeper than just me teaching about the sacred feminine and the uterus and, and, and all that. I got smoke for the whole male space that's desecrating the female in her energy and making that shit cool like we don't love them hoes and you know like that's the energy that I wake up every day and put my boots on and want to show them niggas you ain't tough talking like that nigga use just a, a, a homo thug a lot of niggas think they tough cause I don't love them hoes where my niggas at how you tough nigga you prison tough that's called prison tough, son. If you get you tough enough just for Big Bubba. Yeah, you good and tough for him. And I'm 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 here to hijack the narrative on what masculinity is. Cause a lot of niggas in these masculinity spaces, they the most feminine motherfucking souls. Bless they heart. Only thing masculine about them is they sound manly. They got a deep voice. They look manly as fuck. But if you listen to them niggas talk about women, you say, boy, this a whole little boy and a little hoe. 
a little pop tart, a little goofy. Check this out, right? And I got smoke for niggas. I know, hey, look, man, I'm finna end this show.